Welcome to PKA 591. Our, our co-host Taylor might not make it tonight, might not make it, period. Our host, fuck, I'm ruining this. Our show is sponsored <laughs> by Lucy and Lock and Load. And our guest is Wolf. What's up, Wolf? What's okay, good? Oh, I'm happy to see you guys again. Taylor normally does that job. I fucked it up. That's okay. <laughs> it's He's like, yeah, they you. really do need me. It's always good to see you, Wolf. Wolf, I got a good. question for you. Pleasure, brother. not striking too close to home. I don't no. know about that. It's it's about that goatee you're rocking there, man. Like like, mm. I wonder what? like 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 you clearly spent some time getting that, that facial hair down. or a silver sharpie, right? <laughs> <laughs> I see. I had a goatee just like that one time, and it was yeah. because I did that thing where like every time I tried to even it up on the left side, I fucked it up, so I had to take yeah. more and more and more. And and I, and that okay. was my question. Like, did this start as a much bigger goatee? <laughs> and he just couldn't are, get her. Are shoot. you trying to say I'm not asymmetrical right now? Like, what are you doing? Oh, your geometry is on point. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm wondering um, is like, why such a thin one? It's, it's um, something I haven't seen a lot. It's just my Tony Stark thing. It's okay. Just, uh, also, it's because when I go to the club, less, women, less, less hot chicks call me sir. Oh, mm-hmm. I got so you. 100%. It hides yeah. the silver a lot more. How long? When did you start getting the gray in the, oh, in the beard? That's when I had kids, bro. Um, no, essential. Uh, during the divorce, <laughs> Why, <laughs> came in. I'm so glad you said that. Telling I, you, because I started going gray right here when yeah. uh, when I got sentenced to prison. Mm. <laughs> like, like it's literally one of those things. Like, there's a story mm. from the Bible. I think of. I think uh, Moses saw God in the burning bush, and, and then and he like, just uh, yeah. his hair went white as snow, you know, or, or something like the sackcloth, whatever they call it. And uh, and it's like that's one of the more believable, crazy things in the Bible. Like, like if you maybe you didn't talk to an actual burning tree that was the voice of God, <laughs> burning oh, bush, but but I can believe he saw some shit that turned his hair white. Mm. And uh, because like I've I know people who have seen some shit and their hair turned white and I saw a little shit and my hair started turning a little white down here and uh, but yeah divorce will knock the shit out of you too I I I would I would argue a bad divorce and what I went through are pretty close pretty bro close. you can get PTSD from a bad, bad divorce I haven't no heard lies. anyone say they enjoyed their divorce yet. I've it's, heard a couple guys say it. <laughs> it's not a, the process I'm referring to. Yeah, not I know, know. really. It's a, like I've heard, uh, like I, I can't be. It's more of a for me. It was the actual breakup as opposed to the process, because okay. you know that was the love of my life and all that jazz type of thing. But some guys get taken to the cleaners, right? And then that's the tra- trauma for them. I, so it depends on how you know the, the the perspective you're coming from. I have a question about the divorce, and I don't think it's too close. But he, here, so my friend got divorced. Everyone knows PKA Dan, and there was a point in the process towards the very very end mm. where he. Asked his, I guess, still wife at the time, like, are you sure? Are you sure you don't want to just not get divorced? Like that, my door is still open. Never and asked that. Hers was closed. She said, yes, I still want to get divorced. But he mm. doesn't regret asking. He's glad that he put it out. That Now, I think his yeah. life is better now. And, and he probably is lucky she said no. But for a long time, he was like, you know, I'm, I'm, it's, I get peace of mind knowing it was a have to do. And that yeah. he didn't just get divorced out of momentum. So I think I'm asking Wolf. I'm sorry, you got a whole thing. I'm sorry, Kyle. Um, <laughs> I'm asking okay. Wolf, was there a time when did you ask? Did you check? Did you get divorced out of momentum? All Where? right, boys and girls, get the pens and pads out. Let's talk about relationships and oh, marriage God. and divorce because uh, it's horrid, and uh, but also it can be good. Um, let me tell you one thing about if – if it's the woman who decides she wants to be divorced, she's decided that months before you find out. Mm. So you will always be the last one to know you're getting divorced. Her yeah. family will know. Her friends will know. Her boyfriend will know. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. Everybody else will know that you're getting divorced before you. Mm. So she'll already have a new place picked out. She'll already have a new relationship with that's how it literally is 99.9% of the time if mm-hmm. she's the one who wants to divorce. <clears throat> have you ever seen those Japanese game shows where they have to leapfrog from lily pad to lily pad? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how women operate. Okay? And I don't want to be misogynistic. It's not misogynistic. It's how, the, <laughs> it's how, it's how, it's we, how it's I how we see it every single time. Because a man will leave and he'll be like, that's it. I'm out. 
and he walks yeah. out unprepared into the night with a fucking spear. Right? <laughs> he doesn't have anywhere to go. That might yeah. be her car that he had been driving around. But he yeah. has decided he will be outside on the cell phone she pays for, probably, calling mm. his boy to come get him and then like yeah. carry his shit back to his house to get on a couch. A yeah. woman will leapfrog to that next lily pad. She is ready to go. Yeah, yeah. The man will leave the igloo in the snowstorm unprepared and yeah. just go for it. And it's like, and it's it, it's traumatizing. And you know, men. I'm not saying men are innocent in these situations either. But when if it's a woman wants to be divorced, and I'll tell you another thing, um, marriage counselors are a complete ripoff. Marriage. Okay. I'll tell you one thing, and that's a it, when it comes to divorce, and you know, the woman says she wants to separate and see other people. Yeah, whatever this circuit. There were marriage counselors. Their job is not to keep the marriage together. Marriage counselor is just a phrase that's thrown out there. The marriage counselors are just there to sit and listen to the problems. So they're not going to say like you could go and I'm not saying this is my situation, but I'm saying you could go to a marriage counselor and, you know, uh, your wife is like banging some dude like right after and she will never say the wife is wrong. Hmm. And, yeah, they, they often won't. Something. Yeah, they won't take sides because they're getting paid by the couple. So, yes. so like, but but the problem with some sometimes relationships issues can be solved by a third party. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hang on a minute. So, Kyle, tell Barbara what you really want. Well, what I want is more free time. I'm tired of her. I'm tired of being stressed that she's mm. going to ask me to an engagement with her friends, and so I can't make my plans. And she, oh, that's what you're really stressed about. I thought you hated my friends. No, I love your friends. They're awesome. But like sometimes I want to plan my night out and I'm afraid to do it because I don't want to disappoint you. That's what it really is. Yes. And then we hug each. And that's a problem that's like we just need a third party to like get us both to open up a little. But Which is always we, good. But that's there's two different types of that's the rare counseling. one. That's the rare that's, one. There is one before she says she wants a divorce and then the marriage counseling after she says she wants a divorce. So if you get the marriage counseling before she uses the D word could stand for other things but if you if you, if you <laughs> go to marriage counseling <laughs> if, you go to, if you go to counseling before you reach that she wants to to separate part sometimes it can be salvaged but mm -hmm. after she says she wants to separate or divorce then there's a huge chance it's just a waste of money at that point you should just save the money for your lawyer plan yeah, and simple. so how did we get here you were saying that uh when a woman wants a divorce, she already has a plan. Sometimes guys like the process. Oh, I asked if you wished that you could have reversed the process or at least pitched the idea of, of not. People get married the, out of momentum and divorced out of momentum. And the thing is, if you asked me during the divorce, my Lord, I would have given my soul to keep the family together in it like that. Mm -hmm. But the crazy thing is I turned out so much better because of the divorce. Mm -hmm. Like I would, I would literally, there would be no wolf paintball if the divorce didn't happen right now. I would be some really overweight guy playing golf every weekend, probably some kind of weird skin or hell heart condition. <laughs> I'd be like, so average. It's not even funny. You that divorce that geometry. I'm telling you, <laughs> Tony Stark, literally Tony Stark was one of my inspirations because I would watch him do the Tony Stark thing and go out to parties and live mm -hmm. the life. You know what I mean? And that's what I started doing with my friends. And I was like, I was overweight. I was weighing 270. And I'd like the stress helped me take a lot of that away. But again, you guys know that I worked in the music industry in the music video industry. And so, um, you know, my friends saw that I was divorced and they were like, I don't know if you've ever seen an Usher video where he just broke up with Chili and it's like, you don't have to call. It's okay, girl. We literally did that. Like They called me up to say, bro, we're going out to the club tonight. We're going to have fun. We're going to do the table service, yada, yada, yada. And it just changed my life. And then I started, I put all that pain and energy into paintball. And it's, that's where everything began. It just went nuts. And it's like, it changed my life, made everything for the better. And you it sounds living for you again, right? Like I only. did. And you I know? discovered life all over again. And it was like, I, like I said, I was traveling every, it was the first time I didn't have my kids every other weekend. I had them during the week, but I would get on a plane, go somewhere and play paintball, or I'd go hang out on video set and do some of that work. 
and I just lived the life. And it just made, oh my gosh, it's just opened so many doors and just showed me so many cool things and that would have never experienced if I was still married. So I have what another the, question. Kyle, did you want to go? or I want to talk about like living for yourself because mm. I, I think that's a thing that a lot of people like don't, they don't even realize it. It's like you ever, someone ever tell you relax at like, like literally like go through relax, like, hey, relax your arms and, your, and then you're like, holy shit, I was tense. I was sitting here all like in a ball mm. and I didn't even know it. Am I always yeah. like that? Fuck. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's how living for yourself can be. Like, like, like I, I know people in my life um, who are like, in their early 20s and I'm, and I'm like hey this is the best time of your life if you take hold of it like you can do all sorts of crazy shit like like hit the ground run and do this that and the other i've got ideas for you if you want a little wisdom i i, I was 22 once and it's like this person is like living for their their, their like mom and dad still it's, it's like why do you care about the judgments of those people and being there to like i, I don't even want to go into the nitty-gritty of it but just like petty <laughs> shit, petty shit you know that's yeah, like yeah, preventing yeah. people from enjoying their own lives and living for themselves I don't but know. i'm telling Oh, dude, I had a, I had a two year old and a four year old. I had a, a, a small son who was on the spectrum that I was practically raising on my own. And I was like, it, that's a stressful life. And then, you know, and then their mom would get the kids every other weekend. And then I would go and I would do the craziest stuff you could ever imagine. Like and it was like, you know, I'd be flying around on helicopters, shooting up paintball guns one weekend. Then I'd be, you know dating a dominatrix the other weekend like <laughs> like i do things that normal people just hear about and i i just live life to the fullest and then that shaped me even more as a person so like i'm not mad at my ex-wife in any way whatsoever because even though the family you know not the nuclear family anymore it changed me as a human being and it's like it allowed me to experience things that no one else is no one else has period. Yeah, it's a good divorce. That ties divorce. into what I was going to ask. So I listen to Dan Savage. He's this love and relationship podcaster sometimes. And he's like, when you get divorced, that isn't the end of your relationship with your wife, especially if you have kids, right? Kids, if if yeah. you have kids, then you two have a relationship until the day you die. However, the nature of it changes. Her expectations around you drop to Real low anyway, not zero. You know, she still needs you to watch kids and be a good father and and maybe swap weekends sometimes because people you know shit comes up. But um her expectations around you, like being her entertainment, her source of finance, all that stuff like changes. So how is that like how's your relationship with the ex? How do they compare to marriage? Do you guys get along better now? Like <clears throat> um we get along great. Like, and we do it for the kids, you know, and I'm not saying we don't go and hang out in anywhere in the night, but we get along great. Um, you know, I'm not saying we're best friends or anything like Is that. Is there any we, underlying, like, always be mad about never forgive? I don't think so. Like, sometimes okay. like you can kind of sense it. I mean, <clears throat> there's nothing there that we don't fight. We don't have any type of aggression. Like, there's, it's, you know what I mean? She's mm -hmm. re She just remarried. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it was, that was, I mean, that was a bit weird, but, you know, she got married to, you know, some rich dude, you know, Bernie looking Sanders dude. And he's very, you know, he's cool to my <laughs> kids and stuff. And I'm like, hey, he looks like Bernie Sanders. You don't look anything like Bernie Sanders. She has more than one type. <laughs> he went the whole <laughs> opposite way. Uh, he went, she went, she went from Kanye to freaking. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's still a like, gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, Jesus. No, but, you know, she knows his lines. <laughs> <laughs> she went the opposite way. And it's like, sing it, cool. Woody. <laughs> she ain't messing with no I was about fellas. to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, now she go, you know, she goes to the yacht club and everything, and she does her thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? So that's me. No, no, he's he, he's a very cool dude, and uh, you know, he he treats my kids good. That's all that matters. And um, you know, it, it's like I I'm still the hero dad, so I you know. I can't complain about anything. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. As long as they're safe when they're over there, it's good. But again, she, 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 you know, she found her own path and now they, you know, they play instruments together and listen to country music, which is something I never did. And, and they do their thing. And I'm like, Hey, my life is golden. 
I'm good. You know, wait a minute. I, they play instruments together and sing. Yeah, they do their own little band thing, and uh, you know, she plays. She learned how to play bass, and she, you know, she's really happy. She didn't her. marry my father, did she? <laughs> <laughs> this, that would be his dream come true. Oh, to really? Mar- eh? To like get, to have a to marry like a woman with kids, and for everybody to have an instrument and sing con- to have a country music band at his house every night, <laughs> basically <laughs> that he gets to be the lead singer of. Like he's already got enough instruments and guitars and fucking microphones to do it. He loves that shit. Well, it's funny because, like, I'm musically inclined, like, in a different way because I yeah. used to DJ and I do the music production and stuff, right? And But it's like, you know, my kids grew up listening to, like, old school De La Soul and, you know, uh, old school hip hop and funkadelic stuff and like that. So they have a great appreciation for music. Uh, but at the same time, it's not going to be their type of music per se, but they all have their, you know, they have their fun. And my daughter rebels over there a bit. And my son likes his anime heavy metal stuff. So, you know, it works out in the end. Can't complain, bro. Cool. Mm. <sighs> Sorry. I, I think Anthony Kumi is coming soon. And it's yeah, distracting man. me. I'm care of it. <laughs> Kyle's, Kyle's taking care of it. My computer's beeping in my ears and I can't, I can't form a thought. <laughs> You're going to want to put streaming mode on your Discord. <laughs> that's a thing and that'll never beep at you again that's, oh, dude, that bitch hadn't beeped into, at me in a in a, a long age. time gotta, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you almost said i know what he's got no chill he's got no chill Jeez, we got what does that even refer to time. i always I thought know. that meant well, raccoon it does you said, you said yeah. something last time that a whole bunch of people got upset i in, in the will never get over the very shit i and said I, and i told them like dudes chill like Jesus. <laughs> like oh my god if i'm not taking uh, shit personal you guys gotta relax it's all <laughs> we're all family all. i it's appreciate good, it bro. coon's age means a very long time it is an americanism that has fallen out of favor and is considered offensive by mental people i didn't know get that coon on. is slang for raccoon coined in the mid 1700s a coon's age was first used in the 1800s in fact it owes its origin to the to the folk belief that raccoons are long lived. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think it also, so but it also had an uh, alternative thing where um, people of a certain background in America were thought of as criminals because of the raccoons. Oh, uh, yeah. Know, thing, you know, so. One of those like hamburger disguises. Yeah. yeah. I still don't see re- that. They refer to certain. Raccoons have those blacked out eyes like as their fur yeah. markings. But I don't see how that. Well, it goes back to. They call you know, robbers coons. And then they cut. They they made black black people are robbers, of course, according yeah, well, to the, some people. And, do we really have to spell this out for you, bro? Like, yes, come we on, really bro. do. I totally don't even get it. I'm like, he's how not this, kidding. I ha- <laughs> how does this get to period of time? I don't. Understand. I'm trying to be sensitive here. I don't. Oh, know that's why I did it quickly, like a band aid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. Don't be calling the brothers that on a on a yeah, nice no, day. Yes. I mean, I heard it uh, for the first time. I think from like one of those old timey like westerns or something like that mm. and the character definitely meant a raccoon because they were like eating frog legs and possums and shit in the woods like like okay so uh that's how i mean it when i say it I mean, <laughs> a funny little uh colloquialism or whatever and uh mm. totally understandable it doesn't make a fuck you are not you're not offended anyway because you're not yeah. a baby like some people um, but at some time you, you still got to be careful you know i think it's more certain- important Man, I, I wish it was more about like what's in the person's heart, but I guess you can't know that all the time. But it's never well. That's the thing, right? And I'm not like, pretty... and we're not having a private conversation anyway. So it's exactly, weird yeah, too, you know. And it's it's funny because you know, um, I've seen a lot of like I've seen, I could tell you a story. We could talk for days about the racist stuff that happens. Like I could tell you that you know, I used to have to send my wife to buy property because my ex was white. Yeah. So I would have to send her to buy certain properties because they wouldn't sell to black people. Of course, and there's yeah. nothing I could do about it. And now that like a like this is like happens to me every single day. Like I was at the Range Rover Range Rover dealership like two days ago, and some guy asked me to go fetch his car from. Oh dear! Like huh. it's and this is a con. So when you hear you know oh. there's some guys out there are like, oh, hey, why do you hang, have to make right, everything about hang race? Yeah. What were you wearing at the Range Rover dealership? His I was wearing uh, Lacoste running shoes. I was wearing uh, jeans. And I was right, wearing right, jeans, a polo. Said, like, all right. Why does he think you're fucking working in jeans? What I was I thinking know. is like, if you were like, ah, oh, you know, I had, I was dressed like a porter, you know, like white button up shirt, some khakis and some black, black, black shoes on. No, I know. You, well, if it, because the, what Kyle was saying I, used to happen to me all the time. So when I'm I was to give young, some kind of an excuse. I was like 19 <laughs> or 20 and I worked as a junior Fellow accountant white man. at my dad's firm. <laughs> and 
because I the job required a, a tie and a button down shirt. And I was so proud of myself. Now I worked for my dad. I shouldn't have been proud of myself, but I, in my head, felt like I was. I'm sorry. Can I interject? Yeah. I know a little bit about your father's standards. You should have been very proud. That you, <laughs> you know that he if, was you hard had, on me. if you if you were, if you had not been able to cut it, you wouldn't have had that job. You know I, that. Okay. Thank Nothing you. wrong with there's nepotism, some, brother. Keep me going. proud that your father that. thought you had it and, and invited you into his business he and would. then pawn you off to some competitor. Like, yeah, I, <laughs> I sent him over there to work for Dave across the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, I worked oh, for a client. proud to have you work for him. That's it. But, um, but yeah, you're right. Actually, if I was doing embarrass him, he would have never hired me. But anyway, the job required me to dress nice. Shirt, tie, like, like a junior accountant back in the day. I was proud of myself because I felt like I had my shit together at a young age. Every time I'd go like grocery shopping, I'm like, I bet all these people think, well, that young man really has his act together. What they actually thought, where's the bread? Can you help me find this? They always thought I was a retail employee yeah. because I was dressed nice. <laughs> yeah, it same thing. When I, when I was when I was like 19, the one of the one of those cringy and like confident shattering moments uh, <laughs> as a salesman early on was a pro, well, you know, a greeting a guy at the door and be like, hey, I'm Kyle. Welcome to Team Ford. How can I help you? Or like, or like, I don't remember the exact spiel, but something like that. And being, and being like, "What are you a greeter?" <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember thinking, like, I could take you, old man. <laughs> I'm the assassin, mother trucker. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> you bitch. I'm a See, there's a, there's a big, there's a kind of a, I don't know if you call it a fallacy or what have you, but is there always a thing where people will, I will tell certain people about certain situations, and they're like. Hey, that happened to me, but it had nothing to do with it because I was black. It happened because, you know, I had tattoos or mm -hmm. I had a long beard. And I go, there is a difference. And that's part of the thing is that you can't, when you see it from my eyes, then you understand it because, you know, you can shave off that beard or hide those tattoos and then that problem wouldn't occur. Yeah. Whereas mm -hmm. I can't do that. You know what I mean? And I, it's I mean like, you try to teach people, but it's unless you're like, Again, my ex is white. She could tell you stories for days about, you know, getting pulled over and them seeing her. And then you know, like, it, like you have to experience it. And uh, otherwise, it's very hard to comprehend. No, I believe it's true. I've, I've seen plenty of videos. I obviously haven't lived it, but but I believe everything you're saying. And I know mm. it's true. Um, and I'm like and I'm very, you know, I'm very well spoken, educated, yada, yada, yada. And I know that, you know, I've. I, I, you know, I took law, pre-law in university, so if the cop tried to give me a hard time, I'd know the right things to say and to make them worried about their jobs opposed to me worried about living. You know what I mean? And so there are a few there are a few phrases and euphemisms that are used that are to politely describe a black man. And well, <laughs> and, and, and well spoken is one of them. And I was surprised to hear you use it because like I'm I, when I hear that, that's a little bit of a dog whistle to me. Mm. Like, like I, Joe Biden used to do that stuff to Obama when he was running for president. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, oh, he's, he's programmed so articulate. into it. He called him like, articulate. You don't man. sound black. I was like, what do you, and, and clearly yes. what Joe Biden, whether you like it or not, meant it is he's very articulate for a black man. That's what he means. He'd have never said that about fucking Bob Dolers no. or, 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 or Bill Clinton. He was, Oh, yeah, he's well-spoken. Right. He's articulate. Like, yeah. what do you mean? He speaks as well as, like, the other 50 guys who graduated from right. Yale that... From if Obama class, was like, a white Jewish guy, he wouldn't be like, you know, he speaks pretty well. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, I know, brother. That's but, a whole different kind of racism, though. That, but again, Obama's been... He's used to that and he's been used to that his entire life and he's used to hearing it so it's like there's a point where you just got to choose your battles right and you're like ah, whatever you know what i mean like yeah. we could if i if i yelled at every bro i'm a professional paintball player which is like one of the most redneck sports that that exists and it's like but i'm very blessed because i never experienced any racism in the game that's why i love the game so much like, ever? i never nope didn't have oh. any problems, any issues at a game. Well, you play video games. I bet you find it there. <laughs> 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 You're not making that it through a model. Call of Duty lobby. lobby is no joke. <laughs> it is murky. I mean, it's calmed down a bit. Like Warzone is not as bad as it used to, but they, you know, okay. they enabled a lot of ways for you to get people booted, right? But back in the old days, 
you guys know how crazy it was. Like, oh it my was, god, it was. I mean, and we were as guilty as anybody. I, I, I don't think I said some of the more horrific things, but like we get in those, I get in those petty arguments with little children on the internet, and I was like 20, oh. 25 years old. Like, like, like <laughs> you know, like, like, and I was. Screaming I did it out. last night. I don't care what you're talking Not about. Me. I, I was a YouTuber almost from the get go, and my Xbox gamer tag was Woody's gamer tag. There was no hiding in there. I was, mm. you know, I was always polite. I just, I stood people. behind what I said because it was always just like <laughs> shit talking. It, it was, oh, they, would okay. be mad. they would be complaining about our tactics or whatever. When we're on, mm. like, like, you know, we're, we're so try hard. We're probably on like a 50 game win streak every night or something like mm -hmm. that. And, it, and, and I was just like, it doesn't matter what we do, we will always be better than you. <laughs> <laughs> we can do anything we want. You can try as hard as you want, and you'll never beat us. Stay right where you are. We love it. We favorite. love it. <laughs> and, they're just like, and then just mute them all and just pl play against them all night. <laughs> yeah. I once told a guy he was like a doctor who repaired my KD ratio. Yeah. <laughs> like that was oh, the kind of shit I would say. Geez, that's so that's that I'm gonna use that. That's awesome. <laughs> I never understood the people who who weren't like super try hard. Like I was always sweaty. Like there were no casual games. Even when I if I didn't have like people to play, if there were, if I had two friends, we played team tactical, hard as nails, sweating. No chatter, clear comms, listen to footsteps. If I'm by, if, if nobody's on, I'm playing cage match. I mean, I made YouTube videos of that, just just mm. like trying so hard. I did non-stop against the call outs kid. in public lobbies with strangers. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's how I play it. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't think people people don't talk shit on it like they used to, like trying hard or being sweaty or whatever. Like like mm. in Tarkov, they will, but that's just that's more of a game environment thing. But because of like the the value of items in the game like like when someone's really trying hard it's not that they're just like playing more like attentively they actually did a different thing this game that, that's but i'll that's tell clear you and visible something that makes a big difference is when you can hear your opponents talk after they die you know that like call of Duty, because i played apex for like a good year and you couldn't hear what your opponent was saying and that like changed the whole vibe of it but when you play you know, play Warzone and you destroy somebody and you're the kid swearing after you, you say something back that takes you back to that weird rage moment. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So that yeah. makes a big difference on how you interact with other people. And stuff. What was it called? The death chat? I forget what it was called, but that after murder. When chat, everybody was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, there is no more sincere compliment than you cursing me out after you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I take such pride in it. <laughs> You freaking camper! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tark Tarkov introduced VoIP, so you know you're always in in contact, mm. with the proximity sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody thought it was going to be the most toxic thing ever because that game is real toxic in the gameplay. Just it hurts so much. Uh, but everybody's so fucking chill. Like the worst thing that I experienced in like I don't know a thousand hours of playing or something like that was. Come on, I'm gonna fuck you up. I'm coming to get you, you little bitch. Like just aggressive, <laughs> like shit talking. But it was never like like slurs and like mm -hmm. just just mm -hmm. like or or like spamming it to be annoying. Like because you only get like 20 seconds in a in a burst or whatever. So yeah. like everybody's super chill. And more often than not, like like you and your buddy are walking down a hallway. Somebody kills your buddy, and then you two start shooting each other and go into cover. And then you'll start chatting with the guy who just killed your buddy and be like, "Hey, man, I'm trying to." Do this mission here. How about I take my buddy's gun and I get the fuck out and you get everything else? And nine times out of ten, he'll be like, deal. Really? Yeah. It goes like that. Yeah, because it hurts so much to lose. If you you know, if you, mm. it, it's you're risking everything when like I'm offering a great compromise. Like, like you can have almost everything you can carry here and continue on through the map, and we'll go our separate ways. Hell, we can work together if you want. I've done that. Like found some random guy in the game, like. Yo, man, you want to do this together? Yeah, fuck that guy. And just me and this other dude just working together as a team. It's it's a lot of fun. That's see, that's the difference because because that's a PC game, right? And it's yeah, like yeah. I, I play console. And I've always I I stopped playing PC because I got tired of upgrading my computer all the time. I stopped playing PC at Battlefield 2. And I was like, I just remember having to upgrade my 3D accelerator card. I said, okay, no more of this. So now I have <clears throat> I have three Xbox, three Xbox ones, and I have three flat screens on the TV on the wall, and okay. me and my kids game together and stuff, and we'll play together and do co-op missions and stuff like that. So I'm like, I I can get a cool you know raging PC system if I wanted to, but I'm like, 
I hardly have enough time as it is to play. So I'll get on for Warzone and I'll waste a couple hours and then, you know, do like what five I do. or six yeah. years ago, I'd have been like, come on, man, build yourself a land center. But like the, the consoles are so good now. And and I'm so jaded by what the GPU companies have been doing for the last five years to us, like like as consumers. Mm-hmm. That like I, I like I, I just bought a PS5. Like it's, it's like I'm, like I'm gonna play on that doing? stuff. Huh? I think that they have been trying to make as mon- much money as possible by by selling out to these uh to every um, Bitcoin farmer in the world, just just uh, <laughs> allowing allowing their product to be bought in these these huge lots and then allowing the resale. And, but but the main thing is they shouldn't be coming out with a new card if they can't fulfill the orders on the current card. Like, like I don't like that. I, I, I don't. Because I, I've got a 2080 Ti, which still powers everything fine. But I want a current card, and I want it now. And that's... Mm. And that's been so hard to do for the last five years. But it's all about every, the bottom dollar, baby. Uh, sell, I, sell, I, sell. I hate it. They should. Yeah. I don't understand why they can't create enough cards. If it's a if it's a shortage of materials, that's a different story. If if that was the case, but I don't think it's been the case for the last five years because that's how it's been for for, for that so long, eh? Like building your own PC used to be this thing that like smart guys did because you're mm-hmm. saving a little bit of money. And you're doing something that everybody thinks is complicated, but it's really adult Legos. It's like, shit, I saved $1,500 doing an hour's worth of something that was kind of neat. Like, yeah. like, that's how building a PC, PC was. Now it's like, no, you need to build a pre, you need to buy a pre built PC from like a specialty website because they buy GPUs in big lots and they have the um, GPU. Because there's, no there's no way for John Smith to go and get himself one. But mm. I buy power can go buy a hundred. Yeah, I think I yeah. paid a premium when I got a pre-built PC, but it saved me. There's a chip shortage now, so I'm going to get it wrong. What's hard to get, but I'm sure it's hard to like find RAM or find your hard drive. Or, and I know it's hard to find your graphics card. And I was able to just be like, this is what I want. Wh- whatever. Three weeks from now, just get it to me. And it worked out like that. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do um, as soon as I need one. I, I, ha- I haven't felt the, the need for one. Um, I I I, uh, I do plan on streaming uh, when that game comes out that that uh, that forty k game. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. stream the shit out of that because I'm just gonna be playing it so much, and I'm good Has, at that game. Haven't that like haven't that supposed to come out for a while now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it got it literally got delayed for it for six months and then six more months very recently. So it's September mm. now. I think September twenty second. Um, mm. I'm I'm super oh. psyched for. It. I played so much Vermintide before it, um, which is like the fantasy version of mm-hmm. like. Co- four man co op like uh, horde clearing. You know you're fighting rats and just slaying thousands. I I you literally break triple digits some games. It's like got a th- or yeah you'll get a thousand rats killed. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. And you and you have to work as a team together, which is the only kind of game I really like to play. Because lately I've been seeing a lot of 40k uh, animation shorts mm, and yeah, a whole yeah. bunch of little mini movies that look friggin amazing. And there's this guy on TikTok. I don't know what his name is, but he has this weird, you know, nerdy guy. He's got this blonde streak of hair coming down his face. And he just talks about all the the folklore of 40K and the different characters and the different warriors. OK, and stuff. And are you into it yet? Addictive. I am so addicted to there's I a YouTuber to you got to watch. All right. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a YouTuber you got to watch. Um, I think his name is Luton. Uh, I'm going to find his exact name. And that's what he does. He does like oh. hour long videos um, about 40K lore. He'll he'll mm. be like the top ten like most terrifying weapons in 40k <clears throat> and or the top yeah, ten and, like worst jobs or times to be alive in the universe or the worst 40K. planets to live on and all this weird cool stuff and I'm like this this is so and I I never had the patience to do the board game because you got to build the characters and paint them and that that's just not my that wasn't my life right and but it's mm-hmm. like I was a D and D player back when I was young young. But I was like the 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 graphics and the the 3D. I just want to see a movie, and if I can play a game as one of those characters, that'd be dope. Yeah, be dope. the uh, that universe I've been getting more and more into, and I and I feel like it's been growing like in the like pop culture area a little bit. Like it's on the verge. The bubble is on the verge of where they can like actually get it, maybe a TV show or a movie. Mm. I hope because uh, it is. I mean, it's it, it's so weird and dark. Like there are no good guys. I think. That, in the 40k universe, the humans might be the worst species. Like, like <laughs> they're pretty like, scummy. They're so awful. <laughs> they're pretty jerks and what they do to yeah. each other. Now, and, your thoughts on Halo TV show? Um, I've seen the first Ooh. two episodes. I haven't. I, there's probably two more out by now, so that I, so I need to catch up. 
I know, like, like a lot of people don't like that they're changing so much stuff. They're showing Master Chief's face and stuff like that. They shouldn't have done that. I didn't mind. I didn't. Oh, mind. I don't know, dude. I played the game since day one. I've never seen his face, and I, I've heard some. Oh, oh in the books, he takes it off all the time and stuff. I don't care. I, I don't need an excuse. The game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. I guess the way I feel about it is, it wasn't that he was ever. Um, the reason he never took the helmet off was because they never wanted to like personalize him you wanted to, they wanted you to think of yourself as him but that's True. not going to work as well with a mm. tv show we need to identify with him and although it, it works really well with judge dread but that's like his thing like in the lore of judge dread he's never taking it off and like mm. like it, it's a it's a pretty comparable situation right like i, I, yeah. I get it like like yeah. stallone ruined the first version of judge dread because he immediately popped the helmet off and it's like well you're not judge dread you're you're Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> I've seen but, you before. He but Carl Urban yeah. like keeps the helmet on the whole time and frowns. But like, for when it came yeah. out, it was good though. It I has Rob Schneider movie. in it. It did, and he was stupid. But the the how they filmed it, the cinematography when it had that that the warrior cyborg thing that was kind of cool. The, you know what I mean? Like, and that I was from the lore the too. First Judge Dredd was good. I thought it was too stupid. It, it's real the, bad. Um, he, I, I, I'm co-signing on like the one villain. Did that you guys did you see it in cool. the theater? No, I, don't know. I saw it when it was new. No. I'm old, I, bro. I'm old. I, I saw. I, it. I saw it when it came out. You know, I, I okay, like I see what or something. Okay, okay. I, I when I was a kid, like like the only thing I ever begged for was the movie store. Like we had. I struggled with the who's the female character from Speed? Sandra Bullock. Sandra yeah. Bullock's character was so stupid in the first Judge Dredd that that was my problem with it. She was over the top, idiotic, didn't know sex, didn't know kissing, didn't Excuse seem me. to know anything. Wait, wait, what movie. are you talking about? So you're talking about a different movie. What am movie? I talking about? Also talking with about, Sylvester Stallone. So Judge Dredd. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, you're talking about the one with Wesley Snipes in it, um, where uh, where Am Sylvester, I? I fucked what's it, it fucking called? <laughs> I'm spacing out. You're, there's Demolition where, Man. Demolition Man. So yes. they freeze. So in the, the, it's in like I'm sorry, the, it's in the hell scale of 2001. <laughs> but no, it's easy to get them confused because they yeah. came out really uh, close to each other, and they're both Sylvester Stallone action movies in the future. Yeah. Right, so, like, like it makes to sense. all the people leaving comments and Reddit <laughs> threads about this. I deserve that. <laughs> no, they're, <laughs> they're very similar movies. The <laughs> Thank the you, Kyle. You man with a classic. Though. Also, you would have got confused because Rob Schneider in both mm. movies. Yeah, I, it's a it's a mistake Ooh, that, that can good. be made. I, I, <laughs> but shucks. Except for the hulking black guy, it was that was, they were very close. Yeah, Wesley Snipes yeah. is great in that. He was awesome in that. Yeah, that's what thing. The thing I love about Wesley is that he was a martial artist in real life. Yeah. So when he did his moves, that's why I loved Blade so much, because he did stuff that an actor wouldn't do. Like when he get ready to fight and he draw his sword in front of him, across, you know, mm -hmm. on the ground, like yeah. a line across. You know what I mean? Like he did little things that a martial artist would know, and that's yeah. why Blade was so wonderful. I can't remember who it was that that's in the. Um, who's the guy that plays Daredevil? His name's escaping me. The TV oh. show or the bad one. Um, not no, 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 not Daredevil. Um, Deadpool. Uh, is it Ryan? Oh, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Um, he, I think he's in uh Blade Three, Blade Trinity. Yeah, that was so and horrible. It's real bad. So, uh, and uh, there was an interview later on where he he was like, they asked him, they like, what's it like to work with Wesley Snipes? He's like, who? Wesley Snipes. Oh, oh, I've actually never met Wesley Snipes. I've only met Blade. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. apparently, like every time they interacted, he was played. Like, like he, 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 he was a uh, persona, same character. Yeah. But there was a lot that was a cursed set because nobody got along. Um, uh, Wesley knew the script was bad and he was fought the director over every scene. Like, it was a really bad, and again, it was a stupid, you know, they it's turned it into a comedy. Anyway. Well, you know why are I mean? they throwing those two white kids in there anyway? Well, that's the thing. It didn't make any sense to bring the extra characters in it. And yeah. I've like, always wondered. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Blade was... Two was so good with the, what's his name from uh, Hellboy. And, oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then they brought the you know the Japanese the Japanese samurai guy. Yeah, they had then... the whole team of like exactly. Blade Slayers that he like 
It's a cool yes. concept. I don't know any yeah. of these movies. What are they from? The How 90s? could you not know Blade? It's from like 2000. It's the first Marvel movie that like blew up and made like 50, 60 million dollars. Blade Ooh, is 50 Blade. million. <laughs> it was huge. It, it, Dude, it was, it was, it was huge. That started, that got the ball rolling. So now Blade has a reason billion. why. What, have you never seen Blade? He's, I think I have, but it's been He's so a long. black vampire who, with a I samurai was, sword that's acid edged and he fights other vampires in the night. Back when that movie came out. Uh, Wesley Snipe didn't pay taxes, and I was a young man. Why are we talking? Oh, no, 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 no. That was way before not paying taxes. Bro. Yeah, was he did it his time? Yeah. <laughs> that was his prime. Yeah, like that movie he didn't was pay taxes at that time. But it, that opening case. scene in the nightclub, and you know, they they start pouring blood the from blood. the ceiling, and it's like that was like I saw that in theaters, and it was like it was like the Matrix of that time. Yeah, that like movie that movie still holds up super well, except for that one scene at the end with the CGI when uh, mm. uh well, Whisker or what? Not Whisker, uh, whatever the, the Whistler. Head, no, no, Whistler is a good guy. I know what Whistler's you're talking about. Whistler's the good about. guy. I'm, Deacon I'm Frost. Frost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Frost turns into a CGI blood vampire or whatever, that that that's kind of nonsensical. But the rest of the movie is sick. Um, yeah. I like. I remember when they put him in that like crazy crucifix thing that like pierced mm. him over, and I was like, "Fuck, yeah, that's that so was... hardcore." <laughs> and then his mom. <laughs> Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. Like that yeah. was such a good movie, and then he goes, "Some motherfuckers always want to ice skate uphill." I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> that was nice when he said that." I Pretty was like, one. "But it was like it was took on a whole different." And I had the comic book before that came out, so I was freaking out. But it would, oh, it, cool. it it really, you know, changed the whole vibe of vampirism. Right? It helped. I it like, he I think it helped like black male action stars like like mm -hmm. take another step. I think it helped. Um, like comic book movies in general, take another step. Well, I watched Unbreakable last night. That's another one that's like dude, kind of a oh quasi. My gosh. I, there's this one shot that I, I had never noticed before, and it's it's after the Orange Man, who's like the villain, pushes him off the balcony. He goes in the pool. The little mm -hmm. girls save him, and he does he does like a press, gets out of the pool, and the camera stays low though, so you just see him from like the uh, maybe the upper thighs down with an like upward angle, so you see the two girls, and uh, his his raincoat becomes a cape. In that oh. shot, and it's like in that moment. Now, yeah. now he's he's flipped the switch, and he like he goes in and fucking rear naked chokes that giant motherfucker to mm -hmm. death. Yeah. And the and the and that scene is really it's really simple. It's literally just a, a one minute choke out scene. But the guy is slamming Bruce Willis into that wall so hard. I know. Yeah, it's and the wall's breaking and everything. But yeah, he, I just always think like when the cops got there the next day and they looked in that room at that big man dead. Mm -hmm. And then, like, holes in the wall that are, like, eight feet up, body-sized, like, yeah. we're like, who, what the fuck happened? Yeah. <laughs> but how, how well thought out was that series? Oh, like, great. years apart and then split after with, what's his name? Um, I love Split with James McAvoy. Um, why didn't he get an Oscar for that? I don't know why that wasn't nominated because that to me was a really good. It's a unique kind of performance. Yes, um, but it's really well done. It's really yes. well done. But he's got so many of them in him. And um, when he played the 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 woman, yeah. the woman character, like he the 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 oh, and just the body transformation that I don't. He got think ripped. He, CGI, he, he got fucking, so ripped. He got are, so are they, ripped. They got to be using some CGI a little. That's bit. That's what I thought. But if they did, they hit it really well. I because... think that. So like you can look a lot different, but if you like dehydrate, if you hydrate up and get a little bit round, get a little fluffy and then and then go on camera as that, like do your like normal shit like that and then always mm -hmm. have bad posture and crouch a little bit and mm. stuff. And then when you're going to be the beast, fucking let him get out, let him dehydrate a little bit, let him get a pump going on, let him get, yeah. make his skin a little bit redder and then hit him with maybe some CGI veins and then just let him stand big and tall and be imposing and he's just going to look like that, I guess. Woody, I do you know what we're talking about right now? I, no. I was you looking, I was it? curious though about um, why didn't he get an Oscar? So like, I wonder who... I, no, I, I can't say why it wasn't nominated. Some of this shit, like Brian Cranston and Trumbo. That's a movie. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, Eddie I didn't... Redman in the Dangerous Danish Girl. Like I don't know these fucking people. Oh, that's a guy from uh, Dangerous Beast. He's a very good actor. But that was the year that Leonardo DiCaprio won in The Revenant. Mm. So why oh, he didn't get nominated yeah. to get you? Beating Revenant Le beating was hardcore. It, it was hardcore. Now, I thought that movie kind of sucked. But, um, what? Uh, yeah, it was so slow. Let it go. This is a, let it oh, go. It's a movie about walking in the woods for fucking days. Yeah, I'm bored. <laughs> Did I, you say I, let I it do go? that every let it go. I do that for fun <laughs> in the weekend. Right? That's not a big deal. I was out there in the snow starting a fire. So when my <laughs> friends got there, the camp was set. 
right? Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio can eat my ass. He doesn't have shit on me. But I, I, so I'm eating that fish. I ate sushi yesterday. Big yeah, deal. Right? <laughs> right? I, I'm with Kyle on this. But anyway, Taylor's I, I, cut right now. We're not going to make a fucking movie about him. Taylor's cut right now. Yeah, Taylor, Taylor's oh. like out there. We don't, we don't know if he's going to make it or not. Shit, shit went sideways. Oh. And uh, no and they act part. like that Leonardo DiCaprio thing was a big deal. It's not. But I do remember like everybody talking about how Leo had never won an Oscar. And it was almost like his turn rather than his performance. He didn't get. No, I guess he didn't get it for Gilbert Grape or whatever. It was his first Oscar, right? The Revenant is only. That's a yeah. shame because he's an amazing actor. Yeah, I, I I remember I looked through the times he lost, and the people who won were pretty amazing too. Like he mm. never lost to freaking Happy Gilmore or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah. So he finally got his Oscar. Then if if that guy from the Split had won, he would have been taking it from DiCaprio, which is hard. Yeah, but I like a uh, hard call. I feel like movies like that really set the groundwork for this ridiculous superhero phase that everybody thought it was going to end when like Captain America, Tony Stark and everybody died, but they're pumping these TV shows out and everybody mm. else that was like, had fallen behind is like now trying to make their own superhero shit with anything and everything that they can buy. So I think you're going to see like a whole wave of obscure shit for the next few years. I don't know if that's bad. So, so I watched, it's not um, bad. It's nope. just, I'm Morbius. a comic nerd. I love it. I yeah. saw Morbius. I guess he's in the Spider-Man universe. Apparently, there's like a Marvel universe that's not owned by Marvel. It's owned by Sony, and they have lesser characters. Morbius kind of sucked. Most everybody hated Morbius. I know, no, but I kind of liked it. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't. I don't I'm know why you. people complain so much. But I, liked, I liked it. It, it wasn't really. It, it would be bad on the scale of Marvel movies, but good on the scale of every movie, according to me. You know, not great. I said good. Um, that's where I think Morbius is. But like all these other universes popping up, I'm here for it. I'm not going to like everyone, but let's see what you got. You know what I like? I rewatched The Boys recently. That thing is great. Oh, the great. Boys is fantastic. There's some animated companion content that's related to canon. Have you seen it? I just saw that it existed. I, 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 had, I didn't know about it till recently. Chiz told us about it in uh, WhatsApp. You probably missed it uh, weeks and weeks back. But uh, he said that it's it like fits in with the main story and you should probably watch it i just haven't picked it up yet i plan to uh i've been watching fucking master chef man uh <laughs> just watching fucking trash TV. let me tell you about the sickest I'm growing line up of master of you. How dare kyle you? has been talking about this blind asian woman mm. who's been like winning master chef competitions all this time okay and i, I mostly that. don't care about cooking and don't care about uh people with disabilities <laughs> but oh, Jesus, Murphy, okay. <laughs> but the sickest joke in the whole series <laughs> is like this blind Asian female chef is possibly the worst driver ever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, ah, so it's wrong. So worth it. here's the best part. Here's the best part. She won the whole fucking season. The blind girl did. Let mm. me tell you one of the f shittiest parts. When you get down to the final four on that show, they pair you. You pair. You pair off. And the, they compete as teams of two. So blind girl, she gets to select her teammate. And she picks the best chef on the show. The other girl who's excellent. Like, mm. so talented. And they have 90 minutes to cook a three-course meal for six people. Not only the hosts of the show, which is like Gordon Ramsay and those other two famous chefs, but their three mentors who have been flown in as well. So these older famous chefs. The blind girl can't do shit because, you know, she's blind. So that means that the other girl has to do all of this versus a team of two. She does it somehow, but she doesn't manage to get like three of these rice cakes onto the plate. She's her, her arms are a blur <laughs> for 90 minutes. And the blind girls are like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Did are you, we winning? <laughs> Did you make the gnocchi? <laughs> Did you do everything yet? <laughs> oh, like geez. like and and sure enough like she fucking loses and so then she i don't loses know to the girl she helped she well she only lost because like she had so much to do it was i felt bad because there's a quarter million dollar prize in the show and it's like Sorry. they don't have a fair show they have a silly show where like they change they change the rules up and like they're not and sometimes the rules are so fucking hardened like there was a there was the best chef one season 
here, uh, there's like maybe 12 of them left, but this girl's clearly going to win the fucking show. She's like a, l- a different level. And they're like, all right, when you, you know, you have 60 minutes to make a pie or whatever. And when you're done, bring it up here, which was a new thing. You don't have to bring it up there normally. You usually just hands up. Well, this time they want the pies up front. She's done with five minutes to spare, but she doesn't take her pie up. And they're like, time's up. Brittany, why, why you didn't bring your pie up? They kicked her off the fucking show because she didn't bring her pie up. And the worst part is they tasted it anyway and told her it was the best pie of everything. Oh, jeez. <laughs> they were like, it's a damn shame because this is the <laughs> best pie I've ever had in my life. Oh, now wow. get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, that's Even the TV competitors though, right? were crying. Oh. <laughs> it was TV. Like, her pie could have sucked and it would be a better story if the way they told it. It seems Jesus. unlikely. That's, yeah, I can't, so, I I mean, can't do the footy show, off, foodie but, shows. It, it's it's that I just like Gordon Ramsay. I think I, I've watched all of his his silly shows. He's awesome. He's, yeah, he's turned it into a billion dollar empire. So <sighs> I saw him. He had that show where he goes and helps restaurants and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I saw Kitchen one nightmares. episode where I saw one episode the where the owners of the restaurant took all the tips and they yeah. went to the wait staff. Mm-hmm. That was messed up. That was yes. shitty. that was messed up. <laughs> Like, is, how do you how do you do that? Like seriously, now, is there a reality where that's not shitty? I, hear me out. I don't know why I'm defending these people because I really don't. But like, what if it was like, hey, we take all the income in, including the tips, but our waitresses make bank. You know, we pay seventy five grand a year here, so then they we give health benefits. Sure, we collect the tips, but we're not thieves. That's just part of the rev, the restaurant. So they're intentionally we- doing bad business. They're like, they're like, hey, let's take a, let's take their tips and then lose a shitload of money giving them health care and stuff. That that's a good idea for. A, they're not doing that. They're taking the tips because it amounts to more than whatever they're giving back. And You're the best right. the best thing about like like being a waitress is like, the prettier you are and the harder you try, the more fucking money you make. And I've known waitresses who make so much goddamn yeah. money, like as much as strippers. I, I've insane. seen I've seen restaurants that say don't tip here. Look, our food's expensive and we pay everyone appropriately. We're a non-tip mm-hmm. restaurant. We're trying something different. I've seen car dealerships that say our prices are already low. We don't negotiate. You know, like there are other alternative business models. And I guess I was trying to make that fit. Um, I will tip even under the table if I have to. Like I, yeah, that I've reminds me of that scene from that reminds me of that scene from Reservoir Dogs when the one guy said he doesn't tip and everybody gave him a hard time. I've got that GIF saved permanently in a folder on my phone. Oh, because, really? <laughs> because, at the, because at the end of the argument, he goes, he thinks it over after they've made their counter argument that you must tip. He goes, waitressing is the only job that a young woman can get when she's not no education and still support a kid. Okay, you understand? It's the cornerstone of our society. You know, he goes through this whole fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then and, and Steve Buscemi goes, fuck all that. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Mr. Pink. That's all... Fuck all That's that. some bull. Yeah, no, I tip, but if it's one of those places like I haven't been one that that has like a no tipping policy, but if I went to one, I wouldn't tip. Yeah, it. Zach had an interesting thing here. Gordon Ramsay, a British chef restaurant, TV personality, net worth of two hundred and twenty million. So I've been following Formula One, and I find this interesting because we look up their salaries and their net worth all the time. I know these things are inaccurate, but they routinely have like salaries of eight million a year. Net worth, twelve million. And I'm like, bro, you save anything? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> How do you make eight million a year and you've only squirreled away twelve in your lifetime? You're 29 years old. Did you just start making this? I, I uh, it's fun to watch. And these, there's like this uh, thing, the form, the F1 driver lifestyle, where they get a dope ass apartment in Monaco and. You know, live the high life and the uh, uh, women and fast cars and the whole nine yards. It is interesting to me. Zach, can you pull up a picture of George Russell? D- d- do George Russell shirtless just because I'm gay. <laughs> 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 when this guy comes up, I find it interesting. I think he's 23 years old, but he's been like the it driver for two years now. This like that he's been branded as future world champion, etc. He's a good looking guy. He's English, I think. And he's a Formula One driver. And he's just like in some ways, like you could argue the coolest person in the world. What's cooler than a multimillionaire F1 driver, 21 year old or something? That's him. It's not his best picture, but you know, he's a good looking guy. And uh, I feel like he, 
I don't know. I find it interesting to see people with like this level of success and coolness and good looks and all of them. Every single F1 driver was born with a silver spoon. There's no one who got into this sport and just like self, even the people who come from modest backgrounds. It's like the Chael Sonnen story where it's like there were some years. It pains me to say this. My father didn't even make six figures. Well, okay. He barely made six figures. Like, like there were no years where he made less than that. And uh, yeah, this is just casual George Russell. I wish you could see his face because he's a handsome guy. None of these pictures show him. But um, uh, it is interesting to me to watch these guys who were just born rich, live in the... There it is. That's this guy's life. That's his real life. I don't even think this is a special day for him. He's not on vacation. That could be his apartment or his boat or whatever. Kind of kind of looks like Young Woody. <laughs> Better. <laughs> but, Have you, you well, you know who guy, my huh? hero... <laughs> you know who my hero is from uh, FOA1 is Lewis Hamilton, baby. Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton. Mercedes. Crazy. Yeah, dude. And he, this came, guy from is picking... a, he came from a modest background. <laughs> Look it up. Look it up. I, oh, oh, you think I haven't looked up his background 15 times? Um, for Lewis? Yeah. So, okay. like, he – modest isn't the word that fits, right? Like, his dad made good money. I think they had more than one house. I'm not positive on that aspect. Um, his father funded his karting career. And then after he got out of go-karts – they all start in go-karts. Yeah. Uh, he got discovered by, I think, Mercedes or someone close to them. And they sort of funded what no non-super rich family would be able to fund. Like you can't race in Formula Three, two, and whatever's you know, mm-hmm. without that kind of backing. But still, like he never worried about food on the table. He never worried about clothes. He could. He came from a family that could buy him name brand clothes all the way through. He had Calvin Klein underwear as a kid. Like that. That's the kind of modest background he came from. Uh, he retells it as like i had to sleep on the couch yeah like when you were on the road like uh, uh, in your like f formula one racing you maybe couch surf that doesn't make you broke like i couch surfed last weekend <laughs> you know like it, <laughs> what do you think f1 is the most um exclusive sport like that i can't think of do a you think more of there's anything one i got it horse dancing Ooh, that is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't try know, to get not... into horse dancing. <laughs> <laughs> horse dancing is hilarious. I love that it's an Olympic sport, you and it is a great a horse, entry. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kyle, you, you've played enough with motors to know how expensive motorsports can get. Um, yeah, it's crazy expensive, and and it's funny to see these guys like. Like tennis isn't even exclusive. Enough. They're playing games. I don't quite know the variation of tennis. I was like, that's not squash and that's not tennis. Is that pickleball? I don't even know <laughs> what that's. What is that racket? I'm not but you sure. Know, but there's, you know what? Formula One is freaking dangerous, man. Like they da- more dangerous than stock racing. Stock car is like that. Those little cars, like when they crash, they crash. Like they, I can't remember who recently passed away but they just had footage where lewis hamilton was doing it uh interview mm-hmm. and he's watching the screen and you see a guy crash on the screen and lewis is going oh that's not good you know what i mean and the guy died on on the track hey anthony and it's like it, you know they get paid as well hey we got company i don't think you how you fun. doing there we are yeah there it is yeah i had the uh, button pushed roger for, uh, when, when i'm gaming i i don't usually leave that on when i'm yapping <laughs> <laughs> Saying curse words, as they say. How you doing, guys? Good, good. Awesome. I just, uh, I just had um, the the uh, delivery, you know, because COVID made everything available to deliver. So I got a case of these delivered, but I had two cases delivered and a, a six pack of Budweiser because you have to go over a certain uh, price. It was like thirty nine ninety nine. So I'm like, oh, I'll get that, and then it turns into you know the. The old Wheel of Fortune thing where you had to pick price. Okay, and I'll take a beer because it's got to get up to thirty nine ninety nine. So I ordered two of those things, and of course uh, they forgot one. And now what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> like the guy's gone. It's like he goes. He's he's like, oh, call the uh, call the store. I'm like, ah, oh, call the fucking store. Pain in the ass. The convenience, and then you know you get screwed. Anyway, how you doing? <laughs> it's like Joe Pesci. They fuck you at the drive-thru. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every time, man. Every time. Every fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got one case. <laughs> so White Claw, though, isn't that like a teenage girl's alcohol? Yes, my date uh, left it over. At the <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know who's going to make the joke first. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no, actually, um, uh, I, I ordered a beer, too, but this was all that was in the house when I first got home. And God forbid I wait until the delivery comes to drink something. Not bad. <sighs> Kyle, what are you working on? No audio? Me? What? Kyle is... Oh, yeah. Kyle. He's Thank not making All right. So, no, no, Kyle. Kyle, your audio is off. You're gone. I'm not hearing anything. Never know. I see you trying. Wait. Did Wait. he just say something for a second? I don't know. You okay. Now I hear you. I don't know there what's happening. Okay, so you hear me. I still hear you. Okay. Okay, we're good then. Yeah. He's, it's no, one he's, of those he's, things he's, that, yeah. It's a kung fu I, movie I, right now. It's it's a soft sync. It's one of those things that uh, that someone's sound drops out when somebody else is talking, I think. I hate that. Is it? Am I laggy? Uh, you seem you're perfect okay right now, there. I think. You're, no, you're good yeah. now. Okay. So did hey, you guys Andy, see the... Oh, yeah. That's you know, hanging. <laughs> screwing <laughs> around. Playing, getting in trouble. I, nah, see you're, I'm... I see you're taking in the Lord's word over there. See, you know, Tucker Carlson showing you the right way. All right, Tucker's on in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In that information diet. All right, I like it. <laughs> you know what? It's uh, Tucker's hilariously funny. I, I, I watch. You know, I, I don't think I watch any mainstream media to actually get news. It's mm -hmm. just funny. He goofs on, you know, goofs on uh, politicians and uh, shit that's Tucker going on all the time. I think I yeah. see every one of his monologues, and uh, yeah. I don't think he does really well for accuracy and, and, but I, I, I guess I enjoy watching the, the style, the premise that like, yeah. like he lays out a really shaky premise and then he builds this big tower on top of it. And <laughs> I, I'm like, look at him go, look at him spin, look at him like work. It, it, he is a master of his craft. I wonder who writes it. Like, does he have, yeah, he's gotta have writers, you know, I'm sure. Okay, I don't doubt that he has writers. What's his part in the process? Do, like, mm. I doubt he's seeing this stuff for the first time when he reads it. He reads it masterfully. So how yeah. is he in the writing, I wonder? Yeah, I don't know. But it's like I said, it's entertaining. His his numbers are through the roof. I mean, no one else even compares um, on any other news channel. So he's got to be doing something right as far as entertaining people. Uh, he's... He's more fun to watch than any of the other uh, news channels personalities. So, yeah, I pop it on. I like his monologue when he first starts. It's uh, it, it it also um, reinforces everything uh, I'm thinking. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the other side. I'm like, you know, he's ruining America. He's brainwashing. Oh, he's no, this. No. He's that. But I, I... Anthony's yeah. sitting there like, I knew I was right. <laughs> right. Yeah, a little confirmation bias. Never, I told you. Uh, never hurts. <laughs> I saw it on the TV. <laughs> I haven't watched Fox I News. I did my own long. research. Mm? Like, I don't know how to get Fox News. Like, unlike C CNN, seems to like give their shit away because I guess nobody wants to watch. Oh, but, God. The bomb Fox, that's CNN Plus. Fox News wants to get paid. Like, like I, I, don't, I don't, and I'm not paying Fox News. So I don't get yeah. a lot of it. They did, uh, they, they did an online thing. Uh, Fox Nation, and that d is doing very well. And then CNN goes, well, why don't we do CNN Plus? And they start this online version, and it's literally, I think, 10,000 people a day tune in, which is won't even cover the cost of the <clears throat> bandwidth. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, they're they're kind of screwed as far as that goes. My uh, my uncle's been indoctrinated by, uh, oh. by Tucker and a few of his compatriots, I believe. My, my, I visited my father. hadn't seen him in a couple months. I uh, saw him over the weekend, and uh, he's like, "Yeah, your, your uncle. He's been. They got him, Kyle. They got him. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> they got him. I was like, who got him? I don't know. He gets his news from his phone now, and <laughs> there's a fa few Facebook groups he's in, but uh, primarily there's some sort of like 
secret Facebook military group that he thinks uh -oh. he's a part of. <laughs> oh, he's, doing he's on the water. That ain't good. I'll do that. The gravy seals. He's like, <laughs> move it over. The like, gravy seals. The bad guys right with reflective glasses and goatees. He's like, I used to try to dispute him. Yeah, he would come over and I used to try to argue with him, but he gets so mad that now I just I say, oh, that's wild. I didn't know that. Thank you for telling me. Oh, God. <laughs> It'll be like most off the wall shit um, <laughs> it's bad well, like, it's I, funny one of the conspiracy of the... things that he heard um this is a completely different individual like in small town georgia just um she struck struck up a conversation with my father at a grocery store i believe and she told him that uh donald trump would soon be back in power this is many months ago keep oh, going. but God, donald yeah. trump would be soon be back in power mm -hmm. and that at this very moment there were gun battles taking place in the tunnels beneath the White House. And if you stand, <laughs> if you stand outside the White House gates today, that's why the fences are up. They don't want you to hear the shots. Oh. You can hear the Patriots fighting for fun. I don't like the way they're laughing. They're calling my pillow salesman a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I swear the Dominion machines were all programmed for Biden <laughs> to win. Uh, talk oh about someone gosh. that went from rags to riches back to rags again. He he, he had that book. Uh, he, he got over a crack addiction, literally dying on the street one day. And then he gets this pillow idea, makes a fortune, turns into like a one of these folk hero kind of guys, mm -hmm. and then just flushes it right down the shitter with this, uh, with the election stuff. And and he the, split um, his sales in half, you would yeah, think. But, but, you but would the, think. The thing about the right is they will buy a bunch of pillows just to send a message. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they will. They will. You, buy me it, some pillows. Find me a single wide trailer without eight of them bitches in it, and I'll <laughs> give you a dollar. All right? Oh, my God. They support what? their people. If you, you there know, was a Trump rally like close to me the other day. That is no, true. And I was so regretful for not having gone because I've been to one before. If you've never been, I highly suggest it for you. It's it's amazing. Okay. I'm yeah. good. It's oh, no, they would good. love you. Let me tell you this, Wolf. <laughs> oh, Let me tell you this, Wolf. They would treat you with the, oh yeah. You would be like the biggest celebrity there. They would all want their picture taken with you. <laughs> oh, they I was would say that. They, take a picture would, with me. Take a picture like, of me. Who? It, token. Oh, Come, come take you could be the guy. You could be the guy. Like, like honestly, I'm gonna be real. Uh, You're kind of being our guy right now. Because <laughs> I was thinking, it's nice uh, that we've got an ant tonight. You got to balance. It's all safe. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that way, oh, I love it. Like, look at this white supremacist nonsense. And then there you right. are. And they're like, "What are you talking about? I might be watching this clip." I don't know Holy what you're talking shit. about, Nessa. The proud guy oh, can't be racist oh, oh, right there. <laughs> um, <it's>, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, the head of the proud funny. boys is black, uh, and uh, the, the Hispanic guy has a black is. wife. He's kind and of Hispanic, but you want to hear the most? Gavin the McGinnis most... has an I, an Indian wife, and not yeah. all skin folk are kin folk. That's not all I'm saying. <laughs> you want to hear the most confusing, <laughs> uh, confusing racist moment of my life? It's when uh, in one of our hangouts that we do every month with fans um one of the black guys showed up in blackface oh, and like like he, interesting a, as a black man he painted himself with blackface and then did like the big lips and then Whoa, he ate right. fried chicken that was his halloween costume oh, wow I mean, it was like old, old it was a confusing time for me <sighs> Yeah, they're the huh. fools out there. It's it's there's a lot of confusion out there and you got your Candace Owens and you got those I don't want to judge, but there's you know, people grow up in certain situations and some of it is fight or flight and some of it is just program. It's and there's no one side that's technically right, but again, back in the days, you know, you had slaves who were just happy to be in the house and chilling. Just to be clear, he was a black man. I know, I know. I'm okay. saying All back right. in the you know, you, there've always been, you know, slaves who were happy being slaves. Oh, and they saw the they saw the positives to it. So let me ask you this: nothing you can change. Do you think there are any slaves who actually had it good? Like, like remember Samuel L. Jackson in a Django? Oh, compare, like, like, absolutely. That, like, absolutely. Would, that's a good gig he had. Absolutely. The, when you saw behind the scenes, the respect that Mr. Candy had for that guy, like you, then you realized that it, it, it might not even be about race anymore. It, this whole thing might be a big power play. He, he doesn't believe different skulls do different things. Like, like clearly he had. 
the person he respects most in the world is Samuel L. Jackson. Like when he goes behind the scenes. Yeah, but there were the lot like a lot of the nannies were black, and so that's why like oh, Gone with the Wind, kids. Gone with the Wind near the Mammy was they was loved so much. You know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's always been a scenario. I think yeah, but, you, yeah. uh, I think you're kind of missing a little bit of the point with Sam Jackson and Leo DiCaprio and Django. There was a definitely a barrier there. There was a hierarchy that would never be, be crossed. Uh, uh, cross. Absolutely. And, and and Sam Jackson knew he was the house boy and had to be it. And and mm. um, Candy knew that he would cr- crack his skull open if if yeah. he crossed him. But, but at the same they time, had there this, was that mutual respect. Right? They that had is, this. Yes. This, but I don't but, know. I, remember, I, like I, I don't know. Do you remember, remember when scene? Candy went in the room and Sam was sitting in the chair, sitting in the chair, with drinking Mr. Candy's Drink, like drink yeah. with and his he was, glass. Like, He's exactly. drinking at they're drinking at the same glass. Yeah, like think about yeah, what was, that. You know, there was like, a scene he him. was telling him what to do and saying that they were there for that girl. Yeah, that and guy. he's yeah, doing yeah. it. And he's not. And he wasn't it, doing and, and, it as an oh, underling. You need to know. You need to know, sir. Exactly. He, he, he was saying, "Oh You've no, been no." Fooled. Sam Jackson's part in it had been because he had been so. That's his life. I yeah. mean, you know, his life was looking at this guy as the be all end all of his existence yeah that's you a good know? fucking movie he was uh, but oh but genius i I, th- I think dicaprio's character was more like you know loved his dog too yeah. i think that's kind of how he looked at it absolutely uh, he did yeah, not, no, yeah yeah we're not saying dicaprio we're not saying dicaprio saw him as an equal yeah yeah by any means but he he was still a love character I, I think yeah. that he saw him is as as much of an equal as he saw anyone in the world though like, like it's not. It's not like I think he saw him above those like crazy hillbillies that lived out there and like. Yeah, uh, yeah, he in did that, in that shed. Absolutely, huh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. He saw that he's he was higher up than the the the, the white yeah. hunters, the like, white what, slave hunters, and those guys. So it was Sam a little Jackson. bit different than the first plantation. Was like, you want me to treat him like white folks? Yeah, well, I yeah, didn't, yeah. That ain't what I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't exactly. not what I said. And exactly. Sam Jackson really enjoyed having that power over everyone else on the yeah. plantation. Yeah, like he that. was the the voice of uh leo dicaprio when he wasn't around and he knew and used and abused that power so you know again power corrupts <laughs> but again it's like there's a lot and uh, by the way uh, and the my name is wolf I play, hi wolf <laughs> i'm a professional paintball player so i know you've never heard of that's a thing before that's a whole different story but hey, essentially i was I'm also- on a team back in the uh 80s i swear no way nail spot paint pistols oh and, my uh, gosh yeah little bolt action things and go out in the woods in uh quorum where uh that's and, awesome and play, yeah, how to team the red devils it was great yeah that's amazing but yeah again um i'm i guess what you someone call libertarian like you know i'm mm-hmm. a black guy uh, I'm a gun owner. I love Why my guns. Why did you tell me that before? I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> that would have saved you a lot of embarrassing comments. There are some other people who will confuse us until this moment. What the fuck? Oh, shit. Um, Here I was I, I, fucking I, I, with the contrast on my camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's my lighting. It's my lighting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, I, <laughs> uh, I've had to... Uh, I, I, let me tell you... Um, you know, I, I'm I'm a capitalist and I love my money and I love my guns. But at the same time, there's certain things I could never do. I could never do the Republican thing. Right. But mm-hmm. I could tell you that I've been offered certain positions and off. And there's a lot, a lot of money in being a black Republican. Oh, mm-hmm. sure. There's a lot yeah. of money in it. That's how this whole conversation began. Me telling yes, you, exactly. that if you want to see a Trump rally, go because you're a a man among yeah, boys. Yeah. Oh, I'd be up on the stage you. right beside Trump. Yeah. <laughs> These are my, they, that's the other thing. I, I guarantee if you get there early, they'll be like, no, 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 sir, no, no line for you, Mister Wolf. Uh. Yeah, right this way, sir. <laughs> like, like, they're gonna put you right in there behind Trump, like between two blonde ladies. It's gonna be great. Like, <laughs> they want your reactions, and if you play it up, you'll be a celebrity. <laughs> You'll Shoot, be at all the like right. my Would you chance. like to come to Charlotte with us? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, they'll bust yeah. you around. 
I could no, never. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm more of a uh, a libertarian myself when it comes. To, I'm closer to libertarian than I am Republican. People think I'm like a hardcore conservative Republican. It's it couldn't be further from the truth. I like being left the fuck alone. I like making money. I like keeping as much of it as I can. I want the government out of my business. Leave me alone. Make sure whatever the government's supposed to do, do that. Leave everyone else alone with with their uh, lives uh, that, you know, we apparently have a great opportunity to make something of in this country. And that's pretty much my stance. I I don't sit there and go like, oh, abortion. Like, I don't give a shit how many abortions somebody gets. Doesn't matter to me. I, I'm not one of these, you know, staunch right wing, every bar, a part of the agenda thing. Um, I've always I just, said I don't want to be left alone. To... It should be legal to get an abortion with a suppressed machine gun that you bought at Sears. <laughs> because Sears would exist uh, in my America. Uh, uh, Sears, Sears would I still like be Sears. there. As I'm smoking weed. Yeah. The I'm number just... one seller of <laughs> If I'm going to shoot a baby, I want to be stoned. My dad has to buy Craftsman tools off Amazon. It has Craftsman to match the other. Die hard batteries, all that fun stuff. I, but I think I'm one what, of the what's... few people who's brave enough to say that like, I'm pretty sure abortion is murder, but like, it still should be legal. Like, like, like. I, I, Isn't I, that I think, what everybody I, says? No, I I think like most uh, pro, pro choice, choice people are like, oh, that's that's not a life until yeah, like yeah. That's you name it, it really. <laughs> <laughs> Did you yeah, name exactly. it yet? <laughs> you were like, a, well, no, not yet. Yeah. Crying. Give it here. It's <laughs> not a life a until it gets its four hundred one k. They give it the lobster treatment with the knife, like right Oh there. God! <laughs> Jesus. Oh. There's a huge religious uh, <laughs> aspect to the whole thing, and that really takes any um, debate out of it. It's very hard to debate pro-life and and pro-choice because there's religion involved in the pro-life side, and you never arguing with somebody to convert their religion. So they believe that that life starts at conception. There's nothing you're going to tell them that will lead them to believe, no, it starts once, you know, it's, it took its first breath of air. Or, But I guess there has to be a line someone draws somewhere as to when it becomes a problem to abort a baby or are you killing it? Like, and, and, and that's the always been the that problem. Line, right? Right. That line like, starts at the death penalty. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, so, so where Anthony was like, yeah, at some point the fetus becomes viable and you probably shouldn't kill it anymore, right? right. What's viable, right? Like, And what I think it... we all know when the baby comes out, you, you uh, most people would go, yeah, that's a human being you can. Now, the day before, because it's still in there, wouldn't that be a viable fetus? It can live on its own just as well as it does the next day. Sometimes. But, well, but that's just it. You know it when you see it, but when is that line? Because it's such a gradual gestation. Sometimes period. the heart's on the outside, or the brain the, doesn't have uh, any yeah. skull, or like they you know, it, it's line. only that's alive because trimester. it's still in utero. Right. right, trimester lines. But again, that's that isn't religious. That's biological, yeah. and that can be that can be used in a debate about scientific content. But when you try to bring religion into it, you know, people's gonna. Say their yeah. God believes in this, and they want you to do this, and argument over. You're never convincing them. Yeah, I don't want to debate anybody about it anyway. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I don't give a I'm fuck. I'm a felon. I can't fucking vote. Don't care. It You're a anyway. felon. It's so weird when you say that. I totally forget <laughs> that you, you are a fucking felon. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. God. If I had to pick one felon out of these four squares. Don't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't even do it. <laughs> I'm fucking well, talking about Oh, we're gonna play a little game called Let's find the felon. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we were just we were just wait, you were just walking uh, in line, brother. <laughs> I know, I know. The funny I thing say is, I'm Canadian. Shit. Oh, you're Canadian. Yeah. But I went what? to I went to university in the States, so I lived in the States for a very long time. So yeah, a and lot of people, fun, uh, another funny thing is I you know, I did pre law and uh, studied uh, the uh, constitution. So I know the constitution more than most americans do mm -hmm. which is i sad. think that's that, that's pretty which is sad. Fucking important yeah especially if you're a, a a gun enthusiast a gun owner you know a lot of states have their own stupid laws that um you know i'm, I'm sure kyle knows this <laughs> but you know you just don't want to you want to know what the laws are you want to know what your rights are and yeah. so many people become these um car window attorneys 
uh, when they get pulled <laughs> over. And uh, oof, dude, it's just Georgia, a, door, ugly. Georgia just shut the do- door on so much of that, though. They 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 uh they allowed for constitutional carry. Yep. So I now it's well, it's just like my another thing. My dad he was like your uh, your uncle's also armed himself. Um, <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Now that uh, oh, shit. now that <laughs> now that he doesn't have to go and spend the fifteen dollars and get his picture taken, he's strapped <laughs> one on. Lord I, forbid. And because uh, that's that's the other thing. Like, like oh. I personally do not. I don't think I would support the constitutional carry in Georgia because it's concealed mm. pistol carry, and they basically just told everybody, "Hey, you can do it." And they're like, "Really? Well, I've never done anything like that before, but sure, if I can, <laughs> you know, like like that's that's hundred percent going to happen." Whereas before, yeah. there was this minor hurdle a minor hurdle you went to a building you said hey i want one of those permits they said give us your thumbprint and your picture and 15 dollars we're all square and it lasted yeah. for, it's lasted like five years and the best part was you don't have to get background checked if you have one of those you can just be boop and buy your gun because this North is carolina like a, has that but they also like require pass. one day course everybody passes this course right right, right. I, I happen to pass the course the marksmanship is incredibly easy anyone could do it even if they hadn't operated the gun i think and the test was so easy i got one question wrong but people who got like nine wrong <laughs> they just went up to the instructor and he's like so on this one what would have been like your second choice <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> they God. did it with me we all got hundreds every single oh, one shit. of us oh, i had wow. this dumb idea they're like a concealed carry permit allows you to carry a knife over three inches and i was like well that makes sense turns out it doesn't but that was the one i got wrong and uh, uh but other people got a bunch wrong and every single person passed i still like it because i didn't know like the rules for engagement they change with the castle doctrine yeah but uh, they're important to know, and they would just make sure you walked out before you got a gun. You knew them when you're yeah, allowed to shoot. I like that. There's that little hurdle. That mm-hmm, little yeah. little hurdles. Okay, I don't want. I don't like this three day waiting periods. Don't get me wrong. That's bullshit. If I want a gun, yep. I want a fucking gun now while I'm still mad. Okay, I got shit to do. <laughs> I can't wait waiting three days. I'll calm down. I I, I don't like that at all. But <laughs> a little hurdle that you've got to go and like be serious about it. And get yeah. your thumbprint taken. Like. I guarantee as soon as that went out, I mean, my uncle's an example of it. I have last time I saw him shoot, it wasn't too impressive. I think he went and got some silly pistol too. Like, like it's nonsense. Oh, no. It's nonsense. Oh, no. See, it's funny <laughs> because oh, no. I'm licensed. I'm licensed. I'm not licensed to carry in the States. I'm licensed in two countries. So I've had firearms in, I have, I have firearms in Canada, which yes, you can have. And I have them when I, when I'm in the States, when I'm in New York, but in New York, you know, you don't have to carry conceal. Um, in Canada, uh, yeah. depends. You have to do pretty much a two-day course for restricted, which restricted means you can uh, buy a pistol or an AR type of thing. But we just passed a law uh, that's kind of banning ARs at the moment, but we're mm-hmm. fighting it in court and stuff. So it's a little crazy. But at the same time, you don't need a gun in Canada. Canada like I need a gun and <laughs> that's for shit sure they are so uh, we are so close but we're so different it's not yep. even funny like I see a lot of anything. dummies uh on videos um that you know get a gun have no clue about the rules of engagement how fluid that situation can be and change from literally microsecond to microsecond where you are you know most grand juries um uh, would would not indict you, and a split second later, with what you did, you are completely guilty of murder. Like there, it's so county I've to seen county. People, shoot, shoot, yeah, and it changes county but, to fucking county. You can literally, I've seen, but I've seen so many videos of people. You know, there's a, a recent one where guy gets in a um, altercation. They have road rage altercation. They hit. Guy gets out of his car with a bat and yes. starts hitting the guy's car. Now I'm looking, going, okay. What is this guy going to do? He gets out of the car. He's got a gun. The guy with the bat kind of turns to drop the bat and run, and the guy shoots him. And then he shoots him in the back as he's running away. I'm like, oh, Jesus. And then he walks over, and he shoots him in the back of the head while he's laying face down on the ground. No way. Really? Yeah. That ain't good. That ain't good. I don't get it. Listen, uh, people say, okay, yeah. Um, you have a different different size population between Canada and the states, and it, but we have the same demographics. Like you have the same, 
it's the same percentages of black to minority to you know uh, African and Canadian to what have you, right? And you have the pretty much the same cultures, but the if you look per capita, the gun violence in the states is insane. Mm. So how is it that the two are so different? Yes, it's the same. I think we well, have more guns than you. We have a and lot more. It could guns. be that simple. I'm going with better aim. We got. <laughs> they have attempted gun violence, and they We're just also suck. slick with it. Right? Oh my god! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> the scientific. I, I, the scientific. I, I, yeah, I gotta say, I mean, you look at every statistic. Over half the people killed with guns in this country, it's inner cities and gang related. There is something going on that just it will not be taken care of. Instead, you know, they keep trying to legislate against legal gun owners. You know, it's gun violence, it's this violence, like, because they're so scared to actually address the problem. Perhaps some things need to be addressed culturally, family-wise. This whole attitude of, uh, and I remember when it started back in, in the 80s, pretty much, where it's like, Hey, no father needed. We'll just, you know, I guess Murphy Brown was a show that was out. And Dan, <laughs> I think Dan it was the same I remember that. Yeah, probably. And Dan yeah. Quayle came out and said, this is against family values. And and at the time I was looking going, yeah, that Dan Quayle's an idiot. You know, Murphy Brown, if she wants to be a, a, a single mom, it's a good thing. And And meanwhile, when you look and see how many single moms – especially in the inner cities where they don't have any other real people to to um, gravitate toward. Uh, it just becomes this cycle of gang violence. Look, when, when are 12 year olds getting shot? Poor grandma is, is sleeping in a bathtub uh, at night. And God damn, if that round don't ricochet off the shower head and nail her. <laughs> I, I, it's so sad. Yeah. But, it's but just you have to understand that's also a matter of programming. Because there's a lot of people who don't know the history behind that stuff and behind the fathers not being around. Like there's a lot of Americans who don't know that the government would give you government assistant mm -hmm. assistance, but only if there was no father in the picture. Yeah, yeah. So that encouraged that certain lifestyles. And, and you know what I, I mean? I think yep. there's a difference between mm -hmm. like, I, is a divorced mom a single mom? I'm not sure. But yeah, there's a, she's raising like, we'll kids said alone. Some, well, not necessarily. They, they, oftentimes they co-parent. The kids go back and forth from house to house. Because we'll oh, say oh, I got father's you. not around. And that's, that's like, right. there's a huge difference, I think, between not having a father yes. figure at all and parents being divorced. Like, But I there's other people that well. can come in. Look, I, I my parents got oh. divorced when I was probably 11, 12 years mm -hmm. old. My dad moved out to California. I did go out there and see him. And I lived out there for a little while. But for the most part, there was this... My uncle Tony, you know, my my brother being just a little older than me, uh, re other relatives, neighbors. There was this community thing where you you had adult men teaching you and, and going like whether it was, you know, it wasn't this sit down and hey, now I'm going to teach you something. It was maybe sometimes it was just a backhand and go, don't be a friggin asshole. What are you? <laughs> don't yeah. do that again. You friggin you stupid like that. But but just having that in there shame was another thing like you do something stupid and to have my uncle tony just go like what are you doing come on <laughs> anthony what and you'd go like oh fuck i'm an idiot like that has some fucking equity in how a person grows up yeah and, and i think a lack into, of that you have to yeah. take into account uh nature and nurture and you have to take into account cause and effect and things like the neighborhood that you grew up in to have those influences were sure. much different than certain black neighborhoods and then you have to go you know what came first the chicken or the egg and it's like well, yeah you do have to ask like, why is that there's, and... there's a difference between like for instance um i was uh my dad wasn't around my dad took off when i was five my mom raised three boys and my mom was an accountant worked her butt off and you know we i grew up in a, a nice uh uh suburban neighborhood you know what i mean turned out pretty good went to university yada yada, yada. but if i grew up but in the states the chances are much higher of being in a not so nice neighborhood right and so if you're surrounded by that nurture it's a matter of survival that you know you want to go you want to do good in school and you want to do this and everything but if you're walking and you got to pass by drug dealers every morning 
who are telling you, listen, if you don't join us, we're going to mm-hmm. destroy you. Forget those school books. Come and sell for us. It's a little harder to survive in that environment and make it through all the way. Oh, sure. That's a tough fucking situation. And and to try to come up with some resolution is nearly impossible because I think a lot of people have a lot of different ideas as to what the solution to that would be. Some people think more money to education. Some people think more government intervention, restrictions, whatever it is. I, I, I still, you know, maybe it's my age. I still think that fucking smack to the head by someone <laughs> and don't be stupid and, and, and making you feel like, yeah, I shouldn't do that. Yeah, it's tempting. Wow, I can make a shitload of money or work really hard and do this. Yeah, I'm in a bad situation. The neighborhood sucks. This sucks. But I got to friggin' stay on this path. You know, we all did stupid shit. I get that part. But my stupid shit would never equate to at 12 year o- years old, carjacking someone with a gun. Like, Like something has to be done to address that before you can even start fixing it. And I think Mm. people are so fixated on, you know, hey, great, more people dead in the city. Let's take legal guns away from from legal law-abiding citizens. Uh, That's got to stop. The excuses from the left and the right have to fucking stop. Let's... The last no, two big shootings were in the two states with the most gun. The control. most gun control. Most gun control. It's yeah. it's bizarre. When I heard Mayor uh, Mayor Adams here in New York City, uh, Eric Adams, he's been mayor for uh, since January. Useless. And he's talking about ghost guns, and you know, ghost guns. This ghost guns that. It's like we got to have a law against banning ghost guns. It's already banned in New York. Yeah. New York City, you can't have a slingshot. Never mind. It's like you're going to walk around New York City and, and go to NYPD and go, ha, ha, I made it myself. Can't do anything. It's a gun. It's, it slings projectiles by burning gunpowder. It's illegal already. And by the yeah. way, the point zero 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 one percent of ghost guns that are being used in, in crimes in New York City, uh, it, it's inconsequential. These are all stolen guns, uh, e- even straw man purchases, things like that. Regardless, the people using the guns are not legal gun owners. They don't have license, and the guns are not registered to them. So what friggin' laws are you going to legislate against legal gun owners that are going to help end the problem with the violence? I, you and I probably line up word for word on guns. Uh, maybe not every issue, but guns for sure. It, it it seems there are already laws against doing all the things you don't want people to do. It's yeah. illegal to shoot people, right? So <laughs> already, <laughs> we're, like we've got the big one covered. You don't have to make it illegal to own the thing to shoot people because that right. only impacts people who own the thing and don't shoot people. People who own the thing and shoot. Which is the vast are, majority. They ignore laws in the first place. Yeah. 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 Another law isn't going to be the issue. But you have to, one. but at the same time, like I grew up, I lived in New York during the Dinkins years, right? And oh, little Dave, yeah. there was, <laughs> and <laughs> was there, awesome. the, the gun crime was insane. Oh, crazy. so some of these laws actually brought the gun crime down. It did did work to an extent in New York, and I'm telling you, it did work. Are and you sure it's again, the cause and effect though? Right? Like, like are but, you sure? No, no. It wasn't trust like me, you economic... did not want to be. When the big laws went through, you did not want to be caught with a gun in your car in New York. But after crime a went point. down outside of New York. Economic pros- prosperity from like the eighties to twenty twenty just had a yeah, lower no, no, no. crime rate. New, New York is its, all York, over America. New York is its own universe. You're right. Well, I it's mean, a universe that seems if, to follow the same if, rules as the rest of it. No, it doesn't. It know. is strange. It in is different. It's rate, very different. Its because police it's, department is literally like an army. They have a, a bigger yeah, police department than, than countries have armies. And and budget wise, right. And it's it's the, the pinnacle of the free world, tourism, all this shit. Security really has to be crazy. The transportation systems just blow away have any other their own city. police. Yeah, yeah, they have their own police. The thing is, now after Dinkins, Port Authority, when, all those guys. when Giuliani came in. He was right up until September 11th. Giuliani was one of the most hated mayors of New York. Hated. September yeah. 11th, it was like, America's mayor. We <laughs> love Giuliani. <laughs> but everyone forgets before that, people hated him. He was yeah. shutting down all the fun porn shops on 42nd yep. Street and now Times I hate Square. Him. He, all the <laughs> bodegas that he closed. Oh, he everything. The bodegas it was, it was terrible. Clubs. But, but he and he also did something, and he was called racist for doing it. It was called the um, the broken, broken window. Yes, 
where where cops would look away at, at a lot of shit over the course of the years. And he said, look, if we pay attention to the turnstile jumping and the broken windows and and try to find out who's doing that, it will lead us to get bigger arrests for bigger crimes. And that's why when people knew if they were walking around with a gun, there was a really good chance that they could just be stop and frisk. And frisk. Stop yep. and frisk was terrible. They hated it. But it was you didn't leave the house with a gun because you knew you didn't even have to use it. You might just go, hey, buddy, let me see what you got there. Oh, it's a gun. Boom. A year, two years in Rikers. Broken so, windows is tricky for me because like I know. People who agree with broken windows are considered racist, which puts yeah. me in a weird spot because it makes sense to me. I feel like I followed it myself. So I'll lay it out there for people who've never heard of this. You see an apartment building. It's vacant, but it looks nice. The paint is still fresh and the windows are unbroken. And you don't tend to throw a rock through the broken, even though no, I'm sorry. You don't tend to throw a rock through the window, even though no one lives there. Once there's one broken window. Once mm -hmm. there's one broken window, now this yeah. place looks like a target. You can break the rest of the windows. You can yeah. go in there. As soon as there's a broken window, it's a, it's a wreck. We would see, like, um, this is me in high school as an idiot. Remember the idiot. Let's, let's just lay that out there. Let's admit to that. Uh, uh, cars. Uh, we never broke into cars. We didn't fuck with cars. No, that was no, somebody's no. car, right? But in Ocean City, if a car said they're too long, it would get an abandoned tag under the um, windshield wiper. And that meant it was ours. <laughs> like yeah. That meant that we could <laughs> fuck with it. We could push it. A bunch of guys could like bounce it and make it sit perpendicular to the curb. That was mm -hmm. the thing we would do a lot if it was small. We found yeah. one that you could start without a key. Like if it had an abandoned tag, it was like a broken window. Right. And suddenly yeah. assholes like me would fuck with that car who would never fuck with a car that didn't have one. But, like broken windows, it's called racist, but I'm like, I feel like it. It's right, right? Like you don't. Hey, but for you, it worked. But for me, the college kid who just like to hang out in the city on the weekends and go to nightclubs and stuff, getting stopped and frisked for no reason was hell. Like I was, there, you know, I yep. was studying pre-law, and I was like, you know, I was, I, I wanted to be a lawyer, all that stuff, and I'd go to the house music clubs and the weekends and stuff, and you to get harassed for no reason by the police was hell. And you gain that resentment over and over again. And I even be driving with a car with Ontario plates on it. And they'd still stop and harass us for no, no reason. Here's a situation where when you're close but, to hold it. Hold on. Sorry. One more point. One more point. Mm -hmm. it, and a lot of people would say, and the one of the hor most horrible arguments was, mm -hmm. hey, if you didn't do anything, you shouldn't have to be worried. Right. Which is not how the law should work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There is a, a, a fine line between... Um, infringing on people's liberties and and um, Fourth Amendment rights, uh, and keeping keeping the city safe. I mean, again, yesterday uh, or today it was Mayor Adams comes out and says he goes, look, something's got to stop. He goes, there were. By the way, there was the subway shooting that we had here a couple of days ago. A guy goes into the subway, throws some smoke bombs, for some reason shoots everyone in the legs. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. I think he got this spatial disorientation from the smoke. He, had he the thought aim he of was Canadian. going like this, but he was shooting down. Like some people get that in planes and they fly the plane right into the ground because they Thank can't goodness. see the horizon. If it was so smoky and had a gas mask on, you know, I've done that in video games where I'm going, ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what the hell's going on? But uh, so after that happened, the next day, 13 shootings, two uh, deaths uh, in New York City. So the mayor comes out and says, he goes, look, and this is the first time I've really heard someone say this. He goes, look, every one of these victims was black. Every single one. I spent all this time in the Bronx and, and Brooklyn uh, today. And he goes, where's Black Lives Matter? Where's Black Lives Matter? Because these young kids are being killed in these communities. And he goes, what their lives don't matter and i've heard people say that ad nauseum usually white dudes on social media and everyone goes oh shut up it's racist uh TV. but to see mayor adams say this i it, it got my attention i was like oh fuck he's addressing the community like what the fuck sm what the fuck are you doing what are you doing asshole and against giving the smack in the head i it was refreshing to see because I think part of it is because it's confusing for a lot of people because it, it, and it's it, 
it's hard unless you're in that situation because black lives matter is what's made to protect people from those who were supposed to be protecting them mm-hmm. because theoretically there should be no term as black on black crime because you don't hear you you never hear the phrase white on right why do you never hear the phrase white on white crime mm-hmm. when that's the majority of the crime that happens right so the black on black white on white it's an interracial thing what the black lives matter thing is is to stop those who are supposed to be protecting us from killing us mm. right and we've even had i've i've marched for that in the states and i've marched for that in toronto too because uh we had same situations in toronto but nowhere close like the states like our yeah. police officers are ridiculously educated in toronto so shout out to them but we've had situations like that and but they've gotten a lot better but that's why it black it's not black lives matter job to deal with black on black crime because black and black crime is the same as white on white crime. And it, it's, it's, it's a paradox that a lot of people can't figure out. And it, it, that's a very general way to try and say it. Don't they bring it up because like, uh, you know, there's so many more, there's a lot more white people, right? Like aren't black people like a small minority who are. There's a per capita. It's something, something like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a, yeah. it's a combination. Percentages. Of that, right? yeah. So it's like, it's, it's like, you know, with their purpose is to stop the officials from killing black people for no reason because if i'm just you know oh, the some, cops are the some, worst if some <laughs> idiot is just running away because that's the whole license, thing they're not getting sympathy out of kyle no, no, you, you not. should not you should not be getting <laughs> shot in the back of the head because of a taser you know what i mean so that's oh. what it's about oh i, I you're not gonna find a, a more staunch ally than i when it comes to the police my friend oh i know <laughs> no, no I, I, know. I i did see that video today and uh you know, obviously, an investigation has to, as in every shooting, has to go yeah. down. Um, but when I see but for, hold on, Benjamin, before you say something, uh, okay, go ahead. The police sure. should not. Uh, the bad thing about the states is that they don't have a third party to rule over these things. So mm-hmm. in Toronto, you have a whole different organization that is not connected to the police, who judges whether there's a good shooting or not. Right? Yeah. The police do not judge. The police do not police the police in. Uh, Toronto or Canada, you have different parties to do that who are okay. who are unbiased. Well, well, the investigation it does go to a grand jury if it's deemed to be a, a bad yeah. shooting, That's and then rare. they they take over. Um, it's very hard these days for people to kind of get away with uh, things that probably were were a lot more commonplace years ago grand because of cameras and whatnot. Who deems it a bad shooting? Uh, well, the grand jury would. The, the grand jury well, would take all need, you need How does it get to the grand jury? You're going to need saying. a DA to get involved. It sounded like if the cops decide it's a bad shooting, then it goes to the grand jury. Maybe I misunderstood. Oh, no, no, no. They they could no. do their own investigation. But a, a co- the cops also, the internal police department investigation, can't just say, well, that's fine. And then the district attorney goes, well, the cops said it was OK. Like if, if they it feels like that, that most that, of the time, that's how it happens. Most though. of the time. It, like, <laughs> so I, I'm not an expert on the topic, but it seems like most of the time the cops are like, well, we don't really love it. But they were kind of in line with department policy. Well, well here's but. There's two ways that could go. Okay. It's a horribly corrupt, racist uh, uh, department, or there's a lot of good shootings that people are have grave misconceptions about how they happened because of bullshit social media and bullshit mainstream media. So, you know, I've seen so many cases, so many cases where people had a complete lack of information about a, a shooting. You, you, I, I watched the trials in their entirety, and then when the verdict comes out in favor of of the officer, because everyone heard bullshit, they go, "Oh, black man can't use his blinker." Like if he comes, <laughs> if he comes out, I was like, "Yeah, he used a blinker. He hit it with his gun as he was shooting at the cop." It, it just, it just, it seems like a lot of people. And I, I will, I will even, I'll even say on both sides that there's a lot of people so uneducated. Uh, of of a certain situation. I mean, there are people like Benjamin Crum. He comes out anytime there's a police shooting of a black man, and he will instantly. And he came out on this taser thing, instantly say. Uh, and I saw his post, his personal post on Twitter before anything was looked into. Unarmed black man shot in the back of the head. Uh, w- w- was not 
uh, uh, committing any violence against the officer. What's now I'm the like, taser Holy thing? Shit. Is there a new one? Or yeah, is this we have the one. Yeah, where yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah, this is a a, a guy gets uh, pulled over. He had a plate on the back of his car that did not match the car. So okay. the officer pulls him over. He gets out of his car before the officer even gets near his car. The officer goes back in your vehicle, back in your vehicle. He also has a passenger in the passenger seat, another gentleman in the passenger seat. The guy didn't get back in the car. The cop continues to walk over. He goes, OK, license. Uh, the guy just stands there looking at him and he goes, what did I do? What did I do? The guy goes, do you have a license? Let me see your license. This was very, you know, it went back and forth. It was very tense right from the beginning. So the guy decides at some moment he's going to run because <laughs> the officer says, you know, turn around. Uh, he wasn't complying with uh, orders to show ID. He kept asking, what's the matter? He goes, this plate does not fit the car. Guy takes off. They get into a, a physical altercation on the lawn. Um, of a house that they were pulled over near. The cop pulls out his taser, hits the guy with the taser after they're struggling for a little while. Uh, it doesn't seem to do much. I don't know what that's all about, but Sometimes. I've seen it happen. Yeah. So taser now the 50, cop's 50. holding the taser. He's telling him, stop resisting, stop resisting, stop resisting. Uh, they, they get on their feet a couple of times, then they're back on the ground. Now the guy grabs the cop's the hand with the taser, and he starts grabbing toward the taser. And now the cop's yelling, let go of the taser, let go of the taser. Uh, now, also, I want people to understand, uh, a taser fires the prongs out, and at a distance, you can zap some, some body. After you fire that, it becomes a stun gun. You can literally hit mm -hmm. someone with it, pull the trigger, and it becomes a, a stun gun type taser. So it's some not, it's not, the and ones these ones do, hand. yeah, the, the, the ones the cop was it's using. It's X-26. Yeah. He, he, so... The guy finally got possession of the taser. The guy being when, bad the, guy. The, bad the, the the perpetrator there or whatever, the victim, right. depending on how you wanna <laughs> how you wanna look at it. The right. cop immediately pulls his gun, boom, shoots him in the back of the head. Because he oh. had the taser in his possession. Yeah, they'll now, do that. now again, an investigation needs to be done. But I will tell you one thing, Benjamin Crumb's synopsis of that was nowhere near right. accurate when he said unarmed, uh, peaceful, nonviolent cop does this. And again, it's based on nothing but his – the race baiting that guy does. And it's all for profit. I, I see him as the new millennium's uh, Al Sharpton or uh, something like that. But I've seen that before. It um, needs yeah. to be investigated, obviously. Oh, I but mean, to like, instantly say, oh, here's another racist, murderous cop. Because, look, you're you're – even though if you hate cops, this guy is doing his job and lives can be destroyed by bullshit on either side, uh, whether it's the victim, the perpetrator, the cop, the victim, the perpetrator. Lives can be destroyed. Uh, and and, and uh, we've seen a wake of destroyed lives when shit like this happens. So it's best to sit back and wait and see what the fuck the real information is. Yeah, if he got, I mean, if he did get possession of the taser, then they're gonna call it a good shooting. They always do. Um, but it, I, I've seen, I've, I've watched. Uh, do you ever see, have you ever seen the Police Activity YouTube channel? Oh Jesus! Well, no. let me just go ahead and say you're welcome. Um, <laughs> you're, what you're gonna want to do is watch the whole playlist in order later on, and, and have a couple drinks, and you're gonna have some laughs. You're gonna cry. You're gonna, you're gonna cheer. You're going to oh, be afraid Jesus. because it's literally nothing but body cam footage. And the, mm -hmm. that channel will edit together five different officers' perspectives. Oh, make, right. Yeah. And make you yeah. a fucking movie out of some of these. <laughs> and and, and it, it'll be such crazy shit that you're like, how have I never heard of the West Dallas shootout? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah. this, this, Tombstone is pussy shit compared to the stuff that goes down on the daily and is uploaded on that channel. Uh, but crazy. My favorite. My favorite crazy like action movie type moment that I saw was a guy took a hostage with a knife, and as soon as the cop like approached and saw that, he shot the guy in the face. Oh God! Yeah, like, yeah. Threw down, shot bad guy in the face, and as bad guy is falling, very much dead again in the face. Yeah, and you see a little bit of his Damn. brain come out. It's spittle. Yeah, it's spittle. That guy's just yeah. had, uh... He it was in a little shed type a shed. thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what, had the... Remember what his partner said? Nice. 
Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I remember that oh, now. I remember God. that now. Yeah, yeah. Here's yeah. the oh, best part about that brutal. video. That now. Yeah, that, yeah. Like the, the cop didn't catch it, and I, most of the people in the YouTube comments didn't either. The poor, like I think he was a Sikh guy. He had the beard, maybe the turban too. Um, that was had been taken hostage. Pissed himself. So oh, that's yeah. why he's being weird at the end. He's trying to like hide that he's yep. pissed his pants. I don't, remember that. I don't blame him. Hey, I don't <laughs> either. Him in the face, and then he tagged the moving, uh, moving. Yeah, yeah. As he double tapped the side, yeah. he gets some yeah. fucking Man. Kyle Rittenhouse marksmanship right there. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah, impressive. Kyle Rittenhouse, <laughs> dude. That Kyle Rittenhouse kid. Like, like, say what you want, but like, that. First of all, he had a great. Great lawyer. I love that. I, I don't oh, know if you've yeah, seen yeah, the yeah. excerpt. You, I Kyle know Rittenhouse okay. should not have been there to begin with. Agreed. Everybody <laughs> agrees on that. Shouldn't have been Everybody there agrees be. on that, Wolf. Who but... drives their teenager to a riot filled? Like, I have a, a child Did the same drive age. Him there? His yeah. mom dried him there, dro- drove him there. Like, I, I, I have, didn't know that detail. Okay. If, if there were, uh, if I was in the suburbs and there were protests and fires and stuff going on i would not drive my teenager down there to hang out with my ar-15 and that's why your son will never be a hero (laughs) 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 oh my god no one will remember your name Uh, no that was uh (laughs) zach said he drove himself our producer i I didn't. He I traveled to there, and look, every I've had this exact conversation with my father two days ago, and 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 he was like, he had never heard the story. He says he doesn't watch bullshit news. He didn't even know about Kyle Rittenhouse. He's like, wow. why the fuck was he there with a rifle? Why the fuck was he there at all? And I'm like, those are good points. Yeah. Okay. But what regardless cool of who drove him there, tried to shoot him. He shot the guy's bicep on his shooting hand, and I choose to believe it was intentional. Wow. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Yeah. I think that was luck. I I think, oh really? I that it was yeah, I do. I, I think fired this, like four the shots, got falling, three kills. Oh, the way he was falling, No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think he had a miss. That's not hard with kill. a two, two, three. Come on now. He I didn't just have think a miss. Nobody way, else hit him. When I saw him falling back, and he, the way, just the way his gun was pointed, I think that was pure luck. Uh, the, the other two <laughs> shots, the other two shots. Okay, fine, but the the bicep shot, I think that was pure coincidence. <laughs> and I've shot my I, came apart. I shot well. The human body will do that, but oh, um, yeah. I've it shot was, my fair share of stuff. But regardless, though, like, good shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Oy, hey. I, I like, Holy, I like God. how they had coached that witness too. Like, like, so at that point, he shot you in the bicep. No, no, no. At that point, he destroyed my bicep. Yeah, yeah. And he, like, he looks at like the prosecutor. Like, did I do good, boss? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you did good. But yeah, you're about to lose the whole fucking it. case. So I'll give you three thirty. Yeah, minutes. yeah. He was not a good witness. <laughs> did he lose he that arm? Not make a good witness, man. Uh, he's got the arm, but I there's no way he can do shit like this. Mm. Yeah, they. <laughs> I think they, they took sucks. Some, <laughs> they took some uh, some uh, thigh muscle and they moved and it tried to rebuild ah. some shit in his arm. See they're again, that's amazing that's these Woody. days. Woody, would you do that? Would you take muscle from one of your like genetically predisposed good regions and throw it on like your weak point if you could? Uh, then I wouldn't have any more good regions. I don't know. This no, no, no. Hard. You could create a new good region. Like, do you? Want Woody, crazy what he's jet? asking, what would he's what he's asking is, would you get a BBL done? No, no, no. Take, <laughs> take, <laughs> I want you to take like a chicken cutlet size slice out of each calf, <laughs> chicken cutlet. each calf, and it just goes yeah. on your delts now. Oh, wow. You've got a fourth delt muscle. I think I would do that, yeah. That's like a video yeah. game attribute slider. You know? <laughs> I was oh, going to say, you exactly. Go. Yeah, you're, <laughs> right? you're, just, you're just taking it from one, and you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, Can I just his, take his points off intelligence? Absurd. I don't use it anyway. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I tell dick jokes charisma? on the internet. I, Woody, have my, bigger I need to boost my charisma. <laughs> Woody, Woody, see, they don't understand, Woody. The character is already a, 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 an oddly maxed out character. I think they need to see the calves. Oh my god! Like right now? I mean, <laughs> I would like to see the calves. Let me see what I can do. Hold on. It's gonna be worth the wait. Oh, oh shit! You're gonna wait, stand I, up and see them. him right there. You, you can already see like what's I coming. I can see the. Oh my god! You can already see what's coming. Like like he's got plenty of calf to lose. Like like he could take a little of this, throw it on the delt. Little of that, throw, throw it somewhere else. Or something. Oh my god. Oh, whoa. Oh, look at that. And there he goes. Acrobatic as well. (laughs) Oh, 
<laughs> Acrobatic club. That's what happened when you. That's what happens when your legs are landing gear. Oh my god! Look <laughs> at that. <laughs> oh, this is perfect. This is he perfect. This is the para, Do a squat. Para glider. Oh my squat. gosh! Pistol squat. Pistol squat. Jesus. Like Jesus. bowling pins. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Houseway. How? <laughs> yeah. Ah Jesus. shit! Like a man. Look at that guy. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah. When uh, yeah, his legs are landing gear, so he uh, Jesus. he's got to he's got to land with those things. <laughs> Woody would look good. At, Woody, you'd look good on a real good in a pair of heels, like a you know, <laughs> oh my, yeah, a pair of red yeah. bottoms, yeah, <laughs> Louboutins, Louboutins, exactly. <laughs> my father had good. Well, still does. My father is amazing. He's seventy-two. He's got better calves than me. He's, he's <laughs> are you serious? It's genetic. Oh, yeah, like very, genetic. very good calves. Yeah. Yeah, this is genetic predisposition. Like, like, do you think there'll be a future where, like, I guess they've mapped the human genome right now. I heard that the other day. Like, like, when are we going to have those Gattaca babies where they tweak? Them? Oh, they, yeah. like, 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 that'll be the thing. Like, like, yeah. like, I'm not going to get into the whole movie thing. Badass movie Gattaca. Watch it if you haven't. But like, when Plastic. will that? When will that time come? Oh, you saw when Gattaca? The, okay. When the, I've seen it many times. But no, like, I'm, I'm talking to Woody. Woody. I'm talking to Woody. He's oh, teasing yeah. me about Demo Man or something. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> when <laughs> will the one percent be able to make their kids smarter, better, faster, stronger than the ninety nine percent, and and further perpetuate that sort of like uh, that that sort of class difference? It, like, like like that's a huge difference. Like, I'm gonna like, throw oh, my playing. my answer out, but there's a caveat. Yeah, 2025 in China. Those oh. are the people that will ignore the ethics laws first. Right, they'll have both oh, yeah. the tech and the lack of like everything. Ethics cloning like everything. Mine is close to yours. Mine is close to yours. Mine is 2012 China. Like like he's 10 oh, okay. now. Their Superman oh. is already They're a 10 already... year old, and he's bitching 225. There are 10 feet tall Chinese at 10 years old ready to it's fight. Can... That's racist. It's it's China. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Did I so, say something bad? They when, when was uh, uh, or Orientals? When was <laughs> when was uh, Khan from Star Trek born? I don't know. Khan. Oh God! Right, that was like 2152. Was, he I would, think? No, he was uh, he was a super being of the oh, 90s yeah, you're right. in the original yeah, Star was... Trek that would exactly. like he was in the 90s because oh, yeah. Star Trek was like the 60s. It was supposed to be, of course, yeah. in the 20th century. But it was close to 2000 when like... Khan was born. Yeah, 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 yeah very yeah. close to 2000. And that's what he was a result. He of. was like he the ruler me. of like all he of Asia. He tasks me. I love <laughs> Khan. I love that movie. Khan was awesome. the, uh, the original you know? is great. The movie's Ooh. great. Even yeah. the new one I thought was good. Was it called Con the next time around? No, it was. Uh, they didn't want uh, to to let the cat out of the bag there. Yeah, yeah. that it was uh, a Con. They didn't episode. say his name till later. Yeah, I really yeah. love the original with Retar uh, Ricardo. Uh, Rich Ricardo. <laughs> Ricardo Montalban. Oh yeah, that's oh, a great Ricardo. One. When they put like, those things in their ears. Oh, oh yeah, uh, that scared young oh, Woody. That, that scared me out of yeah. kid. That's pretty dark. Oh, um, that was very dark. They put bro. those little control worms in their ears and just, like, watching it crawl in the check. When when Chekhov says it goes, oh Captain, they put creatures in our bodies. <laughs> like Kirk, Kirk sitting there going, where Chekhov? Can you elaborate a little more? <laughs> uh, I, I, was, was, I wish I'd been I a part horrible like, image in my head right now, Chekhov. <laughs> <laughs> what in like the next thing? He was like, I'm coming for you, Khan. I heard yeah, you yeah, yeah. ass. <laughs> Wait, he killed his pretty boy son too. You can't oh, yeah. as one of my crew and get away with him. Killed his pretty boy son. <laughs> I did not. I just wanted anyone listening should know I did not sodomize anyone. That is not. God, what I'm, I'm confused. What, what what does he get hard all the time now? Like where else did it you put it? Was an earworm, and you <laughs> damn well know it. He put it in your rear. No, my ear, Captain. <laughs> your rear. <laughs> no, yeah, that, that one is just, this is pretty boy son. It's I gotta like, say though, Chris Pine impressed me with the new uh, generation of Star Trek. It was movies. it was amazing that first like one because as a Star Trek fan, you go, all right, this better be good. The yeah. whole cast they fit mm -hmm. perfectly. It was done like so well. Yeah, yeah. The guy who played Bones, right on. Oh yeah, I loved it. Amazing. Love yeah, Carl yeah, Urban, kid. who also plays. Um, um, he's a he's a in uh William Butcher Lord of the Rings the and, Lord of the uh, Rings. He's the guy the with the boys. blonde hair that always looks like this in Lord of the Rings. Amor, yeah. He's always like angry. Yeah, he's the <laughs> horse lord. Yes, a horse lord. Yeah. Found, tell me your name, horse master, and I shall tell you mine. 
I just finished. I just finished watching the Hobbit series with my kids, and we're going to get into Lord of the Rings next. There's and only love... one good scene in the entire Hobbit trilogy, and that's at the very beginning when he's telling the story about how they lost their home, and he's like, Thorin's like hitting that hammer uh, on the anvil, mm. and he's like, and he, ne- I love this, that that one little quote, that one little line, and he never forgave, and he never forgot. And that's, that's it. That's that, those like eight words or whatever. Right? That's the it. only decent thing in that whole thing. I can't. Millions and it. millions no. of dollars spent. And they could have just. Oh, I hate it. I like. I like. I like the scene with smog. I love. Yeah, the that dragon. actually. Yeah, I like watching I his face scene. move. Like, and yes, uh, uh, it, it was it was really neat CGI. Whatever they did to like make his face move that intricately. You know, yeah, that well. They really gave him a personality. Yeah, but then they killed him immediately. I was like, oh, and they were done with him. Oh, they kill, they killed him a movie later. You got a half a movie. Yeah, but like the way it, like just as soon as the movie starts, it's like, got him. And, oh, now problems. we have a new problem because five armies are coming. It was, yeah, it, it yeah, was yeah, just, yeah. I, I just couldn't. It, it's, a, I bet it's an amazing kids movie. If I was twelve or like, my even kids younger, enjoyed it. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah. yeah my kids enjoyed. I'm sure, it. there's like there's dwarves hopping around in little and going down. <laughs> I can't lose. How can you lose? They it's love great. that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, I want you, Wolf. How old are the kids, or do you not talk about that? They are now kids? sixteen and eighteen. Okay, cool, cool. Sixteen okay. and eighteen, and uh, and my son's sixteen, daughter's eighteen, and my daughter just got accepted to university for nursing, and I'm very nice. proud of that. Yeah. Oh, outstanding! Wow. Yeah, that's cool. So she worked. It's crazy because her work ethic is so much harder than mine. Like, it, I don't know if it's a girl thing or not, but. She just studies like, and I, I was pretty good in school. I did a double major in international commerce and pre-law, but her work ethic is just scary. I don't know where she gets it from. A couple of years from uh, now, her yeah. skill set's going to be it, useful for guys already. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, what do you think you. of uh, 12484 blood pressure? Just curious. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I, had a, I found a lump the other day, and at my age, everything is, oh, my God, I'm going to die. Mm. and i'm pretty sure Anne can relate to this a bit but it's like you're scared of everything at this age and it's oh like, yeah everything happens it's just uh, like everything it's like, aches this please that, daughter thing. yeah please get into medicine please you don't it's know like, how <laughs> i have had people can't see it on the show but um under my eyeglasses right here there's a small cut and i think i got it by sleeping in my glasses so you know so it rubbed mm. and hurt myself cool cool why has it taken three months to heal and oh, it's not no. healed? Is this cancer? So uh, I, uh, wait, I do have an appointment set up. It's sometime later this month. It's oh, what, we could be eye cancer buddies then. Dude, yeah. I'm rooting for you. This will be a new across the pond. <laughs> no. yeah. oh, Jesus for, Murphy. For, if you guys don't know, I had, I had cancer on my fucking eyelid. And, oh. and, and the first thing they did was they shaved it off because the doc was like, trust me, I know cancer. This is not cancer. Oh, and I'm like, no. and it's incredibly painful to get them to, to sh- when they cut it off my eyelid. Like it was top two pa- most painful things growth. ever. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. It was a little mole on my eyelid, like right oh, in the okay. eyelash region. It was like unsightly, and I like immediately. Went Ow. And uh, they cu- they shaved this bitch off. They cut it off, and uh, I I'm all fucked up from it. And uh, they they call me like a week later, and they're like, Hey, uh, uh, some uh. secretary. Hey, uh, Doctor Mike would like to see you uh, as soon as possible. You know, and I'm just like. You get Dr. Mike on the phone right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, you get Dr. Mike on the phone right now. She's like, yeah. She just wants you to come in. I'm like, right now. Uh. Get him on the phone. And and she she like immediately like two minutes had Dr. Mike on the phone. And I'm like, hey doc, uh, your lady says you need to talk to me. We're gonna do it over the phone. He's like, mm. well, it's cancer. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I know because I have because we're inferred. having this weird awkward conversation. What kind? And so anyway, they're like, what we got to do is as soon as possible, I want to go back in and I want to take a pizza pie shaped wedge out of your eyelid. And th- that is going to and then like put it together and then put it together. He's like, one yeah. problem, though, it you don't have enough eyelid to do that. So we're going to have to cut you over here and make a big fucking cut. So you've got so your whole face can slide over. Whoa. So you need some slack, some slack. So <laughs> Please I, I tell me you were asleep. <laughs> I'll get there. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, no. so I was right in the middle of like I just had started TRT and I was lifting every single day. And so when they told me I couldn't eat before I came in, I took that as a suggestion because I got to get my calories. So <laughs> I, but I get in there, they get me hooked up to the IV or whatever, and uh, that's just and um, they give me a, a pill or two, like some uh, 
uh, Xanax, like bullshit, like doesn't do anything. I, I do real drugs. Like, like that's <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and I fucked food. up. And she's like, when's the last time you ate? And I'm like, ah, by now it's like four hours ago. She's like, wait, what? And so they made me sit in that fucking bed with the IV stuck in my hand for the longest fucking time, like, like three hours or something because I'm a dumbass. Anyway, I get in the surgery room and no, I'm not, a, I'm not asleep at all. They put my head in a fucking like vice, like a chiropractor type thing, elevate me. They take a Q-tip, put it under my eyelid and roll that bitch like Holy inside crap. out. Crap. And then they uh he starts injecting my eyelid with painkiller. Oh, okay. And every time Jesus. he sticks that bucket, and I'm not moving a hair. I'm taking it. My my toes are crossed three times in my fucking <laughs> shoes. Because I'm just like in so much pain every time. If he's you did stabbed. someone something like this to someone at Gitmo, it would be torture. That's torture. Oh, that's, that's torture. torture. Yeah, <laughs> I paid eighteen hundred bucks for it. Yeah, yeah, you paid <laughs> like three or four shots, and every Bloody time Americans. he does it, I go, mm. <laughs> he goes, yeah, yep, yeah, not so bad, just a little oh. pinch, and I go, I go, mmm. <laughs> he gets them all in, and then he starts cutting, and that fucking hurts too. And like That's and the, and like I'm talking to him throughout the whole fucking thing while he's oh, sewing me Jesus. up and like like making this cut over here and I can feel oh. the cold blood like, like oh. a, the, the, or the, like oh. running down my face and like oh, oh get that get that and I'm like <laughs> I'm like this is pretty awesome I can't believe y'all let me be awake for this I'd have really paid you because it was a thousand like, oh you're awake you know <laughs> why did you that's what I said, oh, my God. I said. <laughs> oh it is oh, you my that was the more anesthetic why didn't they use a general anesthetic for you did you save money on this Kyle yeah <laughs> uh, okay. Let me tell you how much it costs to have a fucking uh, anesthesiologist come in. It's fifteen hundred extra just for the gas. I, I want said, you people get health care. This was What's pre wrong and with load. Americans? <laughs> no, DC would have got the. They made got it, it sound like a dental appointment. Um, like, like uh, we had this talk. We had this talk. Like, like, and and I was like, he's like, yeah. It's. I'm like, what's it gonna run, Doc? And he's like, I don't know, fifteen hundred to do the thing. And uh, but it's another fifteen hundred for the anesthesiologist. I'm like, ah, so like double. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, do we really need it? Do you ever do these without an anesthesia? Oh like, yeah. my god, what a, what a <laughs> wall. he chose to do this. Yeah, he, he was down. To do this. I mean, I was part of the negotiation process. He he ended up knocking a little off at the end too. I negotiated a little harder because <laughs> like with taxes and everything, it was like twenty one hundred. Wow. Nice yeah, work, Jim Wiki. <laughs> you should fight on this piece everything. of leather. <laughs> we'll pry the bullet out of you. I'll That's bring my own leather for ten dollars less. No shit. <laughs> they, Have oh, a and snort then, of whiskey. <laughs> and then. Um, <laughs> I was supposed to like not drive home, obviously, because I'm all fucked up and shit. Oh, please and, uh, tell me. <laughs> the, the, she wheels me outside and she's like, so your Uber's on the way? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and not only are you fucked up, I would assume there's a patch over your eye. That Big be... patch and bandage. So you're my one whole eyed, face, my fucked whole face, up. I, I like that like... you saved $12 on Uber. <laughs> <laughs> it's the inconvenience. The whole thing is a cost, a cutting measure. <laughs> 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 shit. Don't look Arby. happy. Don't look happy. Don't look happy. Uh, there. <laughs> no, you don't look uh, very happy. Oh, Jesus. That's Murphy. cool. That's. That's like That's a, a, one of those things you can level up and get that character. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, am, I'm I unlocked the, yeah, the, oh the eye patch guy. <laughs> Cancer Kyle. No, it oh, fucking blew. God damn, oh, Kyle. God. It fucking I, blew. I, 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 dude, I have an eye phobia. So I, I that would kill me. I can't even put in eye drops. I think everybody I do freaks too. out whenever dude, well, there a was friend of mine moment. has some kind of problem where they literally have to inject something into his eye with a syringe every couple of months. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's some kind of uh, problem with the the fluid in the eye. And, oh, and, and they they lay him down, and, and there's a needle into your eyeball. Like, that is something from a horror movie. Yeah, that's literally from, uh, uh, like, X-Files or uh, – you remember Fire in the Sky? mm Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the UFO it comes yeah, down, yeah, grabs yeah, those yeah, guys. Yeah. Woody's got to do yeah. the sponsors though, real quick. Or, yeah, or I'll yeah, do them yeah, yeah. read for me. I'll, I'll give it a go. I know the deal. This episode of PKA is brought to you by Lucy. Lucy Nicotine is a company founded by Caltech scientists. 
and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. Finally, tobacco alternatives that don't suck. Research and develop for three years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has created a nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine that comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. Lucy has a, this is not a real word, longine, with four milligrams of nicotine and cherry ice flavor. <laughs> Each and every flavor actually tastes great. It's convenient and discreet. The products can be enjoyed anywhere, on flights, at work, on the go, or even in the gym. It's 2022. Get rid of your cigarettes, unplug your vape, throw out your dip, and get some Lucy nicotine gums or longes, maybe? This is the real deal. A subscription Lozenges? Los L O Z E N G E S lozenges. Lozenges, yeah, like sucrets for Thank a sore throat. Yeah, I knew some of, of these words though. This is a real <laughs> deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple, and you don't have to leave your house because Lucy has delivery down. Painkiller already listeners, go to Lucy.com, Lucy.co, C O, and use promo code PKA to get 20% off. All your first order, including gum and lozenges. That's lucy.co and use promo code PKA. Check it out. We've also we also have to give this disclaimer warning. This product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. So head over to lucy.co and use promo code PKA. And then the other one's lock and load. Go ahead, Kyle. Oh. Take it away. Oh my God. For those of you who don't know, the uninitiated. Perhaps this is your first time here. You're unaware that we here at PKA, PKA have created the most effective wad enhancing formula in the world, frankly. Um, <laughs> a known universe. It's uh, it, we, we all put our heads together, figuratively and literally, and we came up with an incredible formula for you. Um, there's a link down in the description. Use PKA at Derek's website to get your uh, get your discount. But I'm just gonna look. The proof's in the pudding, as I like to say. <laughs> I, I, I took. I took measurements before the product and measurements after the volume increased tremendously. I, I think it was like 300% or something. Now we're talking about, we're talking about nine milliliter loads. Okay. For you Euro people, you know, okay. <laughs> I actually don't know what it came to in ounces or grams. An, Oh yeah! Oh, <laughs> oh, that scared the shit Listen, out of me. This is a little behind-the-scenes footage at Lock and Load headquarters. <laughs> Working every day uh, uh, as hard as we can to make sure that you guys are just locked and loaded, as we like to put it. Um, you're gonna love the bottle when you get it. It's covered with cum stains and the official PKA logo as well. So head on over to uh, Derek's website. Look, give it, give it a go. Give it, give it four weeks. That's all we ask. Mm-hmm. You're going to be a return customer, like 86% customer retention or something like that. Possibly. They're not buying this as a gag gift anymore. They're like, actually, hey, that stuff you gave me for my bachelor party, um, I blinded a hobo with it. Can I, where do I get more? Like, like, you're going to shoot massive loads. I'm talking about longer distances, longer orgasms. Better pre-cum. More pearlescent wads. Even mm -hmm. like, like they will be lustrous with the amount Dude, of vitamin. Once you e. get it, you're a repeat customer because you don't want to be a normal person again, right? If you watch porn and you see these guys go, you're like, that guy fucking sucks. I'm better than him. Yeah, and, and you don't want to be normal. So you're saying I don't have to overdose overdose in pineapple anymore? Like I can get this product? That's only for flavor, and that's a different product that I've been working on for a while. <laughs> I no seriously, I want to get a sample of this. I want to try this stuff. Yeah, I'm right. serious I mean, right now. I want to. We, we I'm going to go to the website and I want to check it out. I mean, uh, link in the description below. Absolutely. Uh, it, that's a picture of the bottle up there. Where's my bottle of this shit? Oh, yeah. I have a bottle. I am legit looking into this. The bottle legit has cum splatters all over it. We we fought to keep <laughs> this. <laughs> that's a big, hold on, hold on. Are those like horse pills or like? Dude, that's, so that's part of the thing, Kyle. Do you want to do? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and, you know, I, I've been saying this the whole time, but look, if we were trying to rip people off, we we'd say, yeah, take one a day. Um, they're, they're thirty in a bottle. Uh, 50 bucks. That's not what we say. We figured out how much it took to get the correct dosages of all these effective ingredients to a person. And it turns out it's nine pills a day, nine pills a day that you have to take four in the morning, five in the evening, I believe. And uh, you're going to see some results. So the bottle yeah. has 270 capsules. We have competitors where you take Shit. one pill doesn't do anything because that's not enough. Right, you need nine pills. Ours is for fucking real. Five in the Arch morning, four at night. That shit. <laughs> and and you will uh, take an eye out. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, America. Okay, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Kyle. Uh, thank you, Kyle. Yep. Uh, oh, that's good shit, man. Iron oh. Dome Cock. 
<sighs> Certain ladies love that. That's all I'm gonna say. I mean, I mean, <laughs> who doesn't? You know, like, like, like. Who I, I mean, when I watch a porno and it's some like pitiful, dribbly low. Oh I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm you like, feel oh, like you're ripped off. What? You're getting paid for this? Yeah, you know, like. Yeah. So I, you need some. Think? You need some Peter North skills. Like you got to go all the way. Do you guys want to do a Patreon AMA question? I love AMA questions. All right. My man here does not need to be um, anonymized. He's put it right out there. Hey, boys, my name's Tane. You might remember me from the PKA hangout years ago when there were only 12 people. I'm the New Zealander kid out in the nature that could do one-handed push-ups. Yep. I'm wondering what your advice would be with finding women with similar values. I've never had a girlfriend before. I'm 21 now, and I feel myself wanting a relationship. And he clears out. I'm not a virgin many times over. I thought I'd preface that. So this is a sex haver. By no means am I ugly. I'm probably in like the top 10%. If not on par with Kyle's good looks, I'm also the same height as Kyle. 6'2", 6'3", and good boots. Oh my. I'm not an introvert. I'm quite fun, I'd say. I'm thinking of moving to, my, uh, to a different country because it seems like all the girls in New Zealand are lame and not pretty. Maybe I'm not looking hard enough. Do you think I should settle? My friends think I'm crazy with the amount of girls I turn down online and in person. Am I too picky? Am I looking in the wrong place? Any advice would be appreciated. My Instagram is Tane KP. <laughs> Puts it out there if you want to confirm that I'm telling the truth about the looks department. Okay. Love you guys. Never miss an episode. So our handsome friend here says no woman is good enough in the country of New Zealand for him. What's your advice? Give me his Instagram again. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, want to, I want. I need to see him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, did yeah, see Zach? Him. Let's 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 see if we can. I mean, let's go. He he wants to be seen, so let's 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 pull him yeah, up. He, you need to he, analyze it to yeah, really. Yeah. Let, let, let's see. Let, is this some sort of an Adonis that needs to move out of the jungle to Hollywood, or or do we just need to? He's a good looking guy. We'll see what you say. I remember Tane. He is a good looking guy. I now, the know. problem is he doesn't think women are good enough for him or he no says girl that wants in the country like, of New really. Zealand, they're lame and not pretty. He's looked online and in real life. OK, yeah, like, he's, he's, he's a good looking Eddie dude. better. He's yeah. got game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Oh, he plays the guitar. So his problem is he wants to find a real relationship is what you're saying. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't know. That I got that oh, from boy. What, what does he want? Um. Mm. Appreciate it. Let's see. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. Either he wants. To I guess he does want a real relationship. Like, a real I'm relationship. reading into. I'm not a virgin many times over, but I can't find Mrs. Right. I. I it doesn't sound like he's saying he can't find anyone. He's willing maybe to maybe he's not a. Maybe he's not a virgin. Um, with dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah. maybe he's playing for the wrong team and he doesn't realize it. Maybe. Oh, maybe the uh, reason no woman's good enough is because their dick is too small. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the it's issue. A big dick woman. <laughs> well, we've solved this one. <laughs> <laughs> next, uh, next case. Next case. Uh, <laughs> oh, <God. clears throat> That's a wrap. Essentially, what I would recommend is um, go on a quality uh, in, uh, website. Uh, I don't know if they have it out that far. There's one called eHarmony. And mm -hmm. on eHarmony, you actually fill out a huge questionnaire to find, you know, talk about all your likes, dislikes, all this stuff. And they, like, real, really scientifically link you up with women who yet you would click with. I'm guessing uh, I'm guessing he's going out with a whole bunch of shallow, shallow, good-looking chicks who have nothing more to offer than some booty. I, think I thought you were going to send him to FetLife. <sighs> <laughs> Anyways, so I think he needs to. <laughs> I see a guy that uh, this is kind of common, actually. Oh. He's he's a good looking guy. Probably his entire life, girls have been fawning over this guy, mm -hmm. trying to get his attention, go out with him when he got a little older. But he's never been at a lack of girls fawning over this guy. So I think he's probably never really had to develop much of a. Uh, a personality to mm. kind of get the girl. And, pretty girl uh, syndrome. He pretty needs... girl syndrome in a guy. He might be a little jaded. Uh, yeah, he might get. He might be bored with just girls in general. Uh, he needs a knows? boomerang. He needs a boomerang. yeah, yeah. Have I'm you seen the Eddie boomerang. Murphy movie Boomerang? Yeah, where he was a big a time player. Time 
New Zealand. Big time player, and then suddenly he meets a woman who's hot, but the woman rejects him after ah. they sleep together. Oh, see, I was thinking of Bowfinger when he's got the retarded doppelganger. No, no. that's right. a different movie. <laughs> Another one. That, <laughs> I did that earlier. Movie. That can happen to anyone. <laughs> he needs. He needs. He needs a challenge. I was going to say that. I didn't know the boomerang oh, reference. I'm much too yeah. good looking for these for these birds. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice birds I've been with my entire life. <laughs> I didn't realize he was a beetle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw I him know. with a hat and glasses. I mean, I know. Yeah, you know, I know. He's, yeah. he's in a band. He's got the Ringo thing happening. I think he's trying to channel at least one of the Beatles over there. Yeah, but well, no, seriously, he, uh, yeah, he needs, everyone's he needs fucking to cheap aim. over there. So count your blessings, dummy. I <laughs> to... <laughs> Can I do the next one? I'm excited about it. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Relationship advice, please. My 27 year old wife is 12 weeks pregnant. First pregnancy. Oh, a She's been problem. extremely nauseous and vomiting for the last 10 weeks. We're not expecting this to go away anytime soon. So far, she's lost 15 pounds and gone from 127 ah. to 112. Prescribed medications have not helped. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. Our sex life has gone a wall. Before the pregnancy, we had sex three to five times a week, and I feel selfish. I want some pussy so bad, Jeez. but I don't know how to approach the issue. At this rate, she still has six months of pregnancy followed by more time of recovery before we can even start regularly fucking again. To stack onto this, I find myself jacking off to pregnant porn because I find it very hot. Should very I get normal. used to jerking off every day for the next year? Or should I just start bending her over and sending it <laughs> when I'm horny? All right, With her so being really sick and clearly not enjoying it, which is kind of a turnoff for me. <clears throat> Any advice would be great. So I think this guy's on the right. Let me, it, let me take this. You're on the right path, my friend. This is really all about you, right? I, I get that your wife is going through this pregnancy. She's lost 15 pounds when she should be gaining it, uh, you know, because of the baby and the pregnancy. But our primary focus is on you getting your rocks off. That's what matters here. So bend her over and send it. That's the position of the show, I assume, right? Bend her over. Not <laughs> See, I was confused. I thought she was still too fat. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought he was no, no, no. Bro. Anthony, he, they, he <laughs> said 27. Name. She's too old. Uh, <laughs> uh, damn. As, see, oh, are they still fertile at 27? <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a very, very common problem. And it's funny because women in the pregnant stages can, can either go like hate sex or really get ridiculously mm -hmm. needy for sex. And unfortunately, he went the other world. And I, a, I would speak to your doctor because there could be something in her diet or something she's not doing. I don't know if she's taking Materna or something like that that could help her with the sickness. Um, B, um, you're just going to have to get that platinum membership to Brazzers and just deal with it. Because, I mean, you could do the, you know, bend her over and go for it and stuff, but... It's I like it's much more fun if she wants to do it. And she's gonna say yes because she's a wife and she'll probably do it reluctantly and stuff like that. But when you have someone who if you have if you being with a horny pregnant woman, there's probably very few things on the planet that is hotter than that. So if oh, you dear. can if you can get through the health issues and talk to your doctor, talk to your physician. And see if there's some way she can get through this sickness. And with some luck, she'll get to the horny pregnant stage. And that is insane. She will not get off you. If you could get her in. There's a little subreddit I want to direct you to. It's it's a H U C O W who cows. Now, these are men who uh, who, who like the idea of usually pregnant women because uh. they actually do lactate. But they usually dress them up like cows, right? Oh, like like, like, <laughs> like lots of Holstein print. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, maybe a, and they'll put them in like a like a uh, like an animal stall, right? With oh, hay and God. stuff, like a whole scene, right? And sometimes they'll <laughs> paint them up, and they'll tell the actress or whatever, like, look like you do not want to be here, and so she does. <laughs> And and then they hook up like like an industrial cow milker to her, and and I guess the fantasy is some man has like wow. kidnapped her and impregnated oh. her, and now he's like in a milker, like and turned <laughs> into a who cow, and uh, it's wild. So maybe you can get your wife bizarre. into something like that. I bet you could both bond yeah. over that, and you deserve my bad advice because you fucked up in the beginning, and you did you broke two of the cardinal sins. You got mm -hmm. married, and then you had a child. So so you you you're. You're 0 for 2, bro. Like, like, yeah. like, like, 
I guarantee your third choice down this path will not be a good one either. She's losing <laughs> weight. She's throwing up. She's pregnant for another six months. Hey, creep, leave her alone and let her friggin <laughs> let her gestate uh, your, your fucking child for another six months. Jacket. <laughs> Wait till she's done, and if you're afraid she's too skinny, after she has that kid, I don't think being too skinny is a problem, statistically speaking. <laughs> I think, you know, after Women a while, you'll way be too much wishing for that uh, 120. I was, uh, I, we were talking to our friend the other day. He works, uh, he delivers babies for a living, and uh, he was a telling stork? us. A stork? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a line. I like it, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he said that like uh, most American women, especially, are like way overweight during their pregnancies. That they're gaining mm. way, way too much weight, and yeah. that like it's always been like this body positivity thing. Because yeah, like well, yeah. you know, women used to get shamed for gaining eight pounds, yeah. <laughs> and we're like, ah, oh, we need some speed to thin you up, girl, and one of those vibrating leather jigglers. <laughs> get in the jiggler, the jiggler, and take your pills. It'll help the child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take. The baby, like that's shaken baby good. syndrome in utero. That's and great. somehow we've come so far the other way that there well, these like, to be housewives in heels all day while they're pregnant, right? So it's like, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. like you need a caloric surplus, but maybe the caloric sur surplus isn't literally doubling your calorie intake for nine mm -hmm. whole months. Mm -hmm. um, just saying, because and his point was, and uh, anyone who like didn't like my initial take, the whole reason for this. <laughs> was to stop destroying women's vaginas with these fat babies because mm. he said it's just a mess down there these days because yeah. they're giving birth to these nine ten pound behemoth mm. american babies that oh, have been yeah. that have been in the in in utero getting supersized yeah fucking right and shit. Yeah, never yeah, thought yeah. of that yeah they're eating like shit food it's going to the baby they're coming out like friggin <laughs> oven yeah. stuff for roasters yeah <laughs> And let Damn. me give him one, as a dad, let me give him one uh, hint of advice. I know it's romantic in the delivery room and everything, but do not look below the waist when that kid comes out because it will screw up your head forever. Yeah. Did, did she poop herself? I didn't oh, look. I didn't God, look. does that happen? I didn't look. They all, there's, oh, there's worse than happens love in that, Anthony, bro. Anthony, they all poop themselves. It's nearly 100% of the time. Wow, yeah. that's something they don't show you in the rom com. Oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, that is not. There, good. there is a zero percent chance that oh. a woman hasn't sprayed diarrhea all over her doctor to the point where he had to leave and be replaced. <laughs> there is zero Holy percent chance that that shit. hasn't happened. That has happened. Mm. That's terrible. You think the they, real the... horror is going to be up a little higher? And yeah, so I, area... I'm not familiar with both my kids. Came, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Wolf. Both my kids came via C-section. So that whole uh, like oh. once you see the baby emerge, like you never see it the same. Yeah. That, that's not me. Like I never saw. I haven't no, seen that. That's surgical procedure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but surgical surgical procedures rough. Too. Oh, and the whole pooping thing. If she did that, I wasn't there for it. What happened with me is they had me outside the door while they like cut her open everything but deliver the baby. I walk in, and the room is overpowered by the smell of burning flesh. It's like, what Whoa, the fuck have you guys been doing in yeah, here? Cauterizing. Yeah, cauterizing. I, I, I would assume. Yeah, or yeah, and I'm, or or that, or they do surgery by lightsaber. That was my first. <laughs> <laughs> if they had to, if they had played that fucking sound effect when you were outside to fuck, <laughs> you don't wonder. Like, and, oh, and then the doc pops uh, the hood on his way out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus! Crawls inside to keep warm. But yeah, they, and then they pull the That's baby out of this hole in the stomach and then oh. they asked me to cut the the tube and um i i, I stole it kai would do comedian. that for the discount <laughs> I'm, I'm in there getting <laughs> whacked. How, how much you take it off for this doc i fucking tied it like a cone head brought his own knife <laughs> yeah yeah he brought his own knife hold on doc oh my god i'm not allowed to carry those felons <laughs> so yeah i was traumatized wow. by that Surgical procedure, but not the way most dads. I don't Jesus. think anyone, I don't know who invented or started that whole fucking thing, but I like the old school black and white TV version where, you know, the Wait guy's pacing the in the waiting room with a couple of friends. The nurse comes out and goes, it's a boy. It's a boy. And they hug each other. <laughs> lights and goes, Never having seen the in nightmare the hospital. Yeah. that we happens had, in there. Right, right. We had one Bro. of those questions uh, a couple of weeks ago and same scenario. And the wife says, Hey, I don't want you in here when we give birth. Just my mom and my sister. You have to wait outside. After like four hours, he ditched and went home. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Wow. He felt very oh. upset to be excluded. Like that. Yeah, he wanted one. to be part of it. Yeah. I'd be I thought that I, was a dick move. I'd have waited. <laughs> I tell you one thing though, when you're in that maternity ward, the the screams that you hear, it oh, sounds like yeah. a horror it's, movie. I oh, can't oh. It's, imagine. It's yeah. I yeah. I couldn't imagine wanting you to You can be tell in who's there. a lock and load customer. Well, it's it's I I I bribed <sighs> the doctors to make sure the epi, not the uh the acid what do you call it? He gives the ep, epidural. Epidural? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, when you freeze them down below, yeah, I mm-hmm. made sure that that guy was on call and close at all times. Oh, I thought you because... were gonna try to get some off him too. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that type of party. Like, you see the guy. You, give me, give me you a see little. The guy, you see the guy that brought a um, brought a PlayStation to the hospital. He's playing um, Elden Elden Ring. Of no, but I like and, him. <laughs> yeah, he's just there. You see him in the hospital room, oh. and he's just playing uh, Elden Ring. Um, yeah, on, on in his wife's room how fucking pissed like you know i guess the stereotype is any wife is gonna hate that the husband or boyfriend whatever is playing a video game yeah. while she's uh, in agonizing oh, you pain reversed but... it? can you pause that game because yeah, if, if you yeah can, it's it, not multiplayer then i don't have a problem with it what you're supposed to be here at, like if i'm the woman i, I expect to be entertained the whole time? What is he supposed to put on a podcast? You're while talking. I sit there? You're talking you know? women. What is this? Strange. Yeah. That's they're strange birds. <laughs> the most important moment of your life, and and you need something to kill time with. It takes a long <laughs> time. Wild, I am holding they the don't first think that way. Son, and you need to kill some time. Kyle, you better. <laughs> I have got some an stories idea. lined up for me. I got an idea for how we'll be spending <laughs> your time from now on. <laughs> be at right. your brother's house. No, I, okay, in my opinion, you know what? You want to be in charge of entertaining me? Look, I self-entertain by bringing a video game console. You should be thanking you. This is not how you treat your wife. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to continue this silly argument, but I was like. He's be- no, nope. ain't gonna work. <laughs> it's not working. They do not like when, uh, especially if they're I, in something. I was like bad. that. My wife, she um, you guys don't know. My wife was learning to ride a motorcycle. She's not really a natural at it. She crashed. She broke her, like her collarbone separated from whatever's on the, the other rest tip. of her. So her yeah. shoulder like came apart. All right, cool. Uh, I'm in urgent care, and she's like really not doing anything. So I'm on my phone reading the news. Apparently that's bad. <laughs> and uh, she she just wanted lots of attention, and I guess I didn't have it. Can I ask you a question? You said you were on Reddit looking at the news. Uh, it's the Apple News app, but carry on. What was uh, the event of the day? Oh, I don't remember. Jackie got hurt. That was the big <laughs> so, event. That so, something day. You, so something you can't even remember now had drawn your attention away from your stricken wife. <laughs> she was being really boring. <laughs> what kind of what kind of motorcycle? So she was training with an instructor. Yeah, training, so I don't know yeah. the bike for sure, but I think it was 125 cc Honda dirt bike. Oh, so, dirt bike. Okay, yeah, so a little like, dirt bike, like, nine yeah. horsepower thing where she was going around and was she was it, it, or was or is she looking a like a road bike or or dirt She's bike? Working like, her way up to that. Up We're to not, like a, a Harley or something. <laughs> I could be. She took a Harley course, the Motorcycle Safety Foundation. If you know, she come up with a tat that said "Property a Chainsaw" on the. Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> she hated for that, that course. She hey, look, I'm it. a, I'm a fucking proby for the Hell's Angels. <laughs> she got her cut, her leather cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my I was, colors, motherfucker. I was riding. I, hey, honey, I, I'm I did selling a, meth. I did a trip last weekend. <laughs> And as I'm riding my motorcycle, this guy has a jacket on, like a leather jacket. It says probationary outlaw on the back. Oh and I'm God. like, I'm going to ride with this motherfucker, see how it goes. Yeah. And um, now I can be a bit of a spirited rider myself sometimes. So I'm like, I'm going to. I'm gonna. That's the whitest thing you've ever said in your life. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's what motorcycle. Yeah, I'm a I didn't make that rider. term up. I, I can be a, spirited oh, sometimes. You I can be a spirited get my way. I well, got that golly. <laughs> Traffic oh, laws funny. apply to cars. That, that's the mindset. <laughs> and uh, so I follow this guy and we're kind of like weaving in and out of traffic and stuff. And I think he noticed me, you know, like with him. And and it's like, like I, look, I'm not a super rider or anything, but I'm not easy to lose. We go to this red light. <laughs> he runs the fucking red light. All right, that's and then crazy. he goes into oncoming traffic and he passes like 37 cars. <laughs> 
Oh my and then he goes across God. another intersection and onto the highway. And I'm like, well, you lost me. Like, I'm not going to do all that. You must have really annoyed that guy. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm go Let me get the fuck away from this like, civvy. Who is this Risk guy? My life. Oh my motorcycle. God. That guy was a spirited rider. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so he left me. I, could, I was even like trying to catch up again, but I was too far behind. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, you oh must have pissed God. him off to risk suicide because Jesus. Well, he's kind of a thrill seeker, right? You gotta pull like your mic up, man. Adrenaline yeah. junkie. Mike, yeah. you gotta get your mic in front of your mouth. It, or Anthony, I mean to say. There we go. Maybe it's quite oh. drink in the way of it. Difference. Yeah, thank you. All right. Why club? Yeah, you're, you're an adrenaline junkie, right? You like yeah. um, a thrill? So, my two main hobbies right now are uh, motorcycles and acrobatic paragliding. Where you, oh, like, see, I remember when it was just and... paragliding. Now it's acrobatic. Enough. Yeah. So you're doing that shit where you go around and around. Oh God! I, like I don't. Just for the I record, think... he's already had his leg rebuilt once because of that. Oh really? That's not overstating it, is it? <laughs> there are four bones that connect your leg to your ankle. I broke three. So like, a, I mean, there's some plates in there and shit, but. It turned out okay. Like it works fine. The bad landing. I didn't say you were. Crippled. It was a bad takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it was a bad landing. Technically, like the. Did you get I off film? No, I didn't. Um, How did I happen? was a newer pilot at the time. I was, it's I dangerous out, enough. Fall out a little high. <laughs> what, what happened is, I got sort of <laughs> yanked up very quickly. And then, like, imagine you're on a swing set and Superman pulled you quickly. I didn't have any, like, body control to, like, land in, in, in a way you'd want to. Oh. And uh, just when I came down, basically my toe hit and quickly got oh, pointed okay. backwards. So it and... did one of these. It went like, eh, eh. Yeah, uh, yeah, like I just got, <laughs> as you bring the wing up at first, it, yeah. cre- it gets all this lift. So I yeah. bring the wing up, I get pull- I get yanked straight in the air and then dropped and it actually happened twice. The first time I handled it okay. The second Jesus. time, very poorly. Oh. So, wow. uh, the me of the day could do better job. But what do you call those scooter sorry. things that you stand on and you like ride around on one tire? Those are electric <laughs> unicycles. Yeah, I've seen Dude. those things. Those things nowadays are going like so fast. You see guys wearing motorcycle helmets. And it's stuff. crazy. My I friend is it. into that. So I have electric skateboards too, and they're a blast. A little safer than electric unicycles, which you're talking about. My buddy just switched from electric skateboards to unicycles, crashed into an elevator door at like 40 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? I think it was in a parking garage, which you can imagine is like a fun place to go zipping around. It's smooth. It has lots of turns, oh, elevation yeah. changes. Probably hear that. <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> on a skateboard, he was very good, like a top one percenter. Mm. On a unicycle, well, he's you know starting at the bottom again. Oh and my god! That's just, I, I think that his previous success is leading to his like hoping for more rapid progress than he is. And anyway, it's a lot of fun. I just like more calcul- calculated risk. I think like like don't get me. I, I like scary, scary fucking shit. But I would I, I want a parachute or a or a rope. Or I want, uh, you know, a helmet and a cage around me. Like even I'm, I'm still so conservative on my motorcycle. Like, like I, I, I don't do anything silly. I cruise on that thing. I'm not. I, I don't like yeah. going scary fast. It scary fast is scary, and it's the not risk- a good scary to me. It's like, man, the the fu- the, the mistakes out here are just deadly. Like, That's yeah. all I've yeah. ever like, done. Is just... gone fast. That's my only risk taking thing I do in a car. In a car, and, I don't mind. And and, and it's not fun until you're done and you go god that was cool i was doing 180 miles an hour that's that's cool as you're doing it you're just going like it's cool you're looking and going all right you look at the speedometer you want to make sure but that thing goes in your head goes if a fucking frog jumps out on the road i'm 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 dead is that a real number have you been that what are these tires working again I, I tried to see if I could get the Jag up to the 200 mile an hour rated speed. That, that that's what they does. say it goes a 200. Yeah. What kind of Jag? What kind of Jag? And the uh, RX uh, X. I I gave it away. I okay. I, I turned in my uh, my lease uh, before <laughs> I moved to South Carolina, and then I'll get another one. But uh, yeah, I gave up the lease. It was the uh, yeah the thing. It was insanely fast. Yeah. A lot of fun to fucking drive, but. Yeah, you go fast, and and like I said, 
I don't like that that scary moment where you really come into reality. I guess race car drivers and shit. Um, yeah, that's a nice, nice. No, that isn't it though. It was the XR? That was like a Cadillac. Fucking, yeah, know? yeah. That's kind jag. of a, that's lux- a, a luxury Jag or something. Because I, I have like, a, uh, I have a Range Rover Sport, and I, I got it up to about one forty so far. That's and for wow. an SUV. It's yeah, like, yeah. You feel well, they're it. doing that to SUVs now. They're putting yeah. insane engines in these things and making them. T- they're they're uh, supercharging them, turbocharging them. Yeah. And they go really fast, and it's a fucking SUV. What are you? It's kind of funny. So the fastest I've ever been on a bike is one thirty-five, which is not that on fast. a bike is pretty crazy. The fastest I've ever been. Period is this story. I'm with Kyle, and I know that he's going fast, but I don't know how fast. <laughs> and uh, uh, it just uh, spurred the conversation that I was like, the fastest I think I've ever been in a car is 122. And he goes, we're going 137 right now. <laughs> That's my record. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have the right road. That's for sure. Oh, Everyone yeah. knows the we road were, you got to go to to go fast in whatever We were driving right. from Arkansas over the bridge into Memphis. And if you've ever done that, there's this oh, wow. long fucking stretch before you even get to the bridge. I, I was going 145 or 150 roughly, and I saw the cop a half a mile wow. mile away. I saw him and went, zoom. And what he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, cop. He's like, you saw it? It's like, that's all I'm looking for is cop. We're going <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you think I'm looking at? <laughs> at that speed, you're just looking for cop. This is yep. a crime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. Kyle, you sure, Kyle, you're yep. sure you're not, you're not half black to be able to spot cops like that? Because <laughs> six mean, cents. That, you, you don't know, have to spot them. Cents. They'll spot you. <laughs> yeah. 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 He was, yeah. He was a pre-felon at the time, too. Wow. <laughs> oh, I, a law a citizen who could vote and carry a knife. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There were a lot of guns in that car. Wow. Oh shit! Jesus oh perfect. yeah, we were Dude. there doing like military training, learning how to use C four and stuff, and like watching all these demonstrations of demo work. Holy shit! It was, it was fun. We, we'd have talked our way out of it. I'd have told him you were a vet and that you were uh you we were honoring you back there at the training grounds. And all I need you to do is twitch every now and then and not say a fucking word. <laughs> Dude, I do that anyway. I know I you do. I'm not out of the loud. I just like Tourette's over here and, and listen. <laughs> sir, sir, do you have any idea how fast you were going? He'd be yelling from the beginning. Right? That scenario. It's like, yes, sir, I won't apologize. I was following the commandant's orders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or something Jesus. like that. I don't know. Maybe oh, a general gosh. scenario. Whatever I felt oh, you needed Christ. to be. Just having to the- yell out every few seconds. Charlie's in the wire. Charlie's in the wire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That old. Come on. It, 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 like, like, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. He's, that's the reference I got. Uh, uh, bro. Maybe, God, what God. he would have fought the Iraqis the first time. That's his age. Yeah, I think yeah, Iraqis be- was uh, yeah. hot. Man, that was a good that one. was the what they called the. Uh, the enemy back. We were. I just watched. I just watched Hamburger Hill. Give me a break. Away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Charlie, don't surf. Apocalypse now. Yeah, you know, yeah. Classic. A lot of Charlie in that one. Uh huh. <laughs> Jesus, Murphy. That's Charlie's point. Any more yeah. quick Are, questions like that? Did you? I wanted to ask Woody about <laughs> no war. Like, like, like you. So, uh, Gulf Storm. That's what it was, right? Like, like Operation Gulf Storm. Uh, Desert Storm. Desert, Desert Storm. Storm. I'm sorry. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Desert Shield um, first. Well, I was like mm. six. I think it was six Damn. or seven when that shit happened. Aww. But but you were like twenty, right? Roughly. Were you a felon uh, I was yet? <laughs> okay. Were you old yeah, enough? Like senior. Okay, you were in high school. Almost I was right there. Enough. Yeah. Well, I finished high school at eighteen. So like, I think I like that's February. I I became eighteen I guess, as it was happening. Like, I don't know right. how much you want to talk about it, but like, was that a stressful time to like watch the war on TV? I remember this. We we I had a teacher who served in Vietnam, and. Uh, he brought out this newspaper. You know, when like when the U.S. first enters a, a conflict, it gets printed in like a font you only see when wars start <laughs> <Yeah>. or end. <laughs> yeah. And that's it just... the law, guys. <laughs> wow, that's hilarious! It's giant, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like Save maybe you've seen it. And, and it was it was Ocean City's paper, the Sentinel. It's Edgar. war. <laughs> that's literally it. Literally, he yeah, holds the accent. paper out and it says it's war, and it took like the whole top of the fold. And uh, he's this guy was a vet, and he's like, "This is it. If you spend any amount of time in the armed forces, there's gonna be a war. That's how uh, America works." Yeah, and he just kind of laid out like, "We go to war a lot. 
this is what war is like. Um, he didn't say there was going to be a draft or anything. He was just like, it's no joke. It's not as much fun as you think it is. Wow. Uh, it, it, it's not a good way to prove masculinity. It's awful. You won't like it. And it's very real. You know, because I think there were maybe he was talking to the people who fantasized about getting into the war, mm-hmm. and which wasn't me. I was yeah. going to be a CPA. <laughs> that was my <laughs> that was my line in life. But uh, it it hit so heavy when he just pulled out the paper and he's like, uh, "You can't serve without there being a war. This is mm-hmm. your reality." Wow. I graduated. You know? I gra- graduated high school in two thousand four, so we watched Shock and Awe on TV oh, yeah, yeah. in high in high school. Part and two. so, like, <laughs> it was like, man, if I if I had joined right out of high school, they'd have had to pick between several conflicts to send me to. Do, they, like, like, do this. Two wars going. Say you serve four years or eight years. Can you think of a span where we haven't been at war for that no, long? No, not. It depends how you define war. But like I remember as a kid, like there was Iraq, and then it, there, there was a shit in Bosnia or whatever. And yeah, the, Yugoslavia. The, the stealth with the... bomber went down, mm-hmm. and and it, it was always something. It's always been something. Like, and like at every least president a, has had his war. A crazy threat, a military action. You know, even though mm-hmm. with with Reagan there was uh, Grenada, uh, Panama. Then with uh, George H. W. There was the Iran thing, always Kindergarten. something going on where yeah. you know you might not. It might not be a war per se, uh, but they're though. a military people and they are going and shooting and being shot at constantly. So yeah, that's the other thing. Like, like it's the, the whole thing in the newspaper is from a time gone by because yeah, like yeah. you could print the newspaper every day for the last 50 years and make it yeah. say it's war and it'd be pretty fucking accurate. It's, it's war. Well, honey, I'm off to the recruiting office <laughs> and they'd all just, you know, March up. A million people signed up today to go show the Hun what we're made of. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. <laughs> and now, now it's like, oh yeah, there's been a war going on for 20 fucking years. No yeah. one knows. Did you no see one that really stack Zach it. put up? 222 out of the last 239 years we've been Jesus. at war. And that's since 2017. You can tack five more onto yeah. each of those numbers, 227. That, I want to I want to see the win loss and KD ratios. Am I the only one? Because I think yeah. that we're like MLG level, uh, like top zero one. We should be. These other countries aren't at war constantly. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. Exactly. noobs. That's what I was thinking the other war. day. When it, oh, there's when a lot you, of countries that join in that Americans don't know about, though. Right? Mm. Like almost every war that. America has been in Canada's fought with you. Yeah. But you don't hear that as much, right? I yeah, think y'all, like y'all gotta one. brag more. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder but how it, many people like, like as the a the longest of sniper kills a Canadian. Like he should be yeah. big dick in it everywhere. Yeah, like do you Canadians have Canadians don't veterans. Canadians don't walk that like don't do that. Like you don't hear for that though, you should. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying that that's how when you're in Canada, like you don't know anybody's a vet. Like nobody walks around and you y'all know, don't have the license plates hats. and hats. We have license plates. They've got and the, the poppy on it, but we, the they coats, don't, there's no the shirts or coats or anything like the that. flags. No, none of it. Oh, thank you for your none service. No, I didn't serve. We're very serious. No, I mean, it. I'm saying like they say, thank you for your service. You know, oh, no, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> that would be. Yeah. Canadian, you know, Canadians are very subdued when it comes to the military. They're very hush hush about mm. it. It's We're all about but, it. But it's fair. It's, it. It, but on the other hand, when I play, when I'm the paintball events, there's tons of vets in it, right? Mm. And I, yeah, yeah. Some of my best friends, you know, Army Airborne and then everything like that. And I hear some insane stories. And, you know, these guys, I've played with Army Rangers in paintball and they, they, they go at it hard. You know what I mean? And it's almost like a, I think a pride when I can last in the bush with these guys for two days in, you know, 110 degrees in California <laughs> playing, right? So it's like, do that. <laughs> I, 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 I've heard from stories from all different types of wars. I've heard from guys who were in Mogadishu. I've, I've, you know, and it's, it's like, it's always amazed me. And it's like, wow, it's, it's hmm. just to be in their presence sometime is an honor. You know what I mean? So I was, uh, I, I was talking the other day uh, about my, uh, my brother is 18 months older than me, but it's a whole different generation it's weird he was born in 1959 i was born in 61 Mm. so it it's very close and and it's not it's only 18 months but um 
he is from a whole nother generation. It's the weirdest thing. And he's mm. entered that point in his life. He served in the army. He was 82nd Airborne in 1979. He went in. And uh, never heard. He got out. Never said anything. For fucking decades. Now, he's got the hat. 82nd Airborne. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's that guy now. Yeah, that yeah, goes yeah, yeah. in and, you know, it, it's fun. It's just all of a sudden you reach an age where guys that had served go like, yeah, fuck it. I served, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen the Stolen Valor videos? Oh, oh God, yeah. Brutal. Yeah. I can't watch them. Not because I don't have any sympathy for it, but it's embarrassing. Same thing with Catch a Predator. Like, like I don't know which is more cringy. <laughs> but- which is more? <laughs> I don't know which is more cringy because, like, 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 on one hand, like, you root for Chris Hansen. We've we've spoken to Chris Hansen on the show before uh, a number of years ago. Just had him on two weeks ago. I love him. Good interview. A bad man. It was it was hard to get him to joke around about the pedophiles for some reason. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I wonder why. I tried to get forgiveness for having a little pedo porn on my hard drive. He wasn't playing that. (laughs) Woody Woody literally said some out of pocket shit to chris Bro. hansen and i was Dude, like fucking pink he is already. the guy who gets people who do that you know? <laughs> nothing, nothing like Artie he lang got me yet. it was me Artie <laughs> lang and chris hansen and Artie was brutal he goes you're the guy that fucks kids <laughs> i'm horrified i'm horrified sitting there and Artie wouldn't stop. I'm like, oh my God, Chris, I'm sorry. You know Artie Lang is a comic. It's oh, oh Chris, I'm so sorry. God. So, dude, why do you fuck kids? And I'm like, I couldn't stop him. Oh. He's Artie. He'll never stop. And he knew it was funny. He knew the people <laughs> watching were going to be laughing their balls off. So, yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh my gosh. No, that funny. shows because you know he. I'm sure you're aware. Maybe the audience is, but like, like he started up Hanson versus Predator, his own yeah. thing he's producing, and. It feels meaner to me than the old show. And that's oh. a good thing. Oh, it's a good wow. Thing. It feels meaner. Like, for one thing, they get these uh, these decoys that are great. And these they get, like, a 19-year-old, like, they drama They get these decoys that are, that are so hot. <laughs> these are <the> <laughs> they do. They do. They do. That's the so wrong. like, 19. All right, and, wow. but, but she's like, but she's like five foot two, nineteen, and like, really yeah, cute. yeah. And she like pops on a ball cap and acts really precocious and like got laundry to finish. Come on in, dude. <laughs> in the old show, they had a decoy that she couldn't pass for thirty, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> and she'd be like, "Yeah, come on in. I gotta, I gotta put my tampon out and like run away and <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, disappear." Geez. Like I you was, would never. I was just playing with my door. Barbie. I'll be right out. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'd run for the hills if someone said, "Yeah, come on in. I gotta run." Yeah, and, yeah. And sprinted back into the house. No, uh, on his shit. new show, she's like, she shook one guy down. She was like, "Hey, I'm I'm really scared because you talked a lot about guns in our chat. Did Uh-oh. you pull your hoodie up and turn around?" And he did that shit. And then she was like, "Okay, come on in. Sorry, I'm just really nervous." Wow. And then she kept mm. like a, an island in the kitchen between her and him. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. and Can she they play, like keep away. She interviews him for like a solid three minutes or something before they introduce Chris, introduce Chris, Chris into the equation. Out. Yeah, wow. So it's it's really good to see them eat awkward pizza together. But she won't eat it because it might be poison. Who, yeah, you know? of course. <laughs> we did we did a, a we did a um, a bit. I had a, I was doing the show from my house when I uh, started Compound Media in 2014. I was doing the show from my house for a year until yeah. I got the New York City studio. And I've been there seven years now. So Chris Hansen was coming over my house to do uh, an interview. And we decided to play out. It's online somewhere if you can find it. Um, we played out me coming over my house and then Chris Hansen comes out and catches me uh, <laughs> talking to a girl. It was, it looked, it looked so real that I'm like, I think I'm going to be fucked here. Like people are yeah. going to look at this Deep and go, yeah. well, you gotta be careful. Anthony, he just tweaked that a little. Caught, uh, <laughs> doing, doing the fucking, you, know what, uh, you know what they could do? They could take some of like Chris Hansen's voiceover from all the other episodes and just pipe that in. Yeah. And, like, like, well, we did that to Chris once also. We took audio of him <laughs> reading the transcripts. 
yeah. so you said i want to lick you and i want to sleep with you i want <laughs> and we took those things and i was like i go i go uh mr hansen did you say this I want to sleep with you. I want to kiss you. I want to yeah, be your first. And Chris is just laughing his balls off because, you know, and we had, of course, the the brownies and the, the iced tea <laughs> at, on the table and shit. So fucking funny, man. That's wow. Great. That's hilarious. Oh, you found some? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Me with Chris Hansen. Wow. I brought vodka. I brought... <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I brought some, uh, some Zima. Uh, <laughs> they always make the words i can't i can't th- look look i've i've been questioned before <laughs> by the fucking authorities and then handcuffed a time or two myself um i've been i've been in courthouses in front of federal judges but i can't imagine how scary it would be for him to say do you have condoms knowing that you uh, do? do you have condoms and then he follows that up quickly with we'll find out either way yeah, yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> and he's so confident. Like, like, like. I'm sure there's been times when he was afraid, which is like one of the things I asked him lately. Like, yeah, this yeah, yeah. Some dicey times, but like, he never shows it. He's always like big dicking it for sure. Like, like you yeah, know, yeah, and he's yeah, got that yeah. notebook that looks like a cop's, like sort oh, of like. Oh, they, they you, the, yeah. When he first started doing it, before people really knew what he looked like, they assumed he was a cop. Always, he never yeah. said he was, but he never said he wasn't, and yeah. it worked because he'd go, "Why don't you take a seat?" No, no, take a seat over there. And the people are like, "All right, I'll take a fucking seat." Yeah. Uh, and then, and the first season, they let him go. They were all over television, so I'm sure their life was ruined. But then it turned out where yeah. they worked with the cops, and they were all waiting outside. It's like, okay, well, you're free to leave. And they then the guy be go. like, oh, cool, I'm free to leave. First season they Wham! did. They season just... the cops come in. Oh. <laughs> they go. It's hilarious. So, yeah, they, they know now. Um, I, one of the crazy. good se- – his new setup <laughs> is, is so much slicker. Wow, the cop, really? The cops are in the fucking well, – first of all, they're everywhere. But, like, the main cops that are going to take him into custody are in the garage with a cop oh. car in the garage. So they walk out into the garage, five cops there. They just us, throw them in the car, in the and car. that's it. Garage door goes up. Cop car set, takes that one in prison. New cop car shows up, pulls in. Garage door goes down, and the trap is reset. Business is wow. good. <laughs> so this might okay. This is a weird question, but what do they get charged with? I'm glad you asked it. That was my next thing. Like it's it's usually like so it's like uh, intent solicitation to do something of awful to a minor, sex roughly. With a minor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, like like sending the messages are crimes in their own right. And I, mm. I didn't know how much time you got. I always thought of like just the humiliation is the problem, yeah, yeah. right? Like right. like because nobody will fuck with you ever again. Yeah. yeah. Like 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 you're a monster. But like, I never thought that it was like crazy time for just showing up there. Maybe they're yeah. getting like seven, eight years. No, really? Yes. Did you bring condoms? You're gonna need them where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> By yeah, the way, you gonna... won't you won't be wearing them. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. It's Hopefully they don't get nuts. treated nicely. Absolutely. There was a lot of uh, guys that um, knew what was happening. Oh, They're yeah. like, uh oh, I know I'm fucked. There was one rabbi. It's he's famous. Uh, one of the f- more famous episodes. And he goes, "Well, you're free to go." He goes, "I can't. I know this cops." They starts crying. <laughs> they, wow. get, they get him out there, and the cops just tackle Can I please him. stay. Like there's nothing <laughs> the guy could have done. You, no could mercy. you can literally walk out the door and go, "I know the cops are here. You don't need to do anything. I'm gonna." Wham! You get bowled over. Oh, I would just go upstairs, pull the covers <laughs> over me. <laughs> I'm not going. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> One of my favorite takedowns. Uh... The best takedown of all time, though. The guy, the guy, the guy starts running, and out of nowhere, there was a cop in a fucking oh. ghillie suit laying flat in the lawn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he pops up and grabs and he the guy. Sniped his head right the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awesome. You know they had that instance where they like they bust. I don't think this one made it to TV because they busted that guy who was like some kind of small town politician or something. Mm. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then the guy offed himself. Yeah, that caused a problem. Yeah, that's yeah, probably if that why word keep... ended it. Yeah, that, it ended that it and NBC. another thing that I. have probably isn't even nice to talk about that, that well I, actually that, that's not that's not that bad you know chris had that affair 
It was that that was the other thing. Yeah, that was another thing. And then there yeah. was the, the, the check thing, the bad check thing to buy merch for want, the company. Oh. There was oh. all there was all kinds of shit. Hey, you wanna see some of the fucking this is exhibit A. Holy shit, there it is. <laughs> Exhibit A. The, the, Chris the, the, wrote Chris a bad check for these and then sent one to me. This Kyle, is fucking evidence in an, in an interstate fraud case. <laughs> Possession by a felon, too, right now. <laughs> you probably be back in the joint. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. No, they, don't. they took care of all this. One um, of the proudest moments of my career is when an Opie and Anthony fan got caught on Chris Hansen's. Fuck yeah. Um, show oh, yeah, and it was something? yeah yeah it was uh no he's sitting there and he's talking he goes do you know who i am and the guy goes he's got like this weird lisp like this <laughs> and he goes yeah i've seen you before you're real funny on the opie and anthony show <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> wow. uh, i'm watching i'm just like all right this is great <laughs> there's our fan i'm sure the advertisers are gonna love that that's our fan base <laughs> yeah yeah i was like great. Uh, great but yeah i've, I've laughed with uh, chris about that one That's yeah great. your fan base uh, <laughs> met, a, met one of your fans the other day you know what? Epic, like, like one doesn't really mean anything chat. one could be an aberration there's ever a second oh yeah 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 that that is true look it just shows like hey we got fans that's a big reach so, that's how you are, pitch it but that's if there's it, two right Chris Hansen only busted 37 pedophiles last year, and two of them knew our brand. Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. That's reach. I hear if there's one of something, I've always heard this, if there's one of something, it doesn't necessarily mean there's two. If there's two of something, there are probably more, mm. which is oh. kind of an interesting take on things. So one doesn't mean anything. Two means there's probably a thousand. <laughs> yeah. 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 <sighs> Do you guys need a new question? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. There's a. I'll listen. I have. A, I'm wireless. Uh, <laughs> it's new technology. These kids are using. It's Thanks crazy. For Ten bucks. You can ask a question to the show, and we work them in. So here it is. <laughs> I'm talking to someone I work with. We just started being friends. I like her. I really want to fuck her, but she's in this state of not wanting to fuck anyone. What's the right approach? Currently, I've just been trying to talk to her as much as possible. Sex and stuff isn't much of a discussion with her. She's pretty open about stuff like that. But I know that's not an invitation because I know her friends. Mm -mm. So I told her, I don't think we should talk about stuff like that if we're just trying to be friends. But it comes up every now and then. I still don't want to believe that's just because she is flirting or talking about sex that she wants to fuck me. Am I doing the right thing? So he has saucy conversations with this coworker. Mm -hmm. He wants to have sex with her. But she doesn't want to have sex with anyone. What do we think? She she told him that, didn't she? Right. Oh, he found an honest woman. Oh shit. Um, no, she doesn't <laughs> want to have sex with you, and she finds it fun to fuck with you. That's what's yeah. happening. You um, have found she, yourself you're, in you're, the friend zone. My friend. No, yep. it's worse. Friend zone is different. Friend zone is like I need a guy around who can operate jumper cables. You're a fucking <laughs> giggle puppet. You're you're like a, you're like one of those things you squeeze at a desk to like Pathetic. to like entertain. You're a you're a fiddle spinner. That's <laughs> high school shit. Um, she, she thinks it's silly to titillate you and watch you dance like a bitch. <clears throat> That's what's happening right now. Wow. She, she, very few women are ever going to are like, okay, maybe she's a she's not asexual, right? She's having right. conversations with you. She's mm -hmm. she's not interested in sex with you, and she told you she's not interested in sex, and then she titillates you to watch you be like, oh, if only, if only, mm -hmm. maybe I could, maybe there's something I could do that would make her like me instead of like finding like <laughs> go find one of the b billion women who want to fuck and are and are open about it and not wanting to use you like one of those squeezy dolls yeah you exist to pump up her ego you? so she drops you crumbs here and there and <clears throat> yep. you dance like a puppet for her but eh, her, her legs are closed bro if if when you're a, a, a kid you're in high school junior high whatever it is you are gonna um that is gonna happen to you and it's going to be tragic. You're going to fucking adore a girl. She doesn't want anything to do it. You're going to try so hard. Everything she says, you're going to interpret that. Maybe, maybe that means something. I'm going to keep pursuing it. And it's just going to end in heartbreak and tragedy. If he's at work and this is a coworker, dude, you're way too old to fall into this thing where you think that if you keep trying and, well, she's talking sex stuff. So 
move on. Actually, move on to some other girl in the office, an ugly girl. Fuck the shit out of her in front of her. Let her know and go. And she'll be like, oh, why did, why did he fuck her? I'm so much prettier. Make her feel bad. Yeah, she um, said sorry. Yes. You are her simp. Yeah, just get a new she job. Yes. Leave. I, I saw that green <laughs> text. I, I, w- I didn't want to use that word, but but that that's exactly what I was thinking too. I saw a green text the other day, and this guy's talking about like he used to be out of way, out, out of shape, and like he didn't shave and had acne, but he like got all that in order. He started working out at the gym. Now he, he's like, all of a sudden, I'm like a seven out of ten Chad. He's like, then then this cute girl that that never would have spoken to me before came over. I could tell that she was like a little bit nervous to talk to me, but she touched my shoulder and said, maybe we should, we should talk outside the gym. I, I looked her straight in the face and said, I'm not into trans girls. <laughs> she awkwardly <laughs> says, Jesus. He goes, she awkwardly says, I'm not trans. And then, <laughs> and then walks away trying to hide the fact that she shattered. <laughs> like, shattered. Like, Am I there bros? <laughs> God, that's a funny pose. And then he woke up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's a story, but it's hilarious. It's hilariously funny. Yeah, it's a great joke. Yeah, I, I love it. Yeah, that, like, like that would be the most shattering thing you could you could say. That, yeah, like, yeah. I'm totally gonna use that. Unless she said, that's... "Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry to hear that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always she hear, is, like, you know, she is trans. You always hear, "What's the worst? <laughs> what's the worst he could say, or what's the worst she could say?" No. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Oh no, there's like. 30 things off the top of my head that are worse than no. I don't go out with trans how does, girls. How does ew suit you? Yeah, I don't go out with trans girls. Uh, you haven't seen my cock yet. <laughs> that would have been a good retort. That would have come back. Yeah, response yeah, yeah. from her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, you never think of those things until it's like two o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah, that's a George Costanza moment. Yeah. Jerk store. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that one. Oh, What's yeah, the difference? Riley? You're the all time bestseller. <laughs> 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 The jerk store called. They're all out of you. <laughs> oh, it's the greatest. If you could have your partner receive any superpower to use during sex, what would it be? Invisibility, right? Sex. Right? No. Why the fuck no? would you want invisibility? invisibility. I'm talking about how we uh, fuck ugly people. On your this thing, j- right? your uh. jizz is just floating over the bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be fun. <laughs> that would be weird, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that would be an oh, odd gosh. thing. Cool. I don't know. Oh, no gag. Is no gag reflex a superpower? Or... What superpower would you Damn. want? Oh, no gag reflex. No, you'd want them to be able to <laughs> morph into other Super people. Gag I missed, no. I missed yeah. that. I missed <laughs> that fucking Marvel. Uh, Justin League <laughs> episode. Girl with no gag reflex. <laughs> Look out. Oh, it's uh, uh, She's coming. <laughs> She can follow I, anything. I, you would you would want her to be able to like transform into anybody. You'd want mm. to more. Than uh, that's that. good. That fucking X Files. Oh, X Files. Uh, X Men. Um, yeah. Chick, what's her yeah. name? Or Rebecca Romaine. Or the the girl. There is a Mystique. female character who can multiply herself into Justice League. Yeah. Also, mm. uh, that was my second pick. Uh, there's also like um, the the girl in the um, what's the show? Me and you like Woody the, uh, the Invincible. Boys? Fucking invincible. Oh, invincible! You got that uh, that that chick duplicate. Like, duplicate. Yeah, that's know, what I'm Kate thinking of Kate. actually. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. And, then you can and, have like three sims like, and four. Yeah, like like three Kates bang you at once, and like yeah, and she's into it. She does because it. Yeah. that did happen yeah. on the show. Wow. Yes, yeah, that happened hot. on the show. That's, that's a good fucking show. It has to, like if it didn't happen, the writers should be shot. Yeah. When yeah. you have an opportunity to make something like that happen, it's like, oh, of course they're gonna do that. Have you seen that? Have you seen that show by any chance, Anthony? I have not Google. seen that one. No. It it's is right a up your brutal R rated animated superhero show, and it's amazing. If you <laughs> it, just watch episode one, and 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 I I guarantee you'll be like, what the fuck did I just watch? And where's the rest of it? Like like what it's is it so on? Good. It's uh, Amazon. Amazon. Amazon? It's, it, yeah, Do not it, watch it with the kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's violent. It's very, very violent. Well, youngest is sixteen. He could maybe. I don't have any kids. Oh, I mean, Wolf's youngest. <laughs> he, he made a mistake. Well, that's Missy's not to say play, there aren't Missy's, any around. Missy's, play, Missy's playing video games right now. In the <laughs> yeah, like she I really imagine sitting cross-legged screaming. on the floor. I'm sure. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so crisscross applesauce, they call it in her. Yeah, spot. yeah, crisscross applesauce. <laughs> She's in there, like I hear, I know the one yell where I know she just won with her 
other she plays with uh, her girlfriend shit and uh war zone and and mm-hmm. they win she goes ah oh, we won twice and one second place and i'm like how the fuck the fuck do you do that i stink on ice at war zone uh, i wanted to i wanted to hear your take on the uh this ukraine thing because I've been following this thing. Maybe you don't give a shit about it, but I've been. Following oh yeah, no, it. no. I, I mean, obviously, I give a shit. I think, I think uh, it, it, there, there could be some pretty crazy repercussions uh, globally because of it. Uh, but again, with the news the way it is and the bullshit that's been put out over the course of the years now, uh, I have no faith that I'm hearing anything accurate, none whatsoever. So when I see certain sites posting things about the war crimes and atrocities against the ukrainian people and putin's this and that i i have to say well i don't know i i i can't take this at face value and also the other way you know the ukrainians have um you know nazis fighting for them and this and like okay i've i've heard about these certain soldiers that they have but again i was talking to my dad about that and it's like like i was like dad like I bet if we go down to a redneck bar down the street, there's some dude with a Nazi tattoo. Oh, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, the same like, 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 thing. There's assholes yeah. everywhere. That doesn't mean everywhere. you invade a country, right? And if like, you're, yeah, if you're in the Ukraine and uh, someone uh, unless you're us, comes over and, your borders and you have a swastika tattoo on I your mean, neck. If you're an asshole, the United States will invade you. That's <laughs> what, <laughs> just to be clear, like the, the, the rules do not apply to this country. Like, 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 I'm just <laughs> stunned that, look, oh, we fuck went up, through Gaddafi. four fucking he, years with with Donald Trump as president and it didn't like there was never a moment where you're like uh oh I think we're going to be at war tomorrow like like it was the first time because it, he was it, friends I with can, all the bad guys I can remember yeah. cuz he was probably you know what and justifies the means good fuck it and if by friends you mean he went over to uh, North Korea and told him, knock your shit off or he goes over to uh uh, uh Putin and he's like, yeah, this guy seems like he's fucking proud of his country. He wants to take care of it. Whatever. All I know is it was $2 gas, and we didn't seem to be going to war the next fucking day. Jeez, that's crazy. But I I understand how some people don't think it was it was all that good. We're, we're at record inflation. <laughs> There's literally we're, – we're teetering on World War III, and I'm supposed to go, oh – those tweets and orange man bad and we it was a damn good four years i gotta say it was what was bad about it look you could hate the guy and i understand why people do and i'm not this crazy i love trump guy Mm -hmm. i'm really not i think he's he's kind of stupid he said stupid shit I, i i think he uh plays to the the cameras and everything i get it but You can't take those four years that he was president and say they are worse than the four years before it or the four years that that were destined to live uh, the year and a half even after it right now. I don't know if anyone can logically say that we are in better shape right now than we were for those four fucking years. I don't know. And was it I, Trump? Uh, Who knows? No, I don't those even know. were those were prosperous years, and that is why I uh, I have already called the next election. I've got a lot of money uh, wagered at this point with a lot of different people that Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. Wow! Um, and that's uh, a bold statement. <laughs> and uh, I, I I get I get double if uh, homeboy from uh, Florida is his uh, vice vice president. Uh, DeSantis. DeSantis. DeSantis? Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Jesus! Yeah, yeah. that's my dream team. Can't DeSantis. beat it. Florida is Florida's wrapped up. It's it's it, it, it's game over. It's game so, over if he takes the Now Trump so, would only be VP. able to ha- serve one term. So DeSantis as VP, it'll only take one term for him to jump in as president. So he probably wouldn't mind. And he'd taking still be the under VP fifty. Slot. Yeah, 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 he'll still be. Wow, we haven't seen that in under fifty. That's twenty five years now. Under like fifty. Yeah. <laughs> because Can I, I got to tell you something. If anyone thinks Biden. It has his faculties about him. Uh, you got you got to not be looking at what's going on. Every day there's a new video of him going. Like he walks away from a podium. And he he doesn't know where to go. I know instead. one of them was extended a little bit. Like 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 one. Of oh, them I know. Was, I know. There's plenty of fake shit. The problem is there's there's one every day. I saw bird shit on him every yesterday. Day. It's like nothing's oh. going his way. I hate that. I'm really <laughs> you see the bird shit on him. 
Yeah, I didn't. Sh- That's he said something. America, like, he like said poof. America first, and a bullshit yeah. shit on the flag pin. <laughs> it was like <laughs> God himself. I, I swear to you. Oh, I know yeah. Okay, let me tell you. I'll tell you one thing. I love it's about real. Trump. Okay. I'll tell you one thing I loved about Trump, and that he showed us. And this is someone who's you know, American slash Canadian. He showed us that what America really thought of itself. It was you ever see those memes where the hero from um uh we were just talking about the show where the superheroes are like the bad guys. Uh, boys, the boys, the boys. The boys. Uh what's his name? Uh, the, 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 you know, you know who I'm talking about? The guy who's like the bad Superman on that show. Yeah, yeah, Homelander. Uh, Homelander. Homelander. And you've seen it the, the you've seen the memes where you've got what America thinks it is, and you see Superman and you say what America really is, and you see yeah, the picture uh, of Homelander. Okay. I think the Trump was amazing because he showed us how far we have to go. I, I think Trump ripped the, the lid off of a lot of bullshit. I think that happened like what? politically. Yeah. And well, he, media, he made he made he made racists feel comfortable. I don't and buy that. He made, I know you don't buy it, but it's I a, was it's a reality. <laughs> well, I was well, I'm gonna tell you, I was still very afraid during that time. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bit of comfort. I knew that if anyone knew how I felt about Native Americans deep in my heart. Oh my god. Would nobody would want to talk to me. Trust me, me it's it's there was uh uh <laughs> after coming out of like the I mean I lost for a lot of money during two thousand eight. And uh, the crash, and I gained it all back for the 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 eight years after that. And glad, you know, I'm happy that Trump uh, didn't screw up that momentum of the economy. But the hate that I saw that resonated throughout the country was the worst I've seen since the Jim Crow days. And I, uh, I saw so first again. You guys will have a different perspective on society sure. than I will because. Um, you know, you didn't see the the amount of, you know, hey, if you go back to your country, or we want to build the wall. And it's like, you know, it's not it's not it had nothing to do with watching mainstream media. It had nothing to do with social media. It's what I saw every day when I, I'm in the States every week, every other week for business and work. And I have residency there. So I ever for four years, I just watched it continue and grow and and gain strength and people feel feeling better about hating people who didn't look like them and it was huge i don't think that was a big part of the trump four years i think for you for you it was not no 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 i think the media did make a lot of it the wall itself the the wall seems to have been something that any country any other country that did did that would be like, yeah, they're protecting their borders. Look what we're doing right now. We're talking about uh, the Ukraine, and they need to protect their borders. They're being invaded by an outside country. Now, I understand the the influx of aliens uh, uh, from other countries over our southern border isn't the same as an invading army. There will be people that argue that. But all I'm saying is, why can't we have a secure border? Why is having a secure border with a wall so people can't just come over it why is that racist? Why is the idea that we should protect our borders for the, the wonderfulness that is America and what's available to people inside? Why should anyone run across and have privy to all that goodness? Why can't we have a secure border? There they is no, painted there is nothing, it as being but, racist. And that's, it's not. Where, that's where the confusion is. There is nothing wrong with a secure border. Then what's wrong with the wall? But when you're using and i can't remember the word is when you you create fear to try and get that done that's where the, the media created more in. fear with twisting trump's words did you hear the trump media- he said he said mexicans are nothing but rapists and murderers it's like but that's what he clip. said i know he did it i want he the whole said he goes he goes the illegal aliens crossing the border the mexicans that are crossing the border they're not sending their best and brightest yes he got he's not talking about Legal people that go through the system. He specifically had... called out the bad hombres. Right. Yeah. Bad om- There's some bad hombres. Some uh, caballeros. <laughs> you do that well. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm just I'm just saying things get uh again, the other thing. Uh he said Nazis are good people. 
never no, said that. No, he didn't that. say that. He didn't say that. He said some what? of those people are good people. He, he said there were good people with good intentions on both sides of the Charlotte yeah, issue. But there's no, there's no good side to that. There That's was. The there were the Let's people the that wanted. Right. There were people that wanted to destroy a statue, and there were people that wanted to keep the statue there, not because no, of no, any... No, 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 The quote that you're using was when we saw the guys in the tiki torches marching. That's when he used that quote. Oh, oh no. no. Well, that happened the quote after. while he played He that was clip. literally talking about the people that were there to support the statue or wanted the statue taken down. Now, the people that were there to support it, talking about... And I was, I was from this school of thought, too. I think anything that has happened historically in this country should be available for people to see Absolutely. and debate and talk about and know that we went through some very difficult times where a lot of mistakes were made. And totally statues agree. statues were erected to people that weren't the fucking greatest people. But <laughs> yes. to rip it down almost is counterproductive. You want to go up and go, hey, let me read this plaque. Who's this guy? Wow. That guy, maybe I'll read up more on this one. Holy mm. shit, what a piece of shit this guy was. And and not only that, a lot Hitler of these statues, statues were built in the 30s <laughs> when then you, you get another whole line of why during this time, what was going on in the country where they felt they needed to pay tribute to these uh, soldiers? Like there's so much education. You will that, not and, and find opera. any statues right. of these the statues SS are... in Germany. Right, these statues are Confederate soldiers, right? The, the guys who were fighting to keep slaves in right. heroic yes, exactly. poses, typically. And these plaques you see under them rarely say this was a total dick bag. Exactly. I'm no, they're like these are the, the heroic. Plaque. What? Right, right. I, I but, just no, don't <laughs> like any history should be eliminated. They talk about the sacrifices the they made. They talk I, I about like how to brave they are, how enough. long they marched, how hard they fought. I like, would like it, to think it, we're smart enough to be able to look at stuff in context and go and not go. Let's get rid of it let's go wow why but why in 1930 we're not did they decide to put so we're gonna we're gonna assess who's smart enough and who's not smart enough to handle reality and when they, we decide that certain people can't we eliminate the whole thing for anybody yeah, really statue is not eliminating it. i'm not no no i'm not i remember no, I mean, statue. the statues do and they were put up there by people who and that was their intent right yes. you know the, the daughters of the confederates the were not crack. trying to prove the bad things that their family did exactly. they, they were there to create these heroic again isn't that people. a context isn't that a context that needs to be looked into and and you could actually use that and say Wow, we had organizations in the 30s that that put these statues up. Why yeah. did that happen so long but after? They put it in the center then, square of Raleigh, North Carolina, where I live, on top yeah. of these pedestals, and and I tell you, they look like heroes when you look at it. Exactly. They put them in front of courthouses. They they're not like exposing our dirty history so we can remember what we did wrong. That's not what these statues do. But in they the could now. They were put there, fucking. A hundred years You'd ago. You'd have to put a different statue there if you wanted to fulfill exactly. that goal. These people look no, amazing. not fulfill that goal. You need it to look like it did when they put it up and explain why they put it up. And 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 that, I think that's a, a, a teaching opportunity. When no. you eliminate history, you are just you're you're not letting people look into Listen, why you know, something happened. You're not eliminating history by removing a statue. I that's think you ridiculous. are nope, no, you're not. You will not see SS <laughs> statues in Germany. No, and no one's forgot about what happened. I think they've got like uh, some. You tear uh, it down and then you teach them why it was torn down. That's how yeah. you keep. These are not Rommel. Holocaust museums in the Raleigh Center Square when they put some general up that fought exactly. to, to keep slaves. Like, but when they put it up in 1930, I think it's a, a, a learning opportunity there. I think there's a history lesson as to, like I said, why. Years and years after the Civil War, were they still putting statues up of these people? It's a, it's it definitely it is. Done when they as said a PR they were move, it was done to make them as heroes. That's what the Dixiecrats. That's again, why the Dixiecrats whatever were created, it was, created. Whatever it was at the time, it's taking the statue away isn't going to take away what was going on back then. To yes, educate people, at, no, what do they won't. do with those statues? Because I want one. 
They, they melt them down. <laughs> they're melting they them down, down and down making other stuff. They're in melting them area? down and make a George Floyd stuff. Oh, they put them in museums. They relocate them. They take them away. No, from they the don't. They said they were going to do that. Not one of them ended up in a museum. I'm well, they're literally the melting them down. I mean, you could do something with it. Then the we other thing, then they got, see, here's another thing. I'm pretty sure there's like busts or statues of like Erwin Rommel, you know, like the Nazi general that, that exist in museums or something like that. I doubt they Probably. have a big statue. Not Probably. in Germany. But they're never going to put up I mean, you wouldn't want one of, in like Northern Africa where he was fighting, would you? Uh, <laughs> like, uh, how do you think? Point. I, I point. think the only good place for that would be Germany. They took a Again. statue of you Teddy Roosevelt. That. Uh, giant statue, been there forever in front of the Museum of Natural History here in New York. It was Teddy Roosevelt on a horse. Beautiful statue. He's being followed by uh, American the Indians. Slaves. Oh, slaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. American Indians uh, who were with him and some uh, African Americans that were with him. Uh, and it it was portrayed, it was, uh, uh, they said it looks like they're being subservient. Well, yep. they were. It was, that was the time. But to take away a statue like that, that happened. That stuff happened. It well, isn't like, look, no one looks and goes, God, we should do that now. I'd love to be up on a big horse with some Indians and black people behind me, uh, making sure I have my supplies and everything. Again, no the one's Native saying that. There's a no lot of that. there's a lot of people who say that actually. I don't think there are. And I they're think Trump supporters. Said, Teddy Roosevelt was uh, a crazy. Can't ride horses. Was was uh, like a <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt. Maybe a mule. Loved the American <laughs> outdoors. He, he had so much to do with our. See, that's what I'm saying. Arts. You're trying to find the good points about the guy. No, and Teddy Roosevelt was pretty fucking good. He was okay. a good guy. And and again, uh, the national parks uh, uh, of of this country, Yellowstone, all these places. He fought that the Mexicans. He did, he did fight the Mexicans <laughs> and uh, San Juan Hill in Cuba. He fought the Spanish Nazi dresser. Too. Yep. Yeah, it's, <laughs> listen, I've been I've my ex is Italian, and uh, you won't see any Mussolini. <laughs> you won't see any Mussolini statues in Italy. Well, he Il sucked. Il, Il Duce. He lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was a piece of shit. He was uh, such they a. They all uh, were. Hitler. Wannabe. I looked up the, <laughs> where the statue is now, and I feel like Anthony was right. I just want to call. It. So I was thinking of Silent Sam. He was a Confederate statue with Silent Sam. Campers. I remember summer of, summer of uh, 1977, New York City. I don't know this, but in 19. I'm son, of, son of Sam. That was a complete <laughs> different thing, bro. Uh, anyway, this was a statue with I, major news around here. He was on the know. UNC campus. A flop. <laughs> and uh, he got toppled in 2018, and now he's hidden in some storage location that they don't advertise because yeah. everyone was trying to wreck that statue. They actually had cops stationed around this Confederate statue 24 hours a day to protect it from all the people who hated it. Oh, wow. Yeah, but they yeah, got yeah. outnumbered, and they toppled it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And for I instance, mean, like here, yeah. like for instance, here in Toronto, we're actually changing one of the names of the university who is – named after a bad guy and there's no problem no, what kind no of one's guy? got a problem with it sorry what kind of bad guy um essentially he just uh destroyed a lot of uh native canadians oh see again yeah. with the natives i'm yeah what i'm saying it but i'm saying is we're changing actual names of streets and taking down statues and changing school That's university true. names scrubbing and history, people yeah. are not trying to fight it because we understand but it's that rubbing. you People don't are trying to fight it. That's not they're not but being given you're any equating. time to give. They're not being given any time to give their opinions because they're instantly looked at and and tagged with the big scarlet letter R for racist. And That's so how it should people be. are petrified. I don't think so. I think it's a scrubbing of history, and. Um, Scrubbing, I don't no, know. No, scrubbing of history is book burning, and that's what a certain party loves. We to see do. that too. So I don't did, know. Did you see that? <laughs> I, I've talked about Tom it here Sawyer. before. Did, did you I've see seen that um, one burnt? <laughs> you've got to see the video of the school Babies board meeting. Racist. There's a school board meeting in Georgia, and I'm they uh, one of the parents starts reading one of the books that they take issue with. Aloud, yes. And, yes. And they stop her. They're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, ma'am! There are children watching this live stream." She's like. Do you see that you just made my point? I'm reading yeah, a book yeah. from the library uh -huh. where our children go to school. And uh -huh. and you, madam, think it's too racy to be read aloud in these chambers. 
It's like, come on. And it was yeah, pretty yeah. dirty. I, 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 you know, like, like I was getting off. on one hand. I'm I like, <laughs> I mean, it was pretty hot, <laughs> but on one hand, like, like I'm, you know, high schools are, are getting laid. They're fucking each other. It's like, like, yeah. like they all have cell phones, right? Like, like they've seen some shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't Everything. know what it's like to grow up in high school with a cell phone, right? Like, like, like it was a little. Different. I would have imagine during biology class, and I'd oh pass all my, my tests. Yeah. And yeah. then you pass because you know so, everything. So maybe a dirty book, like, like, like as long as that book is isn't like in like I don't know, like 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 fifth grade room or something like that. Like like it seems fine. That's the thing. I thought it was a high school library. It seems it, it, it would seem to me like it's okay for high school. Um, although you well, would imagine. That the audience yeah. would be high school kids. I don't know if I can know. When I was a kid, finding a Playboy was like finding the Holy Grail. Oh, gold. So oh, game. no. See, Just that's golden. I'm My telling you, right? Right? Oh, like, God. I'm telling you. It bro. depends on the uh, fetish of the guy you took him from, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You find him like in a stack in a garbage. You'd just be oh, walking down the street bro. and you'd see like a tit in the garbage. <laughs> and go, what? And then you'd find yeah. him and be like, I just struck gold. Yeah, the neighborhood gold. hero. Go, in, go into the woods and stash it under leaves. Yeah. Tell <laughs> your friends. You'll yep. be go. Oh, motherfucker! Yeah. It I was have... the greatest thing. Now it was it's like eh, anything, <laughs> anything you want is available. Exactly. Dude, this and is my Playboy story. I don't know how I never good that it. is. But... Yeah, <laughs> I had I had like a couple of Playboys. There were like like Anthony said, there was a stack of like forty, oh. and I grabbed two, and my friends grabbed two. We divide them up. I right, cool. And then, you know, so I have like two Playboys that are in my possession that I store between my mattress and my box spring. And that's that. And I owned them for a while. And all I did was look at the pictures. I was young. I hadn't discovered masturbation or anything like that. I, I had a friend. I was going to say, what, you didn't read the uh, interview with Jimmy <laughs> Carter? <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't read the articles yet. My friend is two years older. And he says, what do you do with the magazines? And I'm like, do oh. with them? Like, what? What is there to do with a magazine <laughs> other than look at it? Like, oh, I, I just no, do the, what oh, you do. No, this so good. he describes this self-sex act where he wraps the magazine into a tube and, like, fucks a paper magazine. So no, I'm like, it's the whole purpose. well, I got to try this. <laughs> 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 and I do. And it's not hot at all. Like, the, the edges are it's sharp. Not, <laughs> yes, it's, that, you can't. Oh, that the centerfold like that. is deadly. <laughs> yeah, and, the, the and magazine you can't itself, look at the magazine while you're doing that magazine like you know so i tried like like yeah but you need two magazines mag one to look at <laughs> and one to do what i with. thought it would and uh and yeah oh. so i didn't do that anymore Jeez, that my, cousin had, how he got off. my cousin had stolen i guess some of my uncles and uh and man those were some ugly vaginas i just remember this lady like <laughs> I just, I just remember this lady spread eagle with like these giant wings for pussy lips that she was spreading and being like, that's what they look like. Yeah. Shit. It was a little like frightening at first. Almost changed teams at that point. Here's yeah. my thought on this. I, I, that must have been Hustler, though, or something. I feel like <laughs> it was <laughs> women. Weird, like, stuff. Yeah. Women who was class shame yeah. are was committing classy. a faux pas, right? Oh. Like you, if you've. If you've agreed to get to the stage where you see a guy naked, you have implicitly agreed to whatever you find when he takes his pants off. That, and, <laughs> right, that is what I don't think there are like a woman shouldn't say like, ah, deals off now. You're too small. Right. Oh, Wolf my is God. Confused by this. But sometimes this happens to white guys. So does it? <laughs> uh, she anyway, I'm a gun. Also, I feel like that point. So, that is degrading. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus, so, so that shouldn't happen. And on the same page, I feel like whatever you find downstairs, you should be okay with. Look, the, if there's if there's lots of lips, if there's little lips, if there's no lip, whatever, just uh, just be happy. She took her pants off. That's hey, I have role. standards. God damn it! You won't. You, you, <laughs> hey, hey! You want to hear the other side of that story? So you guys, I we've talked briefly about my adult story fun, but um, I've had I have a f couple of friends in the adult industry, black guys, and I we had this conversation a couple of years ago, and they're saying the racism against black guys in the adult industry is really crazy because huh. they will not let you into that industry if you're under like ten to twelve. <laughs> right, and where the white guys get in there, no problem. Right, right. The black guys, you can't get in there unless you're. There's an expectation. Exactly. 
Yeah. And he was saying they were Hilarious. talking about how messed up that is. And they were implicitly talking but about But they're already in. Why are they talking were. about how messed right. up? That's like Jordan being yeah. like, they're talking about lowering the rim. I'm like, go fuck yourself. No. <laughs> <laughs> I say raise the bitch. But, <laughs> but I mean, if you think about it, like it's really messed up that, you know, the other guys can get in, you know, just with looks and what have you. Right. But you got to fit that stereotype to be able to be in the game. You know what I mean? Wow, so that's like, some it, Mandingo shit right there. Yeah, well, yeah. literally, literally. Definitely, yeah. And it's like, I mean, it sounds like a good problem to have, but at the same right, time, right. it's kind of screwed up at the same time, right? It's still so. a stereotype, and it's still, a, <laughs> you know, something that you, you, you I think is, um, yeah, if they're basing it on that, yeah, if a black guy's got a seven-inch cock and they're telling him to get away because it's not eight, that's pretty fucked up in the industry. It kind of is. It kind of is. that close, what if you're that close to your dream and you start and you're looking into all sorts of contraptions and pills and techniques to, <laughs> to, because you just need like a half inch more. Oh and, and, and god! Now, and now you're big dick Wickerson, but the, the the black mamba of East Carolina or whatever. Like like it, that's the difference between Burger King and and like f- fame. Jeez, yeah. bro. It's great. I follow wow. on. You're like hanging listen, from it. I, that much. On TikTok, I follow this guy, black guy, uh, porn star by the name of Jason Love. He's got a huge TikTok following. Shout out Jason you, Love. Wow. And, I thought you were uh, say he's, something else. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a huge. But, <laughs> but this dude is driving around from the adult industry. He's got a Ferrari collection. Where's all the, the tacky Gucci stuff? He's got real, like, he, he's making serious bank in this stuff. You know what I mean? And, you know, it, it's like it's like well, he's one of the few guys doing it in that industry. But at the same time, it's like, oh, my gosh, like that's it, it's scary. To what did you say? Where you find Gucci watch? Gucci, Gucci gear. You know how, uh, unfortunately, my our people like to wear all the Gucci stuff. It's, I'm just uh, unimpressed with this display stuff. of wealth. Like you didn't mention his 401k or this real estate investments. Oh, does he have Gucci clothing? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, no, I I. I, I, I more pointed to the vehicle he drives and the vehicles okay. he drives like vintage Ferraris and stuff. So it's not like just the flash stuff. He like knows his vehicles. So, and <laughs> oh yeah. <lovely. laughs> oh, <look at that. laughs> but it's like, that it, it, not the background for that image. What the fuck? <laughs> that <laughs> red background. Terrible. But yeah, the stuff you can find on TikTok nowadays is insane. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I would have wished, uh, maybe not, I don't know, wish to be able to look at the kind of porn that is available now to anybody back in the day. Bro. You really, you really had to um, it was you had to find it. Like Playboy. And there were the dry periods where you had to look at Sears catalog. Sears catalog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, National, National Geographic. Look, right on time. See, it's. Yeah, I I'm know. A, I was, you, I was we, born we, in 1970. Uh, so uh, yeah, I okay. The there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The, remember Same the Porky Porky scene right at the beginning, right? Oh, was like yeah. That was, exactly. That was back then. Now oh, it's oh, well, everywhere. Yeah. I was uh, <laughs> I was just talking to a girl about this the other night about um I think it's Revenge of the Nerds. How there's a rape scene just right in the yeah. middle of it at the uh, end, and, and she's like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, "Well." There's a scene where the the jock douchebag is dressed up as Darth Vader, and no. uh, he showed something <laughs> like that. I don't know. He's got a story. You want me to lay it out? I know this scene. So at the nope. very end, uh, you say no. Yeah. No, I said yep. Yeah, yeah, oh, I, oh, I, I was out. like, I can stop. But yeah, so at the end of the movie, when like the nerds start winning everything, mm-hmm. the big nerd dresses up as Darth Vader and fucks the hot cheerleader chick. Oh. The thing is, she thinks she's fucking her boyfriend. Right. But he's in mask and costume. So the nerd yeah. fucks you, you had it reversed. The nerd oh. fucks the hot chick instead of the jock. That, I didn't even that's think of it in say. terms that's, of an assault. I, but but see, I'm pretty sure the what I what I was gonna say is like the, I, I thought the jock had shown up at the party dressed up as that, and then the nerd had donned the helmet to impersonate the boyfriend intentionally oh, and fuck his girlfriend. That's how I remember the oh. movie. He yeah, did do it. Right. On, he did do it on purpose. Yeah. And he yeah, was happy about it after, but I never thought about it in that context. As and well. she's so, okay oh. with it afterwards. 80s she's, were very rapey movies. Yeah, they were very rapey. rapey. She was like, why are you so good at fucking? And he's like, well, all jocks think about his sports and all nerds think about his sex. That was his explanation. Oh, right. 
That's some wow, good testimony that's at the trial. <laughs> that's at his rape trial. <laughs> oh, Jesus my man. God. Like, even Back to the Future has that scene with Biff and, uh, and uh, what's his name? The mother. Um, oh, Marty's yeah. Marty's mother Marty's mom, in, the, yeah. in the 50s. And he's like, get away from here, McFly. And he's like, she's like, please help me. And <laughs> Biff is literally raping her. He's going to yes. pull her clothes off and rape her in the car. And uh, take your damn hands off her. And he, he punches her in the head. Uh, punches him in the head. Well, that would have been a better ending. Wow. That would have oh, been a better ending. ending. <laughs> what, he what if that out. was the solution? Because well, then Biff would fucking... be like, the fuck? And he just right, walk right. away? <laughs> like, yeah. Biff would be like, I can't. He just punched this girl. He walks away. He's like, oh, I was scared to punch Biff. <laughs> yeah, it's really makes timeline. you it really movie. makes you rethink these things, right? Like, yeah, there were a lot oh, of rapey, I never about it. rapey things. I think there was another one where, um, some oh, uh, what was that? Goddamn, it wasn't Adve Pew? Adventures in, <laughs> yeah, well, the cartoon based on rape, yeah, uh, was yes. Pepe Le Pew. He just wanted a but, hug, yeah. Adventures in where, babysitting, um, you were gonna say, yeah, something like that, or it was one of those where the the cool girl. Uh, the hot girl uh, passes out and she has sex with one of the nerdy guys. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I, like, that was a big thing. People just I remember the movie. Rape. Remember Kids? Oh, God, that was Rosario crazy. Rosario Dawson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, that was that a was messed a up movie. fucking movie. Even or back Welcome then, that to was the Dollhouse was another one. Is that the yeah. one where she's, like, fully frontal nude? Because I've seen that gif. Which one? Oh, yeah. Dollhouse or uh, Rosario Kate? Dawson? Oh, I don't, I don't know. I'm just talking no, about no Rosario movies. Dawson. Yeah, no, that's where yeah. the, doesn't matter. the guy got the AIDS guess. in the end. Is in, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gets I was messed up. Oh, God. But it's it's a different age we're in, bro. Ah. Which is good. Not complaining. It's all good, but that whole AIDS thing. Now you just see fucking commercials for you know. Hey, you got AIDS? No big fucking deal. Let's yeah. get back to fucking people. Jeez. Open up those bathhouses again. Yeah. <laughs> Let's oh have my some god. Fun. And, and Towel you know, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Do you know about bugs? Um, what are they called? Bug, bug chasers. Bug chasers. Do you know what a bug chaser is? Don't know what that is, dude. It's this weird, uh, like corner of the gay community. These guys who are like super into hunting for a quote unquote pause load. Come on, and, come on, and, and 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 they they do like the <laughs> most like degrading, like nasty multiple sex partner uh, things to get his it like. Ta I wish Taylor was here because he is puts on like a really creepy voice and, and like reads it. like free bleeding. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think that I think this is some bullshit. No, this is real. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is yeah. Kyle has a weird way of finding these weird decrepit things. So they want to get a, a virus a load. Find. They want to get a virus yes. load. Yeah. They chase their bug chasers. They really the want to get chasers. a pause bug load. Chasers. And it's a whole another group of men who are into delivering that quote that pause load. They are they are bug deliverers. But but see, they don't even but 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 see, just like as we can all attest, you know, cross lovers, they're not interested in one another. Because mm. because the the guy who wants to deliver a pause load wants an unwanting subject. He wants to oh, oh, he wants to quote unquote God. stealth someone right when he secretly removes a condom and give them that pause load that's how he gets his rocks off right and, but but so he has no interest in this guy over here who's like yeah give it to it. Me, all of them yeah yeah it's a that's it's a, got to be a criminal thing yeah in most places not california apparently i think in california <laughs> no no i, I, I think you could just simply. yeah you could you could have purposely sex infect somebody, somebody. yeah like, and 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 not be uh convicted of anything. I, th I think I read recently that like because we were joking about this. This is a joke I tell at parties. They, it goes over well. At parties. <laughs> the <A's joke>. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> They're not popular. Um, but, but we, were <laughs> we were looking at that and I thought I looked it up and now that is a crime if it, if at one time it wasn't. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Oh, I shit. Saw, they uh, reduced it, though. Brown Center Laws bill, which oh, reduces penalties for knowingly exposing a sexual part of HIV under current law. Yeah. It's a felony offense punishable by three to eight years in prison. That seems uh, light. Well, it's, Honestly, it's no, it's no longer Jerry a death Brown, sentence. That's a while it? ago. It's no longer a death sentence, is it? No, not at all. The old days. Hey, but but neither is hepatitis, and I don't want that shit either. 
prep with prep. What I'm saying. That's why it's not as long as the pre- the term is I not mean, as long as you would think. I but I but I grew up in the '90s, dude. You're not gonna change my mind about this shit, okay? I remember magic. I saw those infomercials, okay? It felt where like that little star went across the yeah. screen with the rainbow Bro, behind it. I grew up in the '80s. I remember Ryan White dying. And oh Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, bro, trust me. Yep. The '80s were worse. Who died? Ryan White, the little Ryan, uh, kid no, with no, you're missing my point. You lived in the '80s. I got the media that developed in the 80s. Arthur Ashe, the, 90s. the tennis we player. We were terrified. I still yeah. am. Freddie Mercury is the one that I Freddie Mercury is huge, mm. man. Yeah. Nothing, though, yeah. man, when, when fucking Rock Hudson. Hudson, yeah. That was oh. the tipping that changed point right everything. there. No one cared because we heard in the news, it's like, well, I hear Haitians get it. And it's like, <laughs> oh, it's the gay cancer. And yeah. it's this and it's that. And everyone's like, drug users. all right, that's good. Drug use, intravenous drug use. Like, I don't care. I'm fucking whatever. And then Rock Hudson came out for an appearance or something. He looked like walking he was death. skin and bones. Yeah. And everyone went, oh, shit. What's this AIDS yeah. thing? Because everybody and, thought uh, he was straight. You know, another the jokes, you know, they buried, the, um... him, uh, <laughs> they buried him with his ass up. So his friends, <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> he oh, died of food. Yeah, Rock Hudson died of food poisoning, bad meat in the can. Uh, they were all like, oh, 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 dude, I'm just telling you what these horrible people said <laughs> during the whole AIDS crisis. It was horrible. One wow. that's heavy with me. Um, do you guys, <laughs> you guys might be uh, young enough that like this was a MTV Road Rules. Do you remember this? Yes. Oh, yeah. Course. And the Real World and shit like that. Yep, they had yeah. an AIDS victim yes. on Real World. Is that what and, they call uh, yeah, they, they called, called him AIDS, AIDS victims, victim. I think, at the time. No, his name was, he was a Spanish kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fr- yeah. You're going to know his like, name? Buck, yeah. Buck, I don't want you putting your finger in the peanut butter and eating it. The, yeah, uh-huh. it was, yeah, <laughs> there was this guy named Puck who had, like, no social grace. Puck was grace. just a piece of shit. <laughs> he was, he was a, a bike piece- messenger asshole. And he'd always, know. like, there was a girl there. Actually, the girl on there, I think, is on Fox News now. Um, oh, but she's hot. Yeah, 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 and she was on uh, Real Everybody World, and he used to go. He'd be like, "Hey, how you doing, Chubbs?" And she'd be like, "Don't call me that." He goes, "I see, I see you putting on a few." He was the <laughs> biggest <laughs> fucking asshole. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Pedro. Uh, Zamora. Pedro. Pedro. <laughs> but, but wait, he didn't like the uh, the AIDS guy eating. Peanut well, he was fingers? so he was so Reverse. politically incorrect about it uh, for the time, and this was like weird because. Everyone that watched that and saw Pedro had AIDS was like, oh, my God, he's shaving. Oh, my God. And MTV fucked with it, too. They showed him at one point in the bathroom shaving, and they played some ominous music. Like, <laughs> oh, no, look at Don't wow. let him bleed on you. So they kind of played it also. And, yeah. again, with the time it was, people really um, weren't very, uh, I don't know, tolerant of, of shit like that. Uh, and, you know, everyone was fine. He was a good enough guy. He was very charitable. Pedro was a, a good character on that and shit. And, you know, he he's a gay guy. He had excellent hygiene. AIDS. He was a good roommate. Dude, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From the AIDS and he now. took care of himself. Like, he oh, knew you know what, here's what I want to eat right and, and take care of himself. I've been watching MasterChef with Gordon Ramsay, and they they basically, you know, you know that game Guess Who or whatever, where you're like, does he have a hat? Does he have a mustache? <laughs> they they do that when they cast this show of like 25 fucking wackadoo looking motherfuckers. Oh god. And uh I, I think that it would be amazing if they put a fucking AIDS person on there though, because they're cutting themselves all the time while oh, poking shit. and the right. judges have to oh, eat right my after. Gosh. And, like, 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 like I've seen so many cuts <laughs> like 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 oh. that would really up the tension in the show. That's I don't so think what? about that. Should you maybe not be a chef if you have AIDS or HIV? Med- medic, yeah, I'm they yell medic you and the medical crew comes by. over and goes. Uh... <laughs> hey, well, that's why they started wearing gloves. Yeah, no that's shit. They, they a lot of times, yeah, everything like the, they should they, wear fucking gloves. I I think it's they gross did, but to I'm saying they didn't wear without gloves. They didn't wear them. I'm saying uh, EMTs didn't wear gloves. Yeah, before the age they get of right epidemic. to wear mm. gloves. Were yeah. for you know when they get to the hospital, oh, the doctors wear. Yeah, it. and it was more for the protection of the patient that yes. you don't get uh, bacteria in any exactly. Overflow. But yeah, it became that. It got to the point where they put those uh, masks with the breathing thing to do. Yeah. Um, uh, artificial respiration during For CPR. CPR. Yeah. yeah, and and, and yeah, people are just like I ain't fucking touching that. Yeah, shit. I mean, That's you'll see. <laughs> you, you'll learn this soon enough when you start watching the Police Activity Channel on YouTube. Oh, but every you every time the cops like 
they'll shoot him 16 fucking times and now oh, it's yeah. time to handcuff him <laughs> and so they'll be like glove up <laughs> like i just I've oh heard, yeah glove I've, up. Heard that, I've heard that line delivered with like like so flatly and so mm. many times now that it's comical. Oh my god! Like they, they just boom 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 boom. Glove up. <laughs> the guy's literally like uh, bleeding out. His hand is still maybe touching the gun. It's like get your hand off the gun. Drop the gun. It's like the guy is so dead. <laughs> like, I think you're okay. Wow. I, I, do, I do like when the cops have like sometimes you see a cop who just has some common sense and he's not frazzled and he's not operating on fucking training he's just in right. the moment being being a great cop and it'll just be they'll be like trying to put the cuffs on it he's like dude yeah dude let's let's provide care i don't think yeah. he's gonna leave okay what are you he's, doing you shot him in the spine mark okay let's uh yeah <laughs> let's yeah try to stop the bleed right <laughs> Yeah, it's like cuffing Kermit. <laughs> oh Jesus! Jim <laughs> is gone. Like, this bitch is going nowhere. Uh, I've seen a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm never gonna get that image out of my head. No, 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 no. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Now you're gonna That's love awful. that channel. Uh, and sometimes it'll make you mad because a cop will be a piece of shit. He'll kick some handcuff like oh yeah, I've seen that stuff too. It's and like, then, but then the not next all cops one, are fucking awesome. The one right after that, sure. cop pulls over a speeding car, and a woman jumps out of the driver's seat immediately and starts sprinting at him with an infant in her hands. He's choking. Cop saves oh. the baby on the hood of the car. There's three, oh wow, there's three different videos like that on that uh, in their like library. <laughs> uh, Imagine uh, she's running with an infant running toward you, and the cop just boom, goes, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, he's like, and, and then he does the, the fucking Robocop twirl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she had a baby. It was loaded. <laughs> uh, she's coming right for me. <laughs> I don't know what these new ghost guns look like. <laughs> look like a Samsung. Look like to babies. Me. I don't know. <laughs> I figured it was an invisible gun. Yeah, a invisible ghost gun. baby Drops gun. Some more, and then with, at that point, you saw the baby-shaped weapon. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I guess we don't need a grand jury. Uh, good shooting. <laughs> <laughs> a good shot. Okay, next case. Oh, my God. They show, they are, are, are even worse, they show like a CGI oh, like God. animation of a woman using a baby to kill a person and they, oh, <laughs> they, are, they, they argue that like a baby still can deliver more Jesus. than 75 years of force when swung by a small woman oh my god could you imagine every year 75 police officers go down by being clobbered by an infant or baby. toddler Oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> baby wet. Well, we understand all that, Officer Morgan. We are familiar oh, with yes. the baby clobbering epidemic, but why the double tap? Why did you do <laughs> uh, uh, There's a lot of inexcusable nonsense on there, and then there's like hero cops, and then oh, there's just hilarious. like. Then you'll be quickly convinced you never would want to be a cop, ever. Like, like, I couldn't imagine was, anyone who would want to. How is that allowed on YouTube, is what I'm saying. Like, because oh it gosh. needs to be there so that like those cops can be like judged by the public and like like if there is a crooked da or a crooked i'm just like, i I, I think wolf is saying how do they even allow that like you think they that's take what i'm all saying shit off. Because, yeah because, yeah because youtube likes the idea of showing shedding light on potential police violence oh, okay. and documenting that for the public and that's my I take so. on it. yeah um, i guess so. because there will be that warning occasionally um that's like hey you're about to watch some shit that's how you know you got a good one i saw one where female cop comes up to a door no, not no gun. I don't know why I did that. Comes up the door, knock, knock, knock. Wellness check. Lady comes out with the butcher knife already cocked back and stabs the lady cop in the arm. Jeez. Bad. Big butcher knife. Lady cop mm -hmm. takes three steps back, pulls her gun. Uh, lady drops the knife accidentally, but, oh. then, but then goes to retrieve the knife. Lady cop blasts her before she can get that knife back up. The lady cop's on the radio. I think Every fucking white night within radio oh distance. Oh my god, like, I can't I don't know, imagine. 75 miles. Right. It swarmed in. She had yeah, yeah, three yeah. of them bandaging her up. Meanwhile, yeah. meanwhile, they have tased this woman, shot her, <laughs> shot her <laughs> again, yeah. shot her again, and then uh. sick the dog on her. <laughs> the dog is oh, fucking god. her up. And the lady's hitting the dog, and the lady's like, Don't you hit my dog! Don't you hit my dog! And then he tases her while she's hitting the, oh. while the dog. 
And so it's like everything they have. The and dog then the pop, shotter. And then it's, you hear one, so... of the, one of the like, one of the most wow. wild things I've ever heard a cop say ever in a video ever. He goes, watch your step. There's guts everywhere. Oh, because 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 they've shot her in the stomach and i think the dog is like torn her guts oh, out pulling it out oh, oh. So, so there's like intestines on the asphalt was this and, and... officer john wayne <laughs> wow that is a hell of a fucking statement he goes what oh your step God. there Parker? yeah and guts everywhere. that's what i'm saying like how do those guys get away with it and i get shadow banned for playing paintball like <laughs> no seriously shit. make sense for me it- Maybe use use one of those uh like police body cams that has like or just put the overlay put the text on the top that oh says like whatever they, they put and, and play that go. little chirp every now and then so like, <laughs> yeah yeah no that's some good shit you'll see <laughs> lots of like dogs being used to fuck people up and uh, like like cujo don't fuck around it's it's good shit that's i've insane. i've probably seen far too many people die the last few weeks just watching that channel i said honestly. it's so fucked up that we pick up our phones in the morning and the first thing you do is watch a few snuff films. Yeah. Like, like snuff films when I was growing up, and Wolf, I'm sure you could attest to this too. It was almost this like um, urban myth yeah. that yeah. anything even existed. And they had yeah. uh, Faces of Death was a Faces video. And you could rent it. And you rent it with your friends and go, yeah, look at that. And meanwhile, most of it was fake. The yeah. real shit they showed was like reporters that were on scene of a carnage of an accident or something. Yeah, or a riot. And, or yes, shit like that. But when they, you know, you didn't watch people literally dying. Now, yeah. I swear to you, on a daily basis, I am watching three, at least three or four people yeah. in the act of being killed. Yeah. I and see it as well. If you yeah. don't fucking tell me that's not negatively <laughs> negatively affecting people, you're out of your fucking mind. We uh, should not be looking at stuff like this. I go on Reddit and uh, I go to the combat footage subreddit and I go to the mm-hmm. Ukraine conflict subreddit. Look at yeah. you! You're and looking it, for it! I love it! I love yeah, it! You see I, some cause, of, cause when they shoot a Russian tank with an American missile, all uh, the ammo javelin. kicks off. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And bro. the top blows the fuck off. And it's entertaining. Oh. When I just saw the footage from the train attack that the Russians yeah. just did, yeah, and you saw the horrific. real footage of the bodies laying around, it's holy awful. smokes like um, it's insane it, it's really awful um like the, i i that's why i like seeing them blow up russians honestly like, yeah. like i Dude, saw one I, where they chased a russian with a drone and he's running scared and oh he leads no. him back to his friends and they blow all the friends up so it's great i was looking into uh because i i didn't know much about the javelin miss uh rocket so mm. i look into it and i i watch the fucking thing is amazing not yeah. the fact it, like it's amazing first of all they figured out you could shoot it it's fire and forget so you yeah, could just shoot yeah. the fucking thing and run. Uh, also, you could be in a, a relatively small space. It doesn't mm-hmm. have this giant blast back. The fact that, yeah, it fires off. It's got an initial charge that puts it, takes it out of the tube. And yeah. then it fires, goes up, and then comes down on one of the lesser armored parts of the vehicle. It has something inside called a precursor, which is just like it's a, a – um, what do they call the uh, – the, uh, Directional charge, shape charge, sh- shape charge, smaller to blast the uh, active armor away from the tank yeah. for the main charge to then go through the armor and fight. Yeah. It's like they went, how could they fuck this uh, little rocket up? We'll we'll <laughs> deal with everything they do to get around. It. Those uh, get, it is such an amazing fucking piece of technology. Those cost the American taxpayer one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Eighty one hundred eighty thousand. A Russian 000. tank costs the Russian taxpayer thirty million dollars, <laughs> and we are so happy to trade. <laughs> <laughs> we're loving it. I heard like at one point we were shooting those pickup trucks with the machine guns in the back with it, Technicals. and it's like one hundred eighty thousand dollars for a. Twenty thousand dollar pickup oh, truck. Just yeah. so you know, this ain't a video game, so it doesn't need to be a vehicle to lock on. You can shoot a tree with the bit. Oh yeah, you can shoot anything with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if they see some guys in a hut or in a ditch, they're blasting. Yeah. We are. We said eight hundred more, eight hundred million more today. So like eight, they're not eight hundred million. Yeah, almost. That brings it to over. Is a that billion. a Raytheon product? <laughs> oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. God, nobody's damn, making money, bro. If you don't own Raytheon look, stock, you're a it's a, fool. it's a, it's a, it's a. I think it was Raytheon and um, 
Um, what's the other big one? Like, like Northrop Grumman or some Northrop one of the other big or... like um, uh, military industrial companies. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I wish Taylor was here. Poor Taylor was was moving some uh, gym equipment and got. I was wondering what did he do? Hernia. His wife for his birthday got him um, like a Lockheed leg press Martin. machine. And, Lockheed Martin. There it is. And, and getting the leg press machine up his driveway with the, uh, I guess, like there was a sharp piece of metal that came out of the box and it no. cut him really badly. So he's in the ER. Um, that was oh, hours ago. Fuck. Yeah, he sent me a picture of his arm and it's like this giant bandage of like like his kitchen towels and duct tape. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's still fucked. coming through? Was it still bloody? It looked like he cleaned it up by bit. the time he got to the ER. Yeah. But yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, it's scary. Good. Or fuck. Yeah. Tell the Taylor story? Yeah. Did we show the picture? Uh-uh. No, those, oh. that, that's his picture. No, let him show the picture because I want to hear the whole story oh, okay. from him. Uh, like, yeah. Your graphic story. Oh. <laughs> it's only right. It's yeah, so Jesus. bad when you cut yourself really bad. It's one of those things. I worked in the sheet metal industry. I was doing air conditioning and heating for until I was in my mid-30s. So I have you know, a lot of scars on my hands from – sheet metal it's like working with giant razor blades every day when you feel that that feeling and you just grip it and go oh shit and then you gotta go all right how bad is it oh oh that's pretty that's pretty bad i could never just look at it i had to go eh, like like i'm unrolling a poker hand you know the worst uh, is oh that i was feeling uh my dad and i were doing this project once where we were uh, we were hanging these uh long 500 foot long curtains in, in, in a building and so you have to cut lengths of string over and over and over so you need a razor sharp knife oh. and i have the knife sharpener i'm polishing this bitch up you could shave with it and i make a bad stroke and i come across the top of this finger just like that i, I just did that over the scar i can see it oh and yeah. and it was so sharp and it cut to the bone and i could i looked down and i could see just it would the blood hadn't like spilled into the wound. Right, yet. right, right. It just so it's opened just me open. up like a yeah, steak. Yeah. You know, oh, you it's cut terrible. a steak mm. and it just opens, and of course there's no blood. It's a fucking steak. That's yeah. what I looked like, and I just went. Ooh, that's can oh. I tell you? Can I tell you? Oh. The, one of the I just saw a really disturbing video of a monkey attack. Not, oh, I, on the real Tarzan on Instagram. I just did you see this this morning? If you I go saw, on. The real Tarzan is the black guy who that works with all the animals and stuff. Come on. And, uh, his name is Michael Hol Michael Holston. Was and it a I chimp just... or a monkey? Because chimps are fucking Bro, brutal. Listen to me. I've never seen anything this bad. This he's just you see him, he's sitting down, he's talking to a monkey on the ground. And it looks like they're having fun and everything like this. Yeah. And the monkey just decides to jump up, grab a piece of his scalp and rip half of his holy off. shit really how big is the monkey it looked like a it, baboon to me it's a uh, yeah probably oh, a baboon to the I think it was one of those with the fucking fangs, the fangs. yeah where they look and all fine and then they go it was like a fucking predator from lion king rafiki the one yeah. that rafiki bro guy. i yeah. just saw this this morning and it's still fucking with my head I saw it's it so graphic ago. And you, I, I, there's a subreddit I, I like called Crazy this. Fucking Videos. I love fucking monkeys. Dude, I think oh, they're great. So gory. Little, little Dude. like uh, pet monkeys and stuff. They're adorable. They when do you see this video, you would not hands. approach a monkey No, again. no. Now, because I know baboons, like chimps are fucking awesome, but they are jacked and they can fuck you up. Oh, yeah. They look they all fun and nice. But I'm they're telling hugging you, you but they'll this rip video, your, uh, it looked like they were friends. It looked like yeah. they were having a night nice on the couch. No, he's outside. Like, like I remember him okay. being like, to, I didn't. I don't know any of the backstory of whose video it is or anything. So to oh me, it was like God. tourist is sitting on like a little stone bench, and baboon tears half his scalp off. Holy shit! And, that's and, brutal. And, 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 and I, mm. it happens so fast, you can't like sometimes like if it's so quick. You know, if it's a car crash or like if it's a forklift going to crush somebody, I can be like, no, not today. Yeah. But with this, it's right. just like. You're exposed. But with his hand, he pulls it off with his hand? His, no, he teeth, his mouth. He bites here. He bites, oh, he here the bites hairline, it. And he tears it backwards and, and diagonally. Everything off. Like, 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 like back. Across, and it, it's a strip I, about two I and a half inches wide. Two and a half inches by like eight what, or nine inches. I can't inches. find it. Was it like, on Reddit, I guess? I saw it on no, Reddit. It's on oh. Instagram. Instagram. It's you know, uh, it's, it's a gif going around. Like, like Everything you know, on Reddit comes from Instagram. Yeah. No shit, right? Well, that's why I found it. That's fucking. 
We're if, going to nature is metal. The real Tarzan with two ends good. on Tarzan. Oh, the real and Tarzan. I saw it this morning, and it just it, it's still I got ingrained it. in my brain. Uh, 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 got it. Nicely done. Oh, yeah, boy. I'm not going to watch. You guys watch. <laughs> I'm not going to watch. I'm not going to watch either. Is that it? Exactly. I'm you watching it. Look at it. Man I'm not even sure that that's it because I didn't watch it. You must be 18 to, yeah, okay. I think I qualify. Well, here. they got the disclaimer up already, eh? Oh, shit. Let's see. I have to wow, this guy and the phone. monkey look friendly. The they look, he's talking to him. The monkey's kind of got his ass. <laughs> There's a two inch strip. There it is. Oh, they, they replay it. Yes. He uses, ah! his mouth. he uses his mouth to rip. Oh, that strip. my God. You see what I'm oh, talking about? Dude, he pulls his. It's white when he pulls it out. Yeah. Like, there's no blood yeah, yet. The, the blood's wow. not there yet. There's a strip oh, of hair. It might, that's you can tell that's his new that, that's his skull. That's why there's Dude, a blood. That's my skull. skull. That's what I'm Whoa. saying. Uh, Wait, he didn't remove skull. No, 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 no. But we're removed? looking at skull. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's you what know, I'm the, telling you. The thing about this is, though, they can fix that, I bet. And there'll be like no I bet scarring. they can put Well, not in that country. That yeah, doesn't like what I'm saying. It's a microsurgeon's going, well, we can. He needs to go to a... Did you, did you put the country. scalp on ice? We'll go, do, yeah. I'm pretty sure the animal took off with it. Yeah, because I no. Oh, am I wrong? Let me I, see. No, I you saw down the uh, piece on the ground. With all I have for my Holy scalp. Shit. But I, 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 I had to let you guys feel the same. Wow, that is brutal. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first thing I saw this morning. And There's no my head predicting up. what those crazy never motherfucking so monkeys fast. do. Bro, never... I'm telling you. It, it, you've never ran so fast as when you're chasing a baboon who's, ch who's run off with half your scalp. <laughs> Do you know the oh, strength that I, I defy anyone to be able to take your teeth, bite into someone's scalp, and rip it off their head? I defy you. Is I don't think you could problem? do it strength wise. Do you think you can't do it, or a, do you think you just don't do it? I, I, think, I think it's so fight fucking... I think it's our teeth are shaped the wrong way. I think right, I right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he did it like it was nothing. He like it was it like, nothing. He did it as fast as I could slap you. Like, yeah. like, like he, he wasn't was trying. Like, his mouth is made for ripping and tearing. It's flesh. his version of a fruit roll up. Yeah, that was just... <laughs> it. Probably sounded like that too. I kill that fucking monkey. It's the last thing I did. I would yeah. kill oh, that fucking and the, I don't know if you guys have hunt him like, down. I don't know if you guys have sound on yours, but if you have the sound, the people were laughing because they didn't realize what happened at first. Oh uh, yeah. Fuck, people happened. filming it. They didn't realize. And I'm like, oh fuck. Well, there's that unbelievable story of the woman that owned a chimpanzee oh, and yeah. her friend yeah. came over and it literally ripped her face off. Yeah. It have you ripped her face off? The oh. MMA fighter that fights the baby chimp is my favorite story. Come on. It, what? What? So this what guy sounds adorable. <laughs> this guy's an MMA fighter. I don't know what level. He's not in the UFC, but he's a professional fighter. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he's yeah. at like a birthday party or something. Mixed monkey a, arts. <laughs> and he has a baby <laughs> chimp that he's playing with. And the chimp goes off the rails. Oh, shit. So, and that him describing... How he can't beat a like sixteen pound chimpanzee is amazing. Was he and, trying and, to like work moves on yeah, it? Dude, he was like to throwing just get it, him... slamming it. At oh, first, he doesn't hit it full force no. because he's like, "This is a baby chimp. I don't want to like yeah, hurt yeah. it." And he goes, uh, "Then I realize I can't hurt you it." Can't hurt <laughs> it. Yeah. He's, yeah. And, and he says that this thing, like, like you know what human muscles are like? They're kind of yeah. strong when you flex them or whatever. He's like, "This thing is like wood." Like you can barely. I, fucking, yeah. I, I had a monk, a monkey, a chimpanzee on our show years ago. Uh, someone brought in a chimp, and it was all cool. And we're sitting there, and it does the thing where it hugs you, you know. Okay. And and you put your arms around it and pat it, dude. I have carried bags of uh, concrete. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, when, yeah, yeah, you yeah, ever yeah. you ever pat a bag of concrete? Yep. That's yeah. what this fucking chimp's <laughs> back felt like. It yeah. was so. Just hard the and, and different. they're jack. Listening to Joe Rogan talk about chimps is one of the funniest <laughs> things I've ever. He yeah. loves how jacked chimps are, yeah. and he's just fascinated with chimps. Yeah. And they're fucking unbelievably strong. Even a little one like that would 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 fucking kick your yeah. ass. I I seen these videos lately of like like picture a kid's play structure, you know, where like uh -huh. there's a little maybe wall that you climb up diagonally. Yeah, and uh, they use like this. Literally, it's a baby chimp. It's like, help me up. And the chimp just reaches down and lifts yeah, the full yeah. sized man up. No like way. I yeah. saw that. It doesn't even <laughs> wow. fucking nothing. 
Yeah, it's here like, you oh, go. You need a hand? Sure, I got you, bro. Fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> Lips a human. Oh. But it, you know what? It's scary because I have a husky, my ah. dog, a Siberian mm-hmm. husky, and oh she weighs God. a good 70 pounds. It's a proper community. And when I, play, when I play tug of war with her and she growls, because she growls for fun. You know how dogs play, right? Huskies and I and, and I played. No, Huskies are fucking insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. But it's, it's scary because when you play, when I wrestle with her, I realize that if this animal really wanted to hurt me, done, it'd be a wrap. <laughs> done. Really? Because, I could beat your dog up, bro. <laughs> When we were out in Texas, my husband, right? my, my, like, no, but her neck is like ridiculously between all the the layers of fur and all that stuff. If she really wanted to mess up a human being and her point. weighing like eighty pounds, like she, the strength is there that you can see that it would be a you'd have a situation. On dude, your head. the other thing is instinctually for millennia. They know how to kill you immediately. Yes, they don't they do. sit there and go, oh, I'm going to bite his ankle. No, yeah. this yeah. isn't doing much. <laughs> Let me go. There. They know exactly Where how to, to kill a motherfucker. I, I'm yeah. and, and, he... and that goes for dogs or chimps or that fucking baboon. If that baboon, <laughs> wa- that baboon wanted to kill him, he probably would have killed him. He's just like, yeah, I think I'll just rip your scalp off and run. Yeah. <laughs> and brick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Animals it's, it's... know how to kill shit. Yeah. I, I, I know a guy in Texas that's got uh, a wolf as a pet. It's like mm. 99% wolf. Mm. It's, it's enormous. And uh, like, like it only eats wow. raw meat, right? Because it's a yeah. fucking wolf and a dog. So like yeah. we went out and shot a rabbit and gave it to him. And the, he it and the, the guy also had like a gigantic uh, pet pig. And the wolf and the pig tore that rabbit apart like a, I don't know, like a bagel or something yeah. like that. And they each wow. chopped up their piece. And uh, there's some and pictures of And they respected of it. each other? Yeah, like like they were like like dogs would be like like a little yeah, yeah, okay. but yeah, like yeah, all right, yeah. we split, we'll split. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah like yeah, yeah. but the wolf was like clearly like still a fucking wolf most. Like it was so skittish sometimes and you had to yeah. be like you had to make sure that like you and it were on the same page before you approached it and stuff. Oh fuck but that. Once, yeah. But once you're like down on its level, like it was chill cuz like there's some pictures of it somewhere but like we got I don't remember what we used, but I laid and pretended like I was dead. And the wolf ah. drug me across the yard, like by my belt or something. Mm-hmm. Like they got it to bite my jeans or my belt. I don't remember what, I, what we got him to do, oh but we got yeah. pictures of it dragging me across asphalt with fake blood on the ground. I can't <laughs> find those pictures. <laughs> yeah, that's and crazy. Because you could get perspective of just how big this motherfucker was. It was so yeah. scary. Like a hundred. I hate when I, don't know. I hate when people say shit like you know, don't um. Don't be scared. They could smell fear. I'm like, I fucking reek then. I fucking reek of fear. I'm scared shitless. You can't tell me not to be scared or else you'll make them eat you. Then I'm going to be scared. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Fuck yeah. that. Well, my, my ah. dog brought this, just killed a massive hare. Not a rabbit, like a hare. And those are things that are massive and just brought it to the door and waited to come in. I said, you go get rid of that thing. <laughs> and she just had it, she had it in her mouth and it was like huge. Right. And it's like, oh, I should have cooked it up. No problem. Like a compliment to you. It's like, look, what it I is. It do. really is. Yeah. Yeah. They, it's they like kinda, when my, it's yeah, like it's when my present. cat brings mice to me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, if end of the world, I'm not, it's, you know, it's just the apocalypse. I'm taking my dog. I'm not getting any toy dog or anything like that. Like, I'm yeah. Getting under. You ever see the uh, like when people have serval cats, these big fucking cats, and they have a chicken, and and the thing comes running out, I've grabs the chicken, and they pull that. it, and that thing's going, whoa, whoa, yeah, making, yeah, yeah, making a fucking primal sound, and if you try to really pull that chicken away from that, it will kill you. I don't know how <laughs> people have are in a house with this thing. Is that as an pet. ocelot? Ocelot? Or is that what that is? Yeah, yeah, they're they're certain, but when you give them ch- a ch- piece of chicken, they will not let go of that, and they'll look at you like, "Don't even try." I will fucking kill you. I, I knew of a guy who had yeah. a lynx awesome. in his ho- mm. a lynx in his hotel room, like like in a was room of his hotel room. A lynx. Well, it was it was extras is like who was that rapper? Like Little Wayne's cousin. It doesn't matter. Little Soldier it, Boy or something. It doesn't, Soldier Boy? Nah, oh. I, it doesn't matter. It, dude had close. a fucking lynx cat but, in his okay. fucking. Uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. And, I hit a monkey too. Yeah, he had a monkey in a wow. cage. And he had a lynx cat in a back, back bedroom, and he was smoking a blunt. And he was he was like getting the monkey high. It was great. 
<laughs> oh, a high monkey. That's what you want. He well, he was really gay, to fuck their mind up even more than it is he's already. Dude, it would chill him the fuck out. Maybe he's he'd be calm. Crazy. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Maybe he'd be calm. The, that fucking guy is trying to fuck with me, though. The cats are funny, man. Little twist. Little twist. twist. Oh, the okay. cats are crazy. Like, I, I forget. It might be a serval or something, but like, if it's closer to the purebred, the cat's cooler. And that's yeah, yeah. neat in a certain way. But the more it's diluted with domesticated cats, yeah. the better a pet it is. So you have to figure out where on the spectrum you want your cat that's to be. That's what they be. do. Yeah, there's like um, Are they even five, legal? usually five. Technically, like sure. American house cats, like like there aren't, there's no such thing as a domesticate. So like dogs are a thing we made, right? We took a wolf yeah. and made a dog. It's its own thing. Yeah, we didn't do that with cats. Cats are just assholes who are like hanging around. That's why they're so <laughs> aloof and shitty. They are as ah, they were. It's we true. have not changed the cat. It's aloof. Very few shitty. other animals, fruits, or vegetables, anything we know was like this 100, 200 years ago, or even 50 years ago in some cases. Like all the dogs look different. Look up a pug in 1925. It does yeah. not look like it wants to die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> look up a cat. Look, look, look up what a wild cow looks like. There aren't any because they don't exist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's no true. What the fuck is a wild cow? They don't like what oh, were cows. You know, they were there's only it. three um, wild cows on the <laughs> on the prairie. Like, no, it's not. Were they there's bison? Never, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's, a bison it's, 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 mixed with a fucking <laughs> cat. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is. I said it last show. I can't remember it now though. Um, I remember they're gone one... now though. They're gone. It's probably something that's extinct. There's one comedian. We turned them into the cows. That's where they went. We turned yeah. them into cats. Wow, we, that's so fucked up. They descended from a species of wild cow called Bos primogenius. Is that what you said? No. Nope. They're now referred to the Urox or sometimes the Uris. That's it. The Urox. I don't know how to pronounce A U R O C H S. Is that Urox. something there's only like one black and white blurry picture of from 19, <laughs> like 1890? <laughs> Like those animals that have stripes on its ass and an aardvark nose, and you're oh, like, yeah, 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 that thing's long gone. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's trying to bring that thing back. <laughs> oh no, shit! No, that's that's a yeah. like a Tasmanian. We learned nothing from yeah, Jurassic yeah, Park. Tasmanian something. Something. yeah, Tasmanian something. Yeah, anything yeah, yeah. that has stripes on its ass is like this meant to be gone many years ago. <laughs> no one wants to. It's see like this that thing. bird with that massive. Big beak that clap. Yeah, yeah, oh, the the big beak. Beak. yeah. Oh, okay. I can see how that could be a cow at some point. That is a yeah. cow. That is that's well, a cow. I like the really cow. hairy ones from Scotland. That's like a steer, isn't it? That's a steer. I mean, yeah. a steer is a kind of cow. It's yeah. like, like a, when uh, you're talking when, to a New Yorker. Frank Costanza <laughs> like a, talks like about a mare is a horse. The chicken, the hen, and the rooster. What are your? Uh, <laughs> do, do, you, do you remember what George Costanza's fake fake horses were named? Um. Prickly Pete and and it was a, a one. Uh, it was a short name. Yeah, and Prickly Pete. Shit, I can't remember. That's Snoopy. hilarious. Snoopy, yeah, <laughs> fuck. And Prickly another Pete. solarium. Yes, that leads into another <laughs> solarium. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, so I don't know how you well. remember that. That's awesome. So fucking good. <laughs> Might have seen it a few times too many. Maybe, right? Mm. A thousand times every These episode. These kids today can't Still appreciate laugh. Seinfeld. Mm. I don't know why, but... It's a whole different head. Yep. I feel they like there might be some it. disconnect because so many of the premises are required that they don't have a way to communicate simple misunderstandings and all that is solved by a cell phone, right? So like like yeah. the Chinese the Chinese restaurant episode, God, any of the misconnections, yes. mm. the the remember the movie theater and he's the wrong you're the wrong showing. Oh, sorry. And, you know the, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. almost. Every There's a episode. friend episode about being stuck on the roof, like the door closes behind him. Yeah, and yeah. Back in yeah. right that episode. Cell phones just wreck every <laughs> single one of those uh, yeah. plot lines. Yeah. I re I remember growing up when uh, Friday at school. You would have to make plans with your friends. If you didn't, you hmm. were out. You'd never you, see you, each you, other again. You literally drove around if you had a car or on your bicycle going to the usual places. Like, oh, I'll go to the park by the school or behind the school or I'll go by the 7-Eleven. And you're going around going, I don't know where anyone is because I didn't make plans on Friday. You yeah. didn't find your friends after that. There was no way to get in touch with them. <laughs> it was it. You had to look around and try to find the them. idea. The, the whole premise of the home phone 
Oh, oh is, is, Lord is, forbid is, that was busy. Huh? Why did it still ask you at places? It's like, is that a home phone? No. No. It's a cell phone. It, don't even put cell phone home phone. There's no home phone anymore. It's my I have a, cell phone. No, I have a home phone and it's just as a fax machine. <laughs> it's just not, <laughs> oh, you can have the phone line, but it's not a brain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hello. I, yeah. Oh, that's what they're getting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. Remember when that would happen with AOL? My, yeah. I mean, my I grandmother got, had that rotary. Still, hang up. I got cut off. I was downloading porn. <laughs> I was downloading gra- Captain Janeway. <laughs> I, I just remember, like you know, my gra- I, my dad had a beeper. My grandmother had that unironic oh, yeah. phone, mm. and it was like, like, yeah, this is how you get in touch with people if you want to see your friends anytime at all, make plans. Like, like, yeah. hope they're at home. Like, you call them, like, hey, is Jimmy there? Make nope. Plans. Well, fuck. And then when see, you're, that's, uh, that's yep. one of the problems with relationships today, because mm-hmm. in back in the day when you left home from work. You didn't talk to your wife or anybody until that you got back it. home. Yep. Now mm-hmm. it's texting all day and what are you doing and calling all day. Oh, and I, like, by the time you get home, you got nothing to talk about because everything yep. was texted already. Right? Yeah. yeah. What a great point. You're yeah. fucking it's, it's, right, it, man. There's no connection to be made anymore. That's that's why, like, if I ever do get married, I will shun her during the day. <laughs> no communication whatsoever. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with like making the relationship better. I just don't deal with that bullshit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just my coincidence. It's annoying. Hey, honey, how's you doing today? Shunned. <laughs> don't it's, a for, it's a new word for blocked. I like. That. <laughs> <laughs> they should have a shun button. Exactly. <laughs> And let the people know they've been yeah, excommunicated oh from the community. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Call it a wrap? Yeah, I think so. Thank you, gentlemen, so oh much for God, coming dude. on. I, 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 always, I always enjoy both of you so very much. It's mm-hmm. so cool. Wolf also, dude, I think it shows two adults can fucking talk and debate about shit without issue. I respect you. Uh, you you're too, funny, brother. motherfucker. <laughs> and I enjoy, I enjoyed spending some time with you on uh, PKA, yeah. man. He was telling me awesome. that you're one of the good ones, Wolf. Really cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wait a> <laughs> yeah. Like, I wouldn't even have said that. Now I got to do some more PR for Woody again. Oh, <laughs> oh, Going to be in the comments. <laughs> 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 Shit, I got a black so friend, much. see? <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I, I, I went through a whole thing of from CPX the other day, a whole thing. The only yeah. photos I save are the ones with you, buddy. I'm going to need oh. those for later. Down the road, like, like <laughs> those are going to be part of my comeback. Yeah. Much love, brother. Much love, always. <laughs> All right. Do you guys have anything you need to pimp? Compoundmedia.com. Uh, when is this air? Saturday. Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Okay. Uh, so this coming weekend, next weekend, uh, we're in Atlantic City at the Claridge Hotel for Comedians of the Compound. It's also my birthday, so there's going to be crazy blackjack, and we're doing a, a huge comedy show at uh, the Claridge Hotel in Atlantic City. So if you can, join us. Thank Check you. Check them out. Tell them you're from PKA. It makes us look good. No shit. Do that. <laughs> I get so many people that say, dude, fucking love when you're on PKA. And, you know, people, you, you seem to have an audience. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome, you. man. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> and uh, if you want to, please go to my YouTube channel, Wolf Paintball, The Wolf Den, and uh, subscribe. Tell me you're coming from PKA, and uh, I'll give out a prize to one of those in the comments who have watched this lovely episode. Awesome, and made it this deep in it. Hey, we're about to be four twenty. Let's let's stretch eleven more seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Zach. Don't kill this before four twenty. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> PKA five ninety one. Well, you're way off. Oh my god, six seven. What is happening?